Okay, we are now unmuted. Okay, sir. Yay. Let me know if I need to adjust the volume. Okay. Uh, Alex, you might want to change your dice color. My dice color? Oh, okay. Well, we're officially... Nope, Zest changes color. <laughs> we're officially live. We're officially unmuted. I'm likely going to forget to remove the first 20 minutes, but I don't care. For those of you who are in chat, hello, hello. Um, I'm nervous and also very tired. <laughs> I did a lot of asset work last minute. So don't judge the quality. Just judge the effort. That's all I could say. Yeah. Yeah. So for context for people, this D&D &D game is set in a modern setting. Um, so there are cars, there's TV, there's radio. Hi, Bill. I see you. Merry Christmas to you, too. Um, there you go, Bill. Bill's a very old friend of mine. During Halloween, three of the players, because Alex wasn't here for it, Three of the players went on a very interesting, rather spooky Halloween adventure, and I forgot to highlight it, so unfortunately it is gone. But we remember what happened. We know what happened. Those of you who were present for the one-shot stream, hopefully you remember what happened. Um, how will you guys uh, introduce yourselves, and whoever speaks first goes first? And silence. <laughs> Absolute silence. What happens every time? <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it's uh, our own. Just... I just have to question if it's out of spite. <laughs> I've only just started adopting uh, Kevin's little antics for this, so uh, just uh, tell them uh, just tell them who you are and where to find you. Uh, All right. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. I'm Shadow. I am the dungeon master for two separate groups in the uh, Desperate Dice Rollers. I uh, run a game on Wednesday nights called the Hearts of Darkness, which is based on the old uh, pulp adventure fictions of the 1920s. Um, even though it is a D&D &D format and setting, uh, their adventures... Uh, take place in things like a uh, haunted island, currently a mansion trapped between the ticks of time as they're trying to find a way out, and more goodness to come to follow. And then on Friday afternoons, I run a learner's game called the Castle Inverness Adventurers Academy. Uh, this game is designed for new players and younger players wanting to learn how to play the game. So we take a little bit slower time with it uh, learning the rules, learning things that the characters can do. We do not at this time stream. Um, I'm still looking for a technical producer to get the games back on, but we do have one or two of our early games, I think, that are still on our Twitch channel, and that can be found under the Desperate Dice Rollers channel, I think. I'll have to look at that. All right. Thank you for that. Right. Who wants to go next? All right, for Jelly's sake, I'll go next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello there, I'm Alex Fluffy. If you don't know me, what are you doing in your life? No, just kidding. Hi. Um, I'm just an average random little boyo fluffy boy that streams around in Twitch, running around, playing any games he plays, like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!'s, VR Chat, Cyberpunks, and all that fun jazz. Uh, I don't, I just stream any time I want until people yell at me soon later until I get a proper s streaming schedule. I mean, it's funnier this way, but don't worry about it. I promise I'll get a proper streaming schedule soon. I hope. Um, yeah, I don't have much. I'm just 
I'm just a simple person. I'm just happy to play. I just have a jolly good time to know all these people, and everything's gonna go to hell real soon. Then. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm the only one left. Um, hi, I'm Jellycat. Also go by Jelly. On um, I'm on Instagram as at Jelly the Ghost Cat, where I do drawings. Most of the time surreal, sometimes cute, a lot of times both. <laughs> That's not my channel, by the way. <laughs> Did I send desperate <laughs> dice rollers again? E. Ah, oh, damn it. I thought I copied and pasted yours. What the hell? Do, do you want me to do send you my <laughs> copy? Okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's another thing, man. Oh, it's a man of culture. I noticed. There we go. There yep. we go. Yeah. Yeah. This is my attempt at an overlay. I think it looks good. Yeah. It's a little too thin and a little too wide in certain spots, but it's my first attempt. You can still see our names. So, as for myself, this is my channel. I am a dungeon master for three campaigns all the exact same time. So, to say that I am working hard is an understatement. Uh, I am in Shadow's Wednesday game, <laughs> as you as well. I also play video games and do a lot of artwork. Um, I was supposed to do an art stream after the Turkey Heist one shot, and I didn't do it. Instead, I played Skyrim because <laughs> it, it's fun. Well, see, a, a very valid reason, right there. Yes, yeah. Valid. I like Skyrim, but uh. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you where you go. You're going to find me as Hellhounds Twenty, or just plain Hellhounds, depending if someone steals my name, which is always annoying, but I accept it. So I feel you there. All right, so I'm gonna say this for the moderators in chat: if a bot shows up talking bullcrap, leave it alone. Don't touch it. <laughs> just at me and I will take care of it because I am check I'm keeping an eye on the chat as well. Thank you, Bill. Yes, that is the potato griffin. So I do like myself with some potatoes. <laughs> I've been eating potatoes not that long ago. So it has been a few years since the Halloween adventure. Uh, your guys' lives have kind of changed. Some for the better, some for the meh. <laughs> but now, things have really started to change. You know things that others don't, whether po people believe you or not. I did roll... Go back to chat. We're gonna start with Zest. What has happened in the five years since Halloween? In the five years since Halloween, Zest has been sent to a private school supposedly for the gifted, although in his opinion, it's a prison for the more intelligent. <clears throat> he has dug deeply into studying what happened on Halloween. Who were these creatures? Where may they have come from? Um, slowly, he has moved away from pacifying the elder beings that demanded certain rituals be performed on certain days to keep them at bay as he has realized that there are others out there being more effective at it. He has become even more closed off from those around him, uh, suffered bullying from 
his schoolmates to the point that he no longer talks. Hmm. I take it he still talks with the others? On occasion, when he sees them, one person, Deo, has apparently decided that he is Zest's protector, even though Zest really doesn't ask him to do anything and seems more annoyed by it. <laughs> uh. Uh, I have not yet had the opportunity to meet this individual named Bit unless Annabelle has introduced us. Well, we're actually just about to get to that. So, that has been Zest's life. What has he done with that, uh, claw? He has kept it with him at all times in an attempt to study it as an arcane device. He's actually made it his new arcane focus. Alright. Even though he is still a Pact of the Tome warlock, um, the talisman itself has become something of a mystery to him that he needs to unravel. Well, how and... about you do me a quick favor mm -hmm. and roll an investigation? Okay. One thing you've learned about this claw, because it is from a completely different planar scape, a completely different dimension, in comparison to materials you're aware of, it's a lot stronger. It is near impossible to damage in any way. I believe you might have at one point tested it on a diamond and the diamond scratched. In fact, it cracked against this thing. Most interesting. So you know to be careful with this thing but there's really no physical, plausible way for you to break it down for arcane use other than being a focus. Most interesting. So it has, other than the focus I've placed into it to channel the arcane, it itself is not an arcane item. It has in in innate magical energy to it, but it's very alien. It's like you take an apple from, say, our world, and then you go to another world and you lift up the exact same apple. The exact same apple is going to be harder. It's going to have a different color to it. It's going to have a different smell, but they're the exact same. Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Now, let's move on to the two maniacs. Annabelle, what has happened in the five years since the Halloween party? After the events that happened last night, with Annabelle's paranoid and overly nervous personality, she started just spiraling. But luckily for her, her parents caught that and they set up therapy sessions with her, with the proper therapist, psychiatric. And she began, as she grew into, um, as a preteen, she began working through these issues and has become a bit more stable, although she has not fully escaped her anxiety ridden self. Um, she ended up being sent to a trade school to learn more about becoming an artificer. And it was there that while she is usually closed off, she ended up being partnered up with the cat, Tabaxi, named Bit. And since then, they have been causing issues for the teachers with their numerous projects. <laughs> Including your most recent one, <laughs> which thankfully Zest won't know about unless she mentions it. We don't talk about the most recent one. <laughs> we don't talk about that. They did some character work in the background. 
I know. <laughs> I'm aware that they did the character background stuff, and I don't want to know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We'll Good. see if we'll see if one of the things shows up. Oh no. Uh. There is one other bit that uh, was recently changed in Annabelle's life. Um, now, whenever she goes home, when she's not stressing about the insanity that she and Bit cause to the world <laughs> and their little community, she has to worry about the insanity in her own home with a toddler. <laughs> a recently adopted toddler. Yes. And not just any kind, it's actually one of my custom made races. A, oh, I'm sorry, species, Dracotar. So, first uh -oh. there's a centaur, now there's a dragon based centaur running around. And its body, like their body is um, built like it's a guard drake. But since it's so young, it's like a cat. It's like a kitten on catnip. It is, this little guy runs everywhere, claws everything, chews everything. Oh, climbs everything, yeah. But, they are adorable. If bit a little Apple annoying. Loves regardless. They're a little bit annoying. <laughs> 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 oh no. Oh wait, that's her line. Oh lord have mercy. Okay. I keep looking back at the, keep looking back at the character. 16, 17, 18, the characters, they look stressed 18, 18, 18. out. I look like someone who's ready to, to have parties. <laughs> okay. The baby Gardrake? Uh, Gardrake. Eh. Dracotar is a sapphire. Ooh. So they're a beautiful gemstone blue down, uh, for their lower half. And they're very, they're very agile. And very energetic. And, uh, does... Without the goggles, does Annabelle have dark vision? No. This little guy has dark vision. Yeah. I'll have to double so check what their breath weapon is, but I don't want to know. Now. <laughs> moving on to the newest member here. Bit. And Whiskers. Hi. You've met you met Annabelle. I don't know how long it's been. It's been a year. <laughs> yeah, it's been around a year. How about we get a little bit of info on Bit? Uh, well, uh, hi. I'm a uh, Bit. I am 14 years old. Nice to meet you all. I am. Uh, I've been adopted by my. The Zeppis, the Zeppas, Zeppas. Uh, sorry, I'm nervous. It's my first time meeting new people. Already as it is, and much as already we got trouble already with school. <laughs> um, hi, uh, I'm an I'm also an artificer. There's reasons why I'm also going to trade school with her. Uh, I love inventing things and helping people out. I uh, sorry, I'm still nervous. Uh, a bit about me. Oh yeah, that's right. A bit about me. I'm sorry. <laughs> See the pun? No. Uh, I back when I was young, I realized that Hold I on. love. Hold on. Hold on. Whoever's making that noise, you need to mute yourself, please. Carry on. Uh, a bit about me. Uh, back then, I didn't know much. I didn't do much. I was probably a normal child at first. So I realized how much I love honey, <laughs> and how much I love, and uh, how much I love to work work with machinery. 
and not just machinery, uh, more of alchemists and drinks and all that other jazz. Soon later, I just every day get a chance to work with something new and more and more. And soon later, they just forced me to trade school. I won't tell you why. That's how they involved a teacher screaming at me. It doesn't involve the whole, it doesn't involve a bomb at the school. It was reasons I can't fully explain. Let's just go with that. Soon later, I got in there. I was a little nervous until I met Annabelle. And I was just glad that I have a friend now. Uh, we talk a lot. We hang around. We do projects together. I don't know what's with the voices in my head. But I got to tell you, don't. Don't think of us. Don't think of us mistakes. They are chances for growth. <laughs> I believe there are chances for growth. Hmm. Except the recent one. I'll admit <laughs> that one was a mistake. <laughs> I'll admit the last one was a mistake. I won't say why, but I do believe we are smart. I do believe we are smart. I believe that we can change the world if we try our best. With good reasons and good intentions, and we'll lay out plans. We need to do the plans. And yeah, I think it, I, I think we get a good friendship going on. With, I hope with everyone else. I hope. Just gotta hope, man. I don't know what Dio has been up to, other than hanging out with Zest whenever he can. I still have no idea why. I know. But right now, it is pretty much Christmas Eve. It is the day of Christmas Eve. The magic that it brings just isn't there these days. You don't feel giddy all that much when you see a tree or when you hear the songs or sleigh bells or just the sound of bells in general. It's cold. It's very cold around here. Last year, the snow came up to Annabelle's hips, her humanoid hips. That was deep. I'll tell us Annabelle again. Um... I am 5'10". Hmm. So pretty much all your hips. My neck. <laughs> yes. Yep. Oh. This year is no different, but luckily the snow is not as insane. It's up to your knees this year. And the wind is Biting. It goes through your warmest clothes. You don't care. There's people singing. You don't care. This is for kids. This is for young kids. I'm an adult now. That's what you think to yourself. And who are we going to focus on for this? Don't be a three again. Okay, reroll. Okay. <sighs> Annabelle. <laughs> You're at home right now. Your little sibling is stampeding everywhere. Excited. So, so excited to tear apart these gifts tomorrow. Your gnome dad is trying to put the tree up proper. It has not been working since the start of the season. <laughs> His invention is not cooperating and he hates it. The dwarf dad is in the kitchen cooking right now. And you're sat on a modified couch made for uh, a being of your body type. So your front hooves are planted on the ground while your back half is resting on a cushion. Mm. And you're watching your gnome dad 
fiddle with a remote with a large red button on it, and you just spam pressing it, pointing at the tree at different angles, spam pressing it, getting more and more frustrated. It's gotten to the point where he has switched the hand holding the remote to his functioning flesh hand, else his mechanical hand will crush it. Do you, do you want some help? What I need is for this thing to start! Click, 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 <laughs> click, 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 click. Annabelle shakes her head and gets up. Looks over at the toddler that's running around. Hey, you wanna, you wanna run outside? Let's go outside. Come on. Your little sibling is about two years old. Yep. They can't talk yet. But they can scream. Yep. So that's good. Yep. <laughs> Come on, warm, warm clothes. Let's get some warm clothes on and let's go outside. You know those let's uh f those fur the soft jackets that they put over the backs of horses during winter. Yep. That's pretty much what mm -hmm. you and that and your little sibling wear. But your little sibling does not need too much warm clothes. Um, being what he what they are um they're used to cold temperatures yeah but if it gets windy they're gonna want to go back inside <laughs> so just hope there's no wind pray for no wind no they put wind, on no wind. they put on their <laughs> they put on their coat which makes their arms stick out in a t pose because of how bulky it is and they as soon as you open the screen door they're gone Right into the snow. Uh oh. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna panic. Try to try to make sure I know where they where they are, because if I lose them, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> Roll perception. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's you funny. still have it. <laughs> I guess we'll read it. <laughs> you can see them pretty easily. They have um, two little horns on their heads. Like on their head. And what's funny is that uh, the dwarf dad got a specific kind of hat that fits over both horns when it's not necessary. Kind of like having um, socks for your ears. Like specifically <laughs> for your ears. So you just see these two little cotton ball hats just scoot, 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 scoot through the snow like a shark. Yeah. <clears throat> How about we make a snowman? Do you know, want to make a snowman? They'll pop up out of the snow wide-eyed like, yeah. They don't know All how, right, but they're going to do it. Alright, let's make a snowman. I start making a snowball and showing them how to roll it into snow. Thankfully, because of their paw-shaped feet, they are able to roll um, a snowball of a much smoother consistency than uh, your hooves. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dern. I Hi. see you in chat. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, you make a snowman with a... Well, when you... I, I need you to roll a, a quick acrobatics, please. Okay. Hello. Hi, Ra. Hi. Okay. You do not crush the head of your snowman. But you do squish where the face is going to go. Mm. You know what? And, this is fine. <laughs> and you look over, you see your little sibling is now digging a hole in the snow. I'm going to take out like the goggles of the night that I made on that mm. Halloween night that I have with me. And I'm just going to put it on the snowman. Yeah, you made a snowman. Yep, and... <clears throat> Meanwhile, inside, you hear a whoomph and a crash. Oh no. When you step, when you lean inside, because you got snow and wetness all over your hooves, you lean in. The tree is up. It is a. It, it is very realistic looking, but it slowly spins, and when. 
winter's over, you press a button, and it'll fold in to be the size of a pancake. Okay. Like a very compressed little disc. The tree is up. The lights are on. The top is on. All the ornaments are on. Your gnome dad is in the unlit fireplace. Oh no. About ten feet away. And the dwarf dad's like slowly leaning in with like a, a bowl of cookie dough that he's mixing. <laughs> he just looks so confused. And Gnome Dad's mechanical arm pops out going, I'm okay. Do you, do you want help? No, I, I got it. Go play. Go play. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go back to... I'm just gonna slowly back up. Go you back like... to watching the kid. <laughs> Once you're outside, you realize your little sibling has made a tunnel network in all that snow. Why do you find all the energy? Did we give you sugar today? Oh no, did we give you sugar today? I'm just gonna give the view this for free. There used to be a box of candy canes. Now there's half a oh, box. No. <laughs> oh no. Like this little guy is two years old and he's already got teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wanna go on a walk around the neighborhood? We can go on a walk around the neighborhood. Yeah, try and burn the energy before they combust. <laughs> yes. Alright, well, we're gonna get back to you in a second, because you uh, they do agree to go on a walk, but they want to ride on your back. Course. Which is very interesting because it's like having a puppy try and balance yeah. on your back when you do yoga. Yeah. So, Dio, it has been yeah. five years since the Halloween party. What has he been up to and what's changed? He's gone to therapy. <laughs> what have I done to these children? <laughs> Yes, what have you done indeed? He honestly thought his mother was dying for a second there. Same with his father, like... Uh, uh, other than that, he has been hanging around Zest. Noticed that someone was trying to bully him around. That stopped... As far as Dio could tell, almost immediately, because he basically beat them, beat whoever was pulling him up. Hmm. Um. Other than that, he had been uh, getting. He had been doing costume work as a. He'd been basically getting into costume work when and he uh, costume work and video games as he uh, was not doing his uh, uh, his school work as a form of stress relief or being with zest as a form of stress relief. All right. Um. And he, uh, other than that, other than all those things, he also has been training because he, it's basically become his dream to be, uh, become an MMA fighter. <laughs> all right. Um, so that's pretty much all he's been doing. I think at some point, Annabelle would have introduced everybody to Bit. Yes. I hope so. I believe, okay, she probably would have called them over to test um their semester project. Not the one that we're not talking about, because it does not exist. No. But the, <laughs> but the one that actually ended up being okay. 
The coffee maker? The coffee maker. <laughs> it's yes. a coffee maker. Oh. Y yes. But it doesn't need beans. You don't, you don't. Well, I guess that it's not coffee. Mm. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what have you made? <laughs> I mean, as we tested so far, it, it makes coffee, so it's gotta be a coffee maker, right? It can wasn't make, it like, like <laughs> wasn't it nuclear powered? No, no that that's was the, the one. other one. That was yeah, the first, that was first one. one. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that one. That one was a mistake too. Oh, don't worry about it. this one. Is this one's powered normally by electricity? Normal. It it's like a it can make latte. It's like actual latte. It's not like the powder kind where you, that you get from like the bean It's like actual latte. Yeah, try it. Do you remember, buddy? If at any point you want to make a roll, roll it and tell me why. So if anybody inside. wants to make an in, if anybody wants to make an insight on these two jokers, feel free. It's insight because I know for a fact these two like to, I I know for a fact at least uh. One of these two likes to overcomplicate things. You don't even know who I am. No, I don't. <laughs> but I know at least one of you likes to overcomplicate things. Seems legit. Coffee's pretty good. Don't know how they did it. <laughs> we had wow. a blueprint this time for this one. Yes. <laughs> Inside again, because that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's because they never use blueprints. It's perfect. It's a perfectly normal coffee. Yeah. So far. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's <laughs> absolutely Wolf. nothing wrong with it. I promise. Dark Wolf and Chat. Can I roll in sight? <laughs> Bill, if you have a D twenty, go for it and tell me what you get, because that's funny to me. <laughs> Add the, <laughs> add the chat into participation. Alright. I, I narrow my eyes at Annabelle. Yes. I know something's up, but I can't figure out what. Um, but... I mean... Um, this so... This is actually just normal coffee. Y yes. No, I mean, there's I... something overcomplicated about this machine. Well, I didn't I just tell... don't know what. I don't... I, I didn't no, no, no. tell Bit... This, but I guess if we're sharing, if I, if I am, um, you know, let's talk about this later. Uh, okay. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Never mind. I uh, said nothing. Uh, okay. So. I don't know. Whose blueprints were they? Oh my god. They were, it was, it was a joint, it was a joint effort. We worked together to make these blueprints, <laughs> and then we worked together on making it. Yep. Oh, why is that? No, turn that off. It's a miracle group project where everyone pitched in an equal amount. Yep. Hold on, I need to answer Bill here. Seems legit. <laughs> Seems <laughs> legit. These two jokers rolled really well on their crafting. <laughs> This one, not the other ones. <laughs> not the other ones. <laughs> so. Actually, yeah. Actually, the other one's still a mistake. Regardless. So, what is the purpose of a coffee machine that doesn't need coffee beans? Uh, I look over at Bit, because Bit would know. Oh. <clears throat> Are you guys able to control your tokens, by the way? Ah, uh, um. So, I hate as a player yes. I can't say anything because I have a minus two to intelligence. <laughs> Your insights are pretty bad as well. So about so we kind of we, we kind of thought like okay for once well not for once for a while uh, we thought it would be nice to do something simple for once. I will, I will not lie. We failed the first time. I will not say why. But we thought it would be something nice. As a second guy, we'd try something more laid out. So we thought of the plan of the blueprints. Because I thought that's 
probably what we messed up in the begin to begin with. So we made the blueprints, and we attempt to do this for real. And this is the end result. The whole purpose about the, the coffee machine is meant to like have like have options and not make simple coffee, except you can make mochas and all that stuff without the coffee beans and all that. Yeah. So where does the coffee come from? Uh... That's actually another thing. It took some time with magic to work on it. Magic? Yes. So you're using magic to replace a necessity of ingredients for your coffee? If it works... It just shows that there's possibly there are more possibilities to work with with foods and all that. You know, let's actually, yeah, it. let's not talk about that. Actually, not thinking but about that. If no. you don't, if you don't know where the coffee is coming from, how I do you know, know you're not doing? How I, mean, do I know, you know where the coffee. I mean, I know where the coffee you, come from. Where is it coming from? This is our final. This is our semester project. Please be nice. <laughs> So where are the where are the coffee comes from? <laughs> so the coffee is coming from. Uh, where is the coffee coming from? I don't know. Can this I roll is our, your thing. Can, can I roll our kind of to figure out where it's coming from or something? Absolutely. That's what I just attempted. And then just also do that. <laughs> okay. Mm. Give me a hot second here. <laughs> And like, oh Above yeah, the game and before it come, it's coming from the plane of coffee. <laughs> you check your work, and you taste it, and you also kind of run it by uh, your dad. He knows where it came from. It came from one of the elemental planes. Ah, uh, <laughs> of course. Like I said. Yeah. Okay, so basically, this is. It's connected to the elemental planes to give us coffee, if that makes sense. Specifically, it is from the el it is from the border between the elemental plane of fire and the elemental plane of water. The elemental plane of boiled beverages. <laughs> the elemental plane of steam. I'm starting to question myself. Like the planes that we know of in normal D and D have been shifted around a bit. What we usually know as planes are different here. The border yeah. between the elemental plane of water and the elemental plane of fire is steam and boiling, but there's a very small one right in between that is just right. And this little area is where those who can survive in either area, in either plane, can live comfortably. They grow the beans. They create amazing beverages. Mostly for trade and mostly for um, very tyrannical planar leaders. I start to you think know, this first. isn't the weirdest part of this machine, so I'm not even concerned. No, no, it's not. But I'm starting to think. But, Annabelle. Yes? You're, you're creating... Even if it's small, a hole in the dimensions to bring coffee through, and you don't know who you're taking it from. Panic. Um, <laughs> no, 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 this, no. This no. is this is my concern. It's no, no, you know, here's the thing you must understand. If it was such a humongous problem, my dad would have already been told me about it regardless. I was yeah. about to ask does as, this taste As I... Bit says, this is what you must understand. Zest's head just cocks to the side a little bit and his eyes narrow. I was about to ask, does this taste like something from like my dad's coffee maker? No. No. Is it if it's from if zero? it's from this from that border plane, um you can always tell the difference between, say, if we use like real world analogy, Folgers, and co and uh, what is it? Um, what are, what is that? 
Folgers. Folgers and, oh, sorry, like Folgers and store brand coffee. You can always tell the difference. Uh, what you're drinking from this coffee maker is artisan. So it's like something the from, good stuff, it, brother. It's like something from Hello Coffee in Victoria, Canada. Yep. It's like coffee made from a company in either another country or nearby in a very big city that I'm not going to say the name of. We all know it. It's everywhere on the West Coast. Um, but they do really good at it. Like, they're yeah, like, really good at it. Yeah, it's like hot chocolate. There's the U.S. hot chocolate and then the Mexican hot chocolate. Oh. You can definitely tell the difference. Clear oh, as day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We got the. Uh, it's, the thing is, we got the Mexican hot chocolate though. I know where the steaming milk t- is coming from. If that help, if that helps at all. I mean, I was just gonna say, I don't think there's nothing bad what we're doing because they would already say something otherwise. And you know my how my dad is. He would he would yeah. stop us if we were doing something bad. Yeah. I hope. Oh right, they don't uh... know what your dad is. But anyways, it doesn't matter. We all we know is that we got a really good cup of joe, mm-hmm. and I hope everyone enjoys it. I'll shut it down after we get an A on the project. I don't mm. think I have the energy in me to make another one. If you get an A. Oh no! What if I don't get an A? <laughs> no, 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 no! no. Thanks, you have to remember there are other art artificers in your school. Oh. Oh. <laughs> panic! Panic! <laughs> I'm just worried. Annabelle, you'll do fine. You always do. Uh, let's see here. I'm making a wisdom check to check. Should I be worried <laughs> about local government agencies that are concerned with pu- punching holes through the elemental plan through other planes of existence? No, actually, um. How do I best explain this? Some planes, like, let me, no, sorry, let me, let me see if I can word this. You guys know that during the spring and summer, the material plane is assaulted constantly by giant creatures from other planes, including the fire plane and the water plane. Things like this is not a priority and it's not a problem unless you're punching a hole into the more negative planes like the hells and stuff like that or even the celestial planes so something like this isn't a matter something like this is not even going to be sneezed at no one's going to care yeah we'll be fine this is not the biggest atrocity we made that weekend no don't this ain't too much Um, what? what? nothing nothing (laughs) No, 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 no. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. Trust me, it actually is nothing. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Growing concern in in uh, Dio's eyes. We already took... Don't worry. It is a little thing that we did take care of, so it's nothing to worry about, honestly. To get this one shot back on track, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is all a flashback, by the way. Oh. Going back forward in time to Annabelle walking down the road with her little sibling hopping up onto her back and then hopping down, running around, hopping back up onto her back because they're so excited to see everything. But always staying right by her side. They never run ahead or run behind or anything. They stay right by your side. As you're walking through your community, through the neighborhood, you do see Bit's house, not that far away. There's a miniature explosion from the garage. And you can see, and you can see Bit's dad is hopping off of a very large, heavily armored military truck. He looks haggard and tired. Actually, I think that means the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but like he does, he Name. does, he does see you, and he gives you a very weak wave. I I wave back. 
Let me double check. What side was that arm on? Oh. In case anybody is curious, Bit's dad is a little goblin. With a mechanical, like, fully functioning arcane mechanical arm. He has mechanics tools hanging off his belt. He has dog tags that hang around his neck. And he wears the colors of one of the more respected branches of the military. Known as planar divers. These guys go into the planes willingly to deal with invaders. To deal with the planes that send in these giant monsters. If you want to ask anybody about planar travel or planar information or just the changes that are going on out there, he is the one to ask. This guy's also kind of a kind of a hard ass. <laughs> but he but Bit's dad looks at the garage as another spatter of sparks come out and some panicked meowing. He just kind of gives a chuckle and just shuffles into the house. Annabelle, you keep walking. Now your little sibling is yeah. finally tiring out. But they don't want to go back home yet. Wanna go visit Bit? They just lean against your leg, just nodding like, yeah, sure. Okay, let's go visit Bit instead. You I cross... go ahead and knock on the door. You cross the street, you go up to the house. Um, answering the door is a is a still tired goblin holding a a mug in his mechanical arm and he's like just starting to take off his tool belt as he has answered the door he looks up sees you and just casually points to the garage before closing the door <laughs> i just nod my head and i head into the garage what is bit doing right now <laughs> so you must understand it was christmas and I do love Christmas. Sure, I may lose the spark. I was trying to bring that back. So, my little invention... Little. Yeah, right. <laughs> my invention was to bring... You know how Christmas lights are, right? How nice, how colorful they all normally are. You must understand, I was trying to infuse them with a little bit of magic into them. So that they dance around a little bit while, while they're lighting up. So it's like a little jingle, and they show... So it just add that little spark of magic into to Christmas as it is. So I was trying to do that. I failed. It blowed up in my face. As you could already tell by the loud a little boom in the garage. And I have sit all over my face. And also by the massive amount of exploded light bulbs. Mm. Temp number 14 has failed. Probably need to put a little less on the magic on that next time. You hear the familiar the clops of hooves. Oh. Huh? Hey. Oh. oh, hey, Adamo. Oh, I also That's noticed you bring the small one, too. Yes. Uh, they didn't want to go home yet. Oh, that's fine. He gets off of his chair. Ah, oh, well, I'm glad you came over. Uh, sorry that it ended up uh, seeing me like this with a bit of failure. <laughs> In the oh, background, sure. Whiskers has grabbed a little tiny brush and is cleaning up all the broken glass. <laughs> so, what brought you over? Um, the sound of explosion. I was in the neighborhood. Ah, okay, I see. He gets up and brushes the sit off around his fur and all that. Well, I don't have much for now. I we still have the coffee ma machine. We still have the coffee machine. It still works. Okay. As it's the long longest as... <laughs> so far. We're gonna have to destroy it after like the semester project. You know that, right? I mean, I I don't know. I mean, it's so cut. <laughs> do we do we want like 
an op it's like an open portal thing. That's yeah. giving us coffee. Yeah, you're right. It's it's harmless, and I still want the A. But we probably should destroy it. Yeah, I, I guess am. so. Meanwhile, on the other side of the neighborhood, like the better part of the neighborhood. The from better part. Perspective: <laughs> Bit and Annabelle live closer to the highway. <laughs> Zest lives closer to like the interior of the town where all the shops are. I got a notification. No, oh, get out of here. Um, and Dio lives. Whoa. Oh, thank you for the follow. Uh, You're welcome. And Dio lives somewhat closer there, but he lives closer to the business areas. Currently, with Zest, your mom is out in the cold, and she does not like this cold. She hates it. But she has to do it because it's Christmas and she wants to go shopping. Okay. Thank you for the follow. Oh, I know who cards it plays. Okay. <laughs> it took me a second. I had to remember. You are currently outside right now. For whatever reason, you're outside. Your mom's not home yet. Your dad has kind of kicked you out of the house to get some air. You know, stretch your legs. While he's very busy setting an old tome. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? He's setting a what? Uh, your dad had kicked you out of the house to stretch your legs and get some fresh air because he is studying a very old tome. <clears throat> okay, I misheard the first part of that. I thought you were saying he was setting up a tome. Same here. <laughs> Must have been the pop of the mic. No worries. You know where Annabelle and Bit live. You've been to their houses before. You know where Dio lives. You've been to his house before. You have no idea where the heck your mom is right now. If I have to go out of the house... I'll head for Annabelle's. Alright. You start heading down the road. Oh, I'll take I'll bring Applesine with me as well. You're a little familiar? Mm-hmm. You're familiar trots along your legs before he in a blur of in a blur of a, a stardust and what looks like fire, he floats up and perches on your shoulder instead. Wrap the scarf around both of us. It's got to be cold for him, too. The snow is up to your knees this year. Last year it was worse. You know. But at least the sidewalks are cleared. Hmm. Uh, before I leave, I'll ritual cast an unseen servant. Mm -hmm. It can clear the snow in front of us so we're not walking through the deeper parts. The sidewalks are closed, uh, are cleared. Oh, they are? Yeah. All right, then. Then I won't need that. <laughs> you can still do it if you want. Just to show off. No. Showing off just attracts attention, and attention is not what we want. I don't know where they're hiding, but no sense drawing their eyes to me. Hmm. So, yes, I'll head to Annabelle's. As you're walking down the road, a very large military vehicle rumbles past you. It's the kind that you would see, like, a whole platoon of soldiers jump out during, like, a mission. Mm-hmm. Armored transport. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can see a, a familiar goblin is sat in the back, closest to the back of it. He looks so tired. All of them look so tired. One of them actually has a bandage around his face. Must have been a breach somewhere. The pink job on this vehicle is black and red, which is that branch of the military. Okay. The plane toppers? Plane or divers, yep. Divers, thank you. They Where did they go? They turn down the same 
turn that you are about to go down. I will quicken my pace, not yet running, mm -hmm. but that is concerning. By the time you get to the street that Annabelle and Bit live near, sorry, that Bit lives on, Annabelle lives near, sorry, you see the vehicle is now pulling away. The goblin is on the sidewalk heaving a large bag over his shoulder to get into the house. You can see Annabelle in the distance, like, she's getting there before you, but she's too far away for you to call out to her just yet. I'll head that direction. Uh, what is Mr. Azapa's rank in the military? Let me think about that. Hold on. Because uh. I'm just from a military family. I've never served. Um... <laughs> He is a respected individual. He's definitely of higher rank. He's nowhere near, say, a general. But if you were to put Captain, him... Maybe? if you, hmm? Captain, maybe? Captain or colonel. Well, does, does he lead the full unit, or is he just a member of it? The planar divers are usually viewed as something like the Green Beret. Right, so if he's leading the unit, he's more than likely a captain. Mm -hmm. Colonel would be multiple units. I'd say he's, um, he would be the equivalent of a captain. All right. Though he never gives the air of being one. Still he's just, like he's just somebody to respect. Exactly, I would still like to respect that rank by acknowledging it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yes, as as I get closer, I will uh, greetings, cap Captain. Uh, well, when you arrive, it's after Annabelle has gone into the garage. Oh, okay. And the dad has closed the door, and you come up just as like, just as that finishing part of like destroying the coffee machine. Oh, as they were talking about destroying the coffee machine? Yeah. You were showing up as all this was going down. Okay. Bit and Annabelle, you hear his footsteps. Huh? Hey, Zest. Hi. Hello there. What's, what's going on? Um, it's making lights. I was in the process of making lights, but as you can tell, it failed, and I am trying. I'm probably thinking about trying again once more before we do. Before I end up trying to do something else. You're you're making lights. I'm trying to make custom lights that dance. You know, just bring that little extra festive festivities into into Christmas, you know? Dancing lights, if you will. Yeah, like, imagine that on a tree. The lights moving a little bit. I thought I'll just add a little bit, like, something cool to it, you know? And then, Why? Because it's Christmas, and I wanted to bring the little shine into the, to the, to it. That's all. I don't have money... I don't really have much, and I just thought it would be nice. And I thought my parents would like it too, just seeing the tree like that. Something big or small, just something something to do. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill, for that. Um, if you want, you can help if you like. I, I heard from Annabelle that you're a pretty smart person. I don't know why I find that very funny. I don't I don't know why. <laughs> it's always fun to add more people into friend projects of ours. Speaking of chance. which 
Dio has kind of been having the same thing. Where all this has been going down as he's been approaching. From a different direction. Would I have seen the uh, military transport? From the direction you're coming from, because your mom would have like dropped you off to do a little bit of a light shopping, just very light, small things, you would have actually seen the truck coming off of the highway to go into the residential area. So you would oh, no. actually be you would actually be uh, approaching it as it's coming towards you by the time you get to the house. Hey guys. Hey. Yeah. You um, guys turn to see Dio walking up. He's got like one bag of uh gifts. Why is there a military transport that is in the residential area? Why is there a military transport near here? Oh, that's my dad. That's his dad. They were dropping off the captain. Ah. Speaking <clears throat> of which, the door that leads to the rest of the house, like on the side of the garage, opens up. You see that little goblin. He's still wearing his his clothes, his, his uniform, but he doesn't have his tool belt on. All of his gear is off. His shoes are off. And he's got that large mug. And he leans out. He kind of pauses when he sees you guys. And he looks a bit. And holds up the mug. Oh, of course. And welcome home, Dad. <laughs> I bet he wants a refill on his cup. So, uh, when was that project due by again? Uh, right now it's winter, December ish break, and when that this this is over, yeah, when the break is over. Yep. The goblin. When did you guys receive this? Uh, assignment? Just before, before break. winter break started. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry what over the small you stuff. Do, you could have started the coffee maker now and would have been finished by the end of tonight. We thought we thought of extra credit. Yeah. Oh, um... No. Don't you ever um, have an idea and just can't not stop thinking about it until you make that idea? You hear Bit's dad from right behind you guys. He's getting himself a very large mug of coffee. Yes, Dio and it gets a lot of people killed, let me tell you. Dio but hey, he <laughs> picks up the mug and holds it out. Also gets them killed too. Gives a wink and starts to walk away. <laughs> Dio gestures to the two, uh, le to the two lab leather pouches on his outfit. Yes. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. It's not that. It's not. Hey, a big and the dad stops and turns to look at Bit. Your mom's gonna be back. Uh, is gonna be leaving here soon. So your friends can't stay here today. Okay. Well, he, looks, case... he looks at you, Zest, and he tips his mug to you. Just nod. You guys have a Merry Christmas. He goes through the door. Thank you, Dad. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Even though it's Christmas uh, Eve, but still Merry Christmas. What was that about? Uh, what was yeah. what about? Hmm. Anyways, uh, if you guys... So, why can't we stay here when your mom is coming home? My mom needs rest. No, when she's she's going to be leaving soon. Oh, oh. leaving. Oh, she's going to be out for work. Oh. We, we can she, head to my place. Uh, I need to drop um, I need to drop my younger sibling off. Well, in that case, I can, I can I, also bring my gifts, too. I need to go back to the drop-off point to drop this stuff off. For my mom. Oh, in that case, looks at the clock. Why don't we all meet up around uh, six or seven at her place? At Annabelle's place? Yeah. Will your parents okay. be okay with that, Annabelle? 
My parents always loved company. She's not wrong. She's definitely not wrong. Still, it would be impolite to intrude uninvited. I look at Annabelle like, has that even ever happened when we, whenever I come over? No. So I think we'll be fine. I mean, we'll also be clean up after ourselves, honestly, right? Yeah. My, um, my dad's making cookies. <gasps> actually, that's a coincidence. I actually made, products, made some goods, too, before we go. I made brownies. To move things along here. <laughs> <laughs> a... A very large... I'd say she's draconic looking. This very large creature comes through the door in a rush. She's wearing a nurse's uniform. She's got a jacket on and some slippers on her feet because, you know, it's cold. But she's on her phone. She's She's hurrying through the garage door. She sees you all and kind of lowers her phone to look at you guys. All right, you guys need to get going. This I'm having a bit of an emergency here. And she hurries past you to get to her car, which has yes, some dents. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I'll fix that later. Oh, these are old I'm dents. Oh, okay. These are her dents. <laughs> mm. oh, in that to case... be clear, the dad is a goblin. The mom is seven feet tall. <laughs> she is very she is very strongly built. She is what is called a kaiju born. Meaning whatever kaiju breached long ago created her family line. Yeah. But uh, she quickly peels out of there and sure enough the dad's sitting in the doorway calmly. Okay. I will wave and leave. I will... I'm gonna scoop up the small child and leave. Dio um, is also leaving. I'm gonna go in my room real quick to grab all my stuff and then head out. Can how I... heavy is... By the way, oh, sorry. How heavy is the uh, bag that I'm holding? Not, not very heavy. It's like... um. It's like your parent dropped you off at the dollar store to get some cheap little stocking stuffers. Okay, if that's the case, then my mage hand actually would be carrying it for me. Alright. Um, the goblin dad does offer to give Zess and Dio a ride home if they want. Uh, I was dropped off by my mother to, uh, get... I was dropped off by my mother earlier. She's... Currently, I think about half a mile from here. All right, if you're sure. I could, I could just walk over to where she dropped me off and tell her that I, sorry, ask her if I could go over to Annabelle's. He gives a two finger salute and he looks at you, Zest. Thank you, Captain, but no, it's not far from me from here. And I can go to Annabelle's and call if I need a ride. But thank you. All right. Just let me know if anything changes. <laughs> he uh, grabs Bit as he's about to leave. He leans over. Please don't explode anything. I promise. He pats your bag and sends you on your way. <laughs> now, the reason that you guys couldn't stay is that when it is Christmas Eve, Bit's dad goes nuts with the decorations. Even though he is exhausted, he is still going to decorate this place to be better than a certain other military family around the corner. <laughs> we, we, will not, we will not <laughs> lose to them this year. You can actually see their house around the corner by the giant inflatable snowman. I'll just put a fist up and looks and look at them right first straight up we will not lose you this year dinkleberg dinkleberg <laughs> no <laughs> uh w once uh bit's father is out of earshot you know we could um sabotage it what if we get caught i you know i was already thinking about that but my dad said he wants a fair fight 
Fair enough. Unless he told me specifically, I will gladly do it. But right now, until he doesn't say, tell me otherwise, I won't do it. I said fair enough. Well, Bit's dad is from Planar Divers. This other guy is from uh, the Navy. Oh, we don't care about uh... the Navy. Okay. Uh, Navy? Which one? Because of the way this world is set up, um, the elite teams that we usually know of are condensed into the primary branch okay. like, that they are a part of. Planar divers are their own branch. They are not condensed. <laughs> Come on, guys, go Navy. No, fuck you, you Bill. Go Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I, the first part is I know a friend that's actually part of the Navy. <laughs> Just and, saying that. And the, the crazy, the crazy guys over in the corner. Fuck you all. Go space force. <laughs> as their as their only job is to wash out for our rogue celestial bodies, colliding with. Anyway, the I'm again going to advance the one shot because there is stuff planned other than you guys chatting. You guys' time at Annabelle's house. It's kind of like watching a sitcom. Because the gnome dad's... Like, the decoration here is, like, all the gnome dad's inventions. Or attempts <laughs> at inventions. You know that Bit's creations explode sometimes. His creations like to surprise. Case in point, the tree. As you guys are sitting on the couch hanging out, the tree closes up and folds into a disc again. It's been doing that all um, winter. <laughs> the lights that are around the house start to shrink and shrivel into one little string. Much to his annoyance. And of course, the Santa inflatable has tipped over. Hmm. I know that sound. Please don't. Okay, okay. For now, like I said, I said I promise for this time, I will keep calm. Then, yeah. then there's the fact about the little sibling. Yeah. Does the I, little sibling have a name? Um, I haven't given them a name because we just created them when I was falling asleep last night. Do we know <laughs> what Whiskers actually is, though? Whiskers is a homunculus. It's Bits a homunculus. Oh. They've just been cleaning up Bits' mess in the background the entire time with a little... uh, It's one of those paintbrushes that you use on, you use on the side of the house. He's been using that as a broom. I'm just gonna tell Whiskers to relax for the day. He can't relax when that little toddler's around. Uh, oh, actually, that's fair, considering. Because yeah. once you guys get to Animal's house, uh, the little sibling immediately re-energizes and tries to catch Whiskers. Oh, no. So Whiskers, like, flies to, the, like, uh, near the ceiling where the chimney and the ceiling meet and just clings there. Yep. It's It's all insanity. No. I'm, I'm sorry, she ate half of the box of candy canes oh. while they ate. Right, it's, yeah. no, it's no problem as I get my flask and start drinking some honey. The dwarf dad pops out of the kitchen. They ate the candy canes? Y Is yes. that where they went? Yeah. Uh, I was gonna make hot cocoa with those. He goes back into the <laughs> kitchen, still mixing probably the fourth type of cookie. Oh, you know, I just realized. I should have. We should have brought the machine. Ah, uh, that would have been a good idea. I mean, I'm still not far, but I don't want to bother my dad. Maybe later. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Um. Woomph. I don't think it's a good idea. Uh. <laughs> there goes the tree. It's oh. open. Does your dad have that on a timer? No, this is unintentional. Uh, should we help your dad? Nope, he doesn't nope. want help. He doesn't want help? He doesn't want help. 
I'm just glad your dad is isn't actually putting anything that's can't be can, that can't be retracted on that tree. Huh? That's why we can't help. Oh. I mean, there, there's no candy canes on it. Yep. Well, there's I no was... candy canes on it because if we put candy canes on it, um, that one's going to eat them all. You watch your fingers like go up to the ceiling, then follow follow the child oh, as I it follows you... with kids. I thought you weren't putting anything on it because it would track into the disc and then jam it up. Um, well, if we... If my dad wanted it to work that way, then we could put candy canes on it and we could do that. I think it's just easier this way. Yeah. Mm. Let me tell you, it looks like a pancake. Well, it's not by, well to that woof was it popping open and surprising the gnome dad again. Uh, are you okay, sir? <sighs> <laughs> he just <laughs> crawls underneath the tree, starts working on it. Anyway. So it's it's not supposed to close and open like that? No. It's supposed to close and open by the press of a button. But it's not doing. Click, click, Wait, click. in that case, where's the button? He points to the button, which is like up on a shelf where the little toddler couldn't reach. I, I look at the button for a minute. It is literally just a remote with a large red button. Uh, <laughs> just the classic cartoon. No. Yeah. I look at it for a minute, like, is, he, is it even connected to the tree? I think it probably is. Annabelle would know. Annabelle? Yes? Is this connected? Is this button connected to the tree? It's supposed to be. What do you mean it's supposed to be? Is it is or isn't? Uh, I look at the tree. He was messing it with it earlier and it wouldn't retract when he hit the button. But it's supposed to work. I'm just gonna check if it's connected to the tree. Alright. What are you gonna roll? Um... Probably investigation. Since I'm just okay. making a thorough look around it to make sure it's still connected and all that. Alright. Nine. <laughs> you have no idea. Mm -hmm. well, this, guy, I don't know. this guy has been doing artificer-like work longer than you've been alive. This is way different than what you're used to. Well, I can't figure this out. Too many wires. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... He, you probably wouldn't be able to crack it open. You're just holding a box with a red button on it. And you say this doesn't work when I press the button. Anyone press the button? Don't. You're gonna press the button? Uh, is anyone in the way of the of the tree? The gnome dad is under the tree. I'm not gonna press the button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You gonna put it back? I'm gonna gently put it back where it was so that the child don't touch it. The child, which is currently running upstairs to play with his toys. Okay. There they go. It's like it's like having a cat awake at 3 a.m. running up and down the halls. Or maybe the, yep. it's a dog. Either way, same thing. Well, so, the rest yeah. of your guys' afternoon is just watching this gnome dad mess with a tree, being surprised by it multiple times before finally getting it to work. Whiskers never coming down from the ceiling, and the toddler passing out at four o'clock. Finally, <laughs> Whiskers says. <laughs> you guys also get four different types of cookies, as for as uh, taste testers to see which one um, the spirit of Christmas would like. What do they? What do they taste like? Uh. One cookie is macadamia nut and chocolate chip. Okay. Another one is mini marshmallows and uh, can uh, chocolate chunks. The other one is 
broken up candy cane pieces. That's three. The fourth one is a basic sugar cookie, but it has a uh, icing on it to look like a like the spirit of Christmas, which is a bearded man with a blindfold. My mom's what? going to kill me. Wait. Bearded man and a blindfold. Yeah. Look at it for a minute. L looking at the cookies, uh, Dio s repeats, my mom's going to kill me. My mom's going to kill me. My mom's going to kill me. Why is your mom going to try to kill you? Because I can't have sugar. Oh, th don't eat them. No, the dwarf dad wouldn't have given you any. If you had said that. Yeah, I can't have sugar, cause, not because I get hyper, but because of my teeth. Oh, oh I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm still wearing this mask. I think the peppermint ones are the best ones. Hold on, I need to test something. I need to test something out. Uh, I go, I go with all of the, sh I go with cookies. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to test which one is better with the honey. <laughs> the macadamia nut and chocolate chip. This one. I do this one. The macadamia one. As I pour more honey on it and just continue eating it. <laughs> the dwarf edges stares at this. I'm not putting honey on it. It's okay. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> back into the kitchen. <laughs> I'm just gonna put a plate with one of each. Okay. okay. Thank you for your honest opinion. I do think he would prefer the sugar cookies. <laughs> by... By 7pm, you guys are... You guys are heading home. Um... The little goblin dad is still more than happy to give you guys a ride. By now, Bit's house is a light show. Yay! <laughs> like, on the lawn, there is a small animatronic spirit of uh, Christmas coming up out of a chimney. He's He's got, like, a really sparkly glowing antlers and a blindfold. And then he slowly drifts back down under, into the uh, chimney. It's, it's fantastic. And then you look over the navy guy. His house is also a light show. Uh, quick question. Hmm. Is this this dream? Are we allowed to curse? Real quick. Just quick question. My streams are always 18 plus. Alright. Yeah, fuck you, navy guy. <laughs> So, quick question. Hmm? Can I see the light pollution coming off of Bit's house from where um, the drop-off point is? Oh. <laughs> no. Okay. Got no pollution. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> don't you know what light pollution is? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um... Zest will accept the ride this time. Alright. Uh, the Gnome Dad drives in a very nice, like, 1980s style pickup truck. He drives you to your place. And he, and he, uh... Hold on, let me think of my words here. He hands you a little pouch. As you're about to get out. He, he kind of gives you a very serious look. Make sure to give that to your dad. He needs to see it. I hmm. will make certain. Thank you. You have a Merry Christmas, kid. Closes um, the door behind you. Okay. Thank you. And he drives back home. That night, you guys are each in your own homes enjoying whatever traditions for the holidays that you might have. For Bit, it's it's uh, your dad getting in a shouting match with that other guy and beating him 
in the middle of the street. Like, they're actually fist fighting in the middle of the street. I'll, I'll be cheering for my dad. <laughs> this happens every year. Everyone's expecting it. It happens every year. And like, I bet, like, at a point, there's like, oh, there's like a crowd and we have bets around. <laughs> like, who will win this year? <laughs> Hold on, let me find out for you. I always go for my dad. My dad. He does win. Yeah. <laughs> this is only the third year of him having a mechanical arm, and he's used it to the best of his abilities. For Annabelle. Yeah. Ignoring the fight in the middle of the street that you can hear. It's sitting down together with a fire in the fireplace and watching cheesy Christmas movies. With Dio, it's simply just having dinner ne uh, in the living room, like admiring the Christmas tree. And also hearing stories about the um, their, your ancestors during the time of the Calamity. And with Zest, it's reading a different book, like a different origin book of the Spirit of Christmas. Last year, it was the equivalent of the German version. This year is the equivalent of the Icelandic. Make certain that I give the pouch that Mr. Fleece gave me to my dad. It wasn't from uh, Annabelle's dad, it was from Bit's dad. Oh. So Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. It's alright. So, Captain, Captain, I, you said gnome, so... I... <laughs> I uh, did I? Yeah, you did. So I, I thought yeah. it was, that's who gave me the right. So, no, nope. not a problem. Nope. I can switch that. <laughs> Easy switch. So make sure, make sure I give him the pouch the captain gave me. You do glimpse what's in the pouch. It is a pulsing, glowing, um, I can only describe it as a chunk. It's hard to tell if it's a piece of stone or if it's a piece of one of those creatures. All you know is it's its own light source that does that, uh, that reflection effect that water has. Mm -hmm. But it's blue, purple, and green. And it gives off a very weird energy that has your dad's eyes grow wide like, whoa. This is likely going to take up most of his attention for the next few days. Do you know what it is, Dad? And he, he very quickly covers it and looks at you. Um, it, it's nothing. You should head to bed. You're thinking this might be very sensitive work. You're lying to me. And then turn around and leave. Alright. I think my audio must have dropped because all I heard was you're lying to me and that was it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I gave him I gave him the blank look that says, I know you're lying to me. Mm -hmm. And then I turn around and I head upstairs to go to bed. Can you roll me an insight real quick? <clears throat> this chunk that he has is concerning but because it came from a planar diver it is very sensitive work mm -hmm. if he wanted to tell you he couldn't hence the blank look mm -hmm. but you think that once they're fine they finally understand what it is and everyone else in the military knows he'll be able to tell you which is the reason why i'm not using telepathy to get into his head to find out <laughs> yeah. That night, as you guys, as you guys lie in bed, some of you think there is no way some spirit of Christmas is going to show up. There's, there's no way. 
his blessings and omens it's too coincidental you lie there some of you have windows near your bed some of you don't I don't really know but you start to slowly drift off as the faint sound of wind and ice hits your ears and you finally fade to rest as you start to feel cold when you open your eyes something's not quite right all of you are in but are all near each other You're, you can all see each other but you don't look the same who is the first to wake up um actually what is everybody's constitutions constitutions Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mine is 18. Mine is 13. Mine is 16. And then there's Zest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I lost internet with, connection for a moment. With, with zero con. <laughs> What's your Liar. constitution? Uh, eight. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, who had 18? I did. So, Dio... Your eyes flutter open. You're in the snow. And when you look up, that is not the same sky that you're used to. There is a gradient of pink near the base of the horizon, and it gradients up to a blend of purple and blue. But the stars are bright green. And there's no moon. Do I see the others near me? Oh yeah, you're all lying in the snow. I immediately go over to wake Zest up. You reach your hand out and you notice your hand's not normal. What the fuck? Ta-da! Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what? <laughs> There's one clearly. One of these things does look like the others. One of these things just I don't know. I'm sorry, but I saw it. And I had to. I what had the to... hell happens to my scales? So, I'll explain this. Dio, you look at your hands, they're gray and black. They look like the consistency of lava, or at the very least, cooled lava and ash. Like you would see at a volcano. And you look down your feet, they're webbed, but they got really large claws. And you kind of think back on it. I need you to roll history for me. With advantage. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Uh... No. No, it's fine. The DC wasn't very high. Oh. <laughs> you think to yourself, okay. Volcanic skin, large claws. As long as I don't have... And you reach back and you feel a beetle carapace on your back. And in your mind you go, oh no. You remember... There was an old... There was a... a still ongoing TV series and video game series where there are these little crit critters that you could fight and capture and use in a team. Oh. You're one of the starters. You're the fire one. You're a Pokemon. Uh, oh, Non-copyrighted Pokemon. Pokemon, but yeah. Yeah. Copyright save Pokemon. Fake mom. Okay. Uh, I still go over to Zest and 
immediately see oh oh no uh the next person to wake up who had the second highest constitution again was like 16 or something that would be itty bitty bits bit you start to wake up because you're cold <laughs> but also you're stiff like you feel weird and when you yeah. stand up it's really weird because there's a there's a volcanic starter in front of you that you recognize. None copyright I claim Pokemon? Is that they, you? People <laughs> usually call it Koro. That's what they would call it. Koro? <laughs> no. Nani? What? When you look over at Bit, Dio, you see a little brick man. His copyright. <laughs> okay, so you got so your power constructs. Great. What? You look down at your hand. Oh no. <gasps> oh my god. So your movement is very similar to that of the Lego movie. Yes! <laughs> you can move Sorry. just as fine as everybody else, but it's Lego movie style. I just imagine I look at my character, the character looks around at himself like, <gasps> Am I where I think it is? Yes! I wanted to understand how they feel. <laughs> and then you see the Lego centaur as Annabelle wakes up. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> You are seeing a Koro, you are seeing a brick, a little brick man, and you look at yourself, you're a brick person as well. Oh no. What happened? All that's left is Zest, who is lying literally <laughs> flat on the ground. So... I'm a flat stan. Just, just to be perfectly clear, this isn't some weird. This isn't some weird scenario where I'm now a part of a, a part of Oubliette problem. What mystery? Uh, I looked up the synonym for mystery and a synonym for dungeon. Ah, uh. ah, uh. <laughs> no. At least, I don't know if you all are part of my dream, or if this is even a dream. I will say this for for Dio's sake. You look just as weird as everybody else. Like, it looks like a 3D video game model was pulled into the real world. Okay, so so it, it, I don't look like a real, a super realistic version. No, you of look this like character. a 3D cartoon. Okay. All right. At least. Okay, I hate to say it, but look at the bright side. We are all lucky compared to a certain someone right now. I won't a say their name. Someone starts to wake up. <laughs> you definitely feel cold. <laughs> so does Zest look like a cartoon, or does he just look like paper? Zest looks like an origami Santa Claus. He is literally origami, but he can still move as though he was an organic being. He is just perfectly flat. Are you okay, buddy? Something's not right here. You are seeing a 3D <laughs> video game character, two brick people, and then you look down at yourself, you're made of paint? Alright, um, oh god. Which. You guys are at the top tradition. of the map. Tradition. <laughs> Ta so, taking, um... taking stock of this, um, which tradition does this seem to fall under? Um, the origami shape that you are? Um, mm -hmm. this would be the equivalent of. English, you from England. So that's where 
Okay, then. Set up. Looking okay. around. Make sure you guys have control of your tokens. Bit, you're upside down. There you go. I like being upside down. <laughs> Not really. Get Gast is, uh... Because he realizes what he is, he tugs at the shirt-looking thing that he's wearing. I just added that um, shirt because I'm not going to draw a naked creature. No, and he it no, and he is uh, because I, I'm assuming because of the game, he's going to tug at the shirt. Does it hurt? No. So you're it. It's your actual shirt wearing being worn over. Okay. A character. What you do know about Koro is that they are based off of a natural disaster, you know, a volcano. So volcanic lightning, ash, breath, fire, just a lot of heat. But he's wondering how the heck the shirt got underneath the beetle carapace. Who knows? Gods, this is so weird. <laughs> I've been I've been looking forward to this for so long. No, you must understand. This is <laughs> this great. This is amazing. But you must understand. All of us look at this, and then I just look at this, and I can't help but stop looking at this just for a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, Zess is glorious. <laughs> oh, uh... When as Zess realizes that Bit is staring at him, he doesn't say a word. But Zess or Bit will hear in his head, "What are you looking at?" An origami star. <laughs> no, only Bit hears this. Oh. Uh, if, if it's you, if, I, if it is you, if I think it is. I think I think it's kind of obvious. Just be fairly honest. I mean, look at all of us, and then we look at you. <laughs> you're clearly different than all of us, and you're somewhat two-dimensional. We're all gonna die. We're never we're gonna not. see our families again. No, relax, relax. Look at the right that we're still alive. Zest, not do you our have, uh, any idea what's going on here. You're you're savvy when it comes to magic lore. Looking around at the bottom down here, this looks like a wall and door, so is this a building? Yeah, so as you look around you realize you're in front of a large building. It's two stories tall. And it's made of dark woods. Um, oh, I got rid of that bit. Hold on. Gotta fix this. Okay. Also, just realizing. The door is slightly ajar. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, and... <clears throat> the book that you're holding, when you look down, it is a book uh, when you flip it open, you realize it's every single version of the Winter Spirit from English to Obscure. Now look got... around, look up into the sky. Stars are green. Sky is very dark blue and pink. No moon. Um... What does this match? Um, you flip through your book. Uh, roll investigation for me, please, and you get advantage. This is very similar to the um to how uh the Fey would describe the winter spirit as having a world that is very strange like the trees are still the same the snow is still the same for your world but the sky like the smells it's very funny hey. yeah it's very funny I forgot to add whiskers he's normal whiskers looking at my hand and at each other. But this time I will use Awakened Mind. I think we have been brought into the Fey Realm. 
Are you certain? If I were certain, I would have said, I know we have been brought into the Fey Realm. So, it is somewhat of a guess. Yes. I turn around at Whiskers. He looks completely normal, right? He is not a toy. Though technically what? he is, because I do remember how he was made. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm just curious. Whiskers. I have to ask. Did you did you saw anything weird that happened in the middle of the night? He shakes his head. No? So you have no way of knowing what happened when all this happened. They look around and just shrug. Okay. I'm gonna check if I have any of my gear on me. I know at least I have clothes, thank god. My clothes. You have your gear on you. You huh. all have your gear on you. Okay. Seems that we still have everything in order, at least. So at least we're not... At least I'm not... Oh, I forgot one more thing for Zest. Me. Yes. The realm is Fey, but when you look at the building, that's... Uh, what is it? That's Celtic. That's that's from a different version. A pocket realm, maybe. A winter spirit realm. Are you thinking this, or is this an awakened mind? Well, I am thinking it, but since I have awakened mind to open, you are hearing the thoughts. Um. I'm not going to lie to all of you. And I think we should all agree upon this. This is obviously weird. Yep. No. Maybe the... Uh... Not so weird. Maybe the uh, Winter Spirit uses an amalgamation of all of the stories. What? What is that? People I mean, are, all of them are correct, and people and different cultures are taking parts. Of yeah, it. more than likely, yes, the cultures are taking what they understand, and this is the total sum. Um, but uh, where's uh, what's wrong? What's yours? Um. Whiskers, where are you going? Give me a so... second. <laughs> as cold as it is, believe it or not, you're not feeling any colder. It's not the fact that it's the cold, it's the wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that religion check was to see if I could actually ask that question. You don't really need a role to know who the winter spirit is. No, to ask if to ask if it would be possible for a god to base itself on the amalgamation of every single story that's told of it. Um Yeah, actually. Yeah. There is a deity in this world that ascended after the calamity and they did exactly that. Okay. Well then, since we are at the front door, perhaps we should knock? Uh, what is this passive? Twelve. You hear footsteps in the snow behind you. You turn to look. Bit, you are over here, so... I see Whiskers waddling around, so I chose to follow him for a minute. Also, a quick question. I just realized. Oh. Uh, for Whiskers. Is he, like, the, is he the same size as us, or is he still, like, tiny? Um. He is the same size as you. You guys are... 
you guys are pretty you guys are small like we are small you're, you're pretty That's small hey whiskers are the same size as you now hooray um here's what you jail yeah i point towards the thing coming around the corner of the house you are seeing oh two creatures that are pale white the gradients to blue like a beautiful dark blue their teeth look like icicles and so do their claws they're both carrying bloody gnawed on bone spikes that are also freezing in their hands the one that's nearest to you turns and opens its mouth it's like Oh, how do I best describe this? It's like if you break open an amethyst geode and you see all those jagged bits. I, that is I the hate it. Yeah. That is the entirety of its mouth. Uh, what are these? I don't know. Uh, you don't, you don't know? I'm, I, I'm asking the DM if I do. They are ghouls. I uh, back up. Yeah, D Dio is immediately knocking on the Ghouls. door. The door is open, uh, like slightly open. Uh, go in, go in, go in, go in. Hurry, hurry, he, hurry. Yeah, he's right, going okay, in. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Whiskers with me. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to move in a bit. I, I gotta do so many things. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> I just see Animal panicking. <laughs> like, Annabelle, yeah. go in. There you go. Her Many reasons oh, couldn't do it yet. Oh, oh. Um. Going in. Well, that's. I'll keep you watching behind you. I can't. I can't do the ghoul noises. Uh, <laughs> uh, wait. Are, are we even big enough to close this door? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me? You are wait. seeing. Three <laughs> rats. Two of them have swords, one of them has glowing eyes. The one in the middle is glaring down at all these papers. Like, he's trying to shuffle through, but he's also kind of tearing some of the paper as he goes. Not really caring what he's doing. Um, uh, excuse us. Who are you? They point their sword at you. Who are you? We're running from the things that are outside. And we just stumble upon here. This one over here turns. Children! No. Yes. Toys! Children! Uh, toys! Apparently we're, apparently we're both, apparently. We don't know uh, how we got into toys. We children into turned into toys. They raise their swords. They start to show their, uh, their slobbering jaws. They're ready to fight. Oh, they're hungry. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, oh, it looks like a fight's definitely not edible at this point. <laughs> yes, Shadow. I'm trying to figure out what. If they are animal or not. You're welcome to roll. What do you want me to roll for this nature? Pick your poison. Whichever one you want. We'll go. Let's go with nature. <laughs> God damn it, Wolf. So who had the cheese before bed? <laughs> you stare at these... They... Look like were-rats. But something about it, it's not right. Face hey, stories. Um, I'm drawing a parallel to the Nutcracker. As am I. Be a similar story in this world of the Nutcracker? Because I am somebody who has seen the Nutcracker live that story will always exist. I love the Nutcracker. <laughs> um, 
You're staring oh, at these they're... rats. They're not were rats. They're the reversed. They are rats that have been transformed. Oh, so so they're rat wires. Yeah. Okay. Oh well my. Oh, my best friend and newfound friends, are you up for a little challenge? Alright, enter your guys' initiative, please. Alright. Come on, Abal. This is our chance to, exper to use our use our little experiments that we have been holding up for a while. Yeah, that sounds like a um, good idea. It seems like the only chance we get anyway, since we're about to Has space. Has anybody so added their Io glares at the both of you. Okay, so that's it. Um, Bit, your homunculus will take his turn on your turn. Got it. Let me flip you guys back the right direction. All right, Zest, you are up first. I almost sent you. I almost sent Annabelle to the wrong lair. <laughs> Sorry. Set her to the shadow zone. Annabelle's getting absorbed. All right. Well, I'm going to take a look at something here real quick, since I think... Nope, that's not going to help, because we've already entered into combat. I don't have music this time around, because, uh, Twitch. No worries. Just some heavy metal Christmas music. Yeah, you can play that on your end, but I can't. <clears throat> Twitch doesn't know how to handle DMCA's. Or censorship. Uh, at all. Anyway. They're still fairly new to this, honestly. Let them be. Anyway. Alright. I want to try to scare them away. Okay. Did that pop up? Yep. There they, go. Uh, do all of them have to, or just one of them? Um, that's what I'm checking. I thought I'd hit the thing to open it up, so... Here, let me... Let's go. I'm... There we go. Whoa. Uh... So it's a creature you can see within range. So it looks like it's going to oh. be one target. Alright, so the closest one should be that one. A soldier? Mm-hmm. Okay. He makes it... needs to make it DC 15 save. Yeah, that's going to do it. He... he fails. Let me read this. Uh, tell us save on a failed save. You create a phantasmal object, creature, or other visible phenomenon. It's within ten feet cube. So, I understand that something appears when they fail. Yeah. Right. Something. What I was trying to do is figure out what it might be afraid of. Okay. So I'm thinking a large cat. And only that rat can see it. Correct. All right. We're going to use a calico cat here. We're just going to put it right here. Okay. Here we go. Large now calico is cat appears. Is it a female, the common female calico? Or is it the one in 3,000 male calico? Doesn't matter as long as it scares the rat. It's a cat. The, where, the, uh, the rat soldier is terrified, starts squeaking. Come on. Like his deep voice immediately retreats to squeaky. Mm -hmm. Is that all Zess is doing? Because you still have your movement. Uh, sorry, Goblin came in. That's right. Um, I, I'm gonna actually no. I'm gonna step to here, and I don't 
think I have a bonus action. Oh, did not mean to do that. I meant to measure. Yeah, no, I don't have any bonus actions, so that will do it for me. All right. Oh, rat mercenary. Does not see the cat, because he can't. Need to charge at Dio. Oh, hi. I really need to remember to set up macros, but I don't need to, because it's right there. He is going to swing his sword at you. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, that is definitely going to hit. Okay. And the damage is doubled. Because he critted. Okay. Oh, no, wait. Not plus four. Damn it. Minus two. So that's... Yes, yeah, so you take like 11 damage. I forgot. You don't double the number. You double the dice. Okay, I'm back. Okay. I'm back. The rat critted on Dio. Oh, I'm at oh, 42 no. health. No, no, don't do that. Sorry. And the and he's gonna swing again with a sword. Oh. That's gonna hit. Another swing. All right. That is in total 18 damage. If I'm not mistaken. Ow. That hurt. After it's done swinging, it looks back at the rat scout. Tell master. The rat scout nods. Bit. Well. In all honesty, I wasn't expecting all this to happen. The rat in the middle looks terrified at an empty space. Hmm. Good. So, looking at all this, looking at everyone. Yeah, this seems to be a problem off the bat. Um, I look at uh, Dai. Does he look fine? He's been slashed twice by a sword. Dai, are you okay? Uh, that is a very stupid question. I will ask because he, this is his first time in actual combat. I so when that he... you? I'm actually less hurt than I thought I would be. Okay. Um. I'm going to tell Whiskers to stick close to Dio as I'm going to cast. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to cast Fairy Fire. Okay. As he'll, gra he'll go somehow into his pockets. Where are you casting Fairy Fire at? Don't worry about it, you'll be fine, because it's a choice as well. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast it to the 20 foot square. I'm just trying to figure out the right measurement of 20 foot square. Well, you just hit. tell me where you're going to put the middle of it. Um, uh, At the rat soldier. Pull this out. So if I put it on top of the soldier, like right there, it's going to hit all three of them and a little bit of you guys. Um, if I, to make sure correctly on how fire fire works, to make sure. If I have a choice to picking on who I hit. I don't think you do. No, it's everybody in the area of effect. Yeah. So then I'm going to throw it farther down. Probably 
at the other s yeah probably at the desk like in the middle of the desk like that yeah are you guys able to see the aura yeah all right as these measurements weird go in my pockets as I'll grab my little uh because the grid is off yeah yep as I'll grab my uh, cat flask one of my cat flasks that's filled with glitters. Glitter bomb. It's gonna be a glitter bomb as I throw it. As I light it up first and then throw it. As... In fact, you have to light it first. All right. Yeah, you got, yeah, you gotta light it up. It needs to explode somehow. Other than just uh, I don't know. Blunt force. Yeah, but it's more it's more better this way, you know. Well, it goes off behind them. And there's now fairy fire around them. Yes, I would cast the spell to show that I am doing it. And each of them needs to make me make it back safe. Alright, so we'll go with mercenary. That's a 14. That just met that just hits. They just made it. I opened up Minecraft again. <laughs> Damn it. It's on my it's on my bar, so. That's an eight. That fails. And that's a seven. And that misses. So the one that made the fourteen just made it. Okay. Everyone else is affected by the fairy fire. So this guy will have purple. Well, glitter bomb, but yes. This guy will have purple. All right. So those guys are affected by fairy fire. Yep. And is that it? And just because I don't want. The rat scout to leave. Oh, I did not mean to click that. Sorry, I was. I'm adjusting things. Okay. Because it seems that they're trying to warn someone, and we don't want that to happen. I'm gonna move my movement. So I only have like thirty feet of movement. No, I'll use my feline agility to block it to get over here. Okay. So I'll make it here, and then down. So I'm blocking this door path, this doorway, and this path right here. Well, and it's my turn. You block the doorway, and they're like, "Ha ha, I got you!" And you see the other door. Thing scurries underneath the table, and gets to the other door. Could I use my reaction to hit it? Yeah, sure. You may not like this. Nah, you ain't gonna like this in general. I'm sorry. That'll hit, yes. Hi, he, uh... You... Oh, wait. I'm supposed to have strength into that. Oh, which is I none. Never mind. <laughs> yes, you smack the scout rat as it scurries past you. Even with, like, a, a damaged hind leg, it's still hobbling towards the door. It's 30. Oh, no, I need, measure, I need the measure tool. I should move the vantage, I forgot. Oh, well. You wouldn't have had a vantage, because that cat doesn't exist to you. Yeah, that's true. The yeah, we don't see it. No, but it's affected by fairy fire. Goes to the door. Uh, All right, Annabelle, you saw the rat leave. Okay, I'm gonna step right here. Okay. All right, and this should be no line right here. Yeah, that's just about it. All right, so and then right here, I'm gonna put down an Eldritch Cannon Protector. With my action, and then with my bonus action, I'm gonna give everyone five temporary hit points that are around me, except for Fit. Mm -hmm. He's over there. Hi. Yep, and that's my turn. <laughs> that's definitely a cannon. I I have an artificer that does the exact same thing. <laughs> 
What is the radius of uh, the protector? It is 10 feet around it. So I think it just barely gets stale. I am correct. Um, I hate this because I'm a rogue and I want to use sneak attack, but because how people are positioned, it's weird. Well, you ha you actually have a homunculus helping you. Yeah. So, so that's all you're doing, Annabelle? Yep, that's my turn. All right. Okay, so since the homunculus is with me, does that count as an ally for sneak attack purposes? They're doing the uh, aid action, I believe it's called the help action. So, yes. Okay. In that case... Um, and you said we had our equipment on us, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, bonus action, rage. Mm -hmm. And then main action. That'll hit. Um, oh. So in total, it's going to be eight. <clears throat> that is... Very weird. All right. Oh, yeah, it's a sneak attack. My sneak attack did minimum damage. All right, so it's in total eight damage. Yeah. Right. So you smack the rat mercenary across the face. You see, like, one of his teeth goes flying. But he just glares right back at you. Is that all you're going to um, do? Or able to do? That's, I used my action. I used my bonus action. That, uh, Actually, do I have a... No, I do not have an extra attack because I went into uh, rogue. Okay. So yeah, that that's all I can do. Rat soldier is absolutely terrified of a cat that doesn't exist. Um. Within five feet of the phantasm. Gonna, uh, he's gonna back away and just duck right here. He isn't like the cat. Zest. <clears throat> I need to double check the spell, see if it's a concentration. Also, is is he meant to take have like a save at the end of his turn? Um let's see here. It is concentration. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the target can use its action to examine the phantasm with an intelligent investigation check against the save DC. If it succeeds, it realizes the phantasm is an illusion and the spell ends. Otherwise it continues to be affected by it. That is one real cat. All right. So each round on my turn, it can deal dice six psychic damage if it is within the phantasm's area or within five feet of the phantasm, providing that the illusion is of a creature or hazard. Well, he backed away from it. Right. But he so doesn't like what... it. That's right. My intention is not to actually. I don't. I don't know exactly what these are. I want to scare them away, so... Um, I'm going to have the Phantasm continue to follow him. Because its range is up to 60 feet. I'm just seeing if I can. <coughs> Be right back. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. give you control over the cat. All right. There you go. Got it. He is not liking this cat. <laughs> I'd say this poor rat, but I know what's happening here. Um. And. <laughs> Doesn't have. Um, actually, I can do. Oh, 
just doesn't take a spell slot, but it's to, I think that's still concentration. Yeah, that's still just concentration. So at this point, um, I will. That's concentration too. I got a lot of concentration spells. Yeah. Ruh row. For now, I will be done. Okay. Well, uh, mercenary. Yes, you want to say something? I, I have no actual physical weapon, so I can't... Oh, yes, I do. I have a slingshot. If you want, I can back up and let you use that. Uh, yeah, I'll pull All out right. my slingshot. Okay. And see if I, can, seeing, uh, if I can team this mercenary here. Okay. That will hit. Like, he's raising his sword and right in his temple, he kind of blinks a little. He looks around, trying to find out who shot that. Because from his angle, you're perfectly flat. He can't really see you very well. I'm a flat stand with half invisibility. Yay! A weird advantage. <laughs> hey, I wasn't expecting it, but I'm not going to complain. But you are vulnerable to fire. Oh, well, it's a good, it's a good thing. It's a good thing one of my cantrips is control flames. <laughs> also, good things that you're literally right next to a fire blade. <laughs> we will get to that in a bit. So, yeah, that'll have me done. Yeah, the rat looks down at. <sighs> Dial is gonna swing. Okay. Wow, he's rolling good. Oh no. Yeah, he's gonna hit. D6 plus two, so you're gonna take half damage because you're raging. So that's four. He's gonna swing again. That meets your AC, so Defender wins. You're managed to smack away his sword before it can hit you. Bit, it's your turn. The other rat went through the other door. Damn it. I didn't see that other door. Oh well. Uh. Yeah, my friend's getting beaten up over there pretty badly. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Well, if you think he's fine. I have healing spells, so you're all good. Don't worry, I got him too, just in case. Exactly. Or if you go down, I'm gonna go in my pocket again. I'll get, a, I'll get a laser pointer out. Because you're a Lego person, you have hammer space. <laughs> ah. Ah. Uh, I'll try to get... Uh, I'll grab the, go in the hammer space and grab a Lego. I'll bring out a Lego laser pointer. Alright. That's all aiming at the red soldier as I cast fireballs. Uh, okay. I think with this, he's got three quarters cover. Uh, no, I'll be fine because I have enhanced arcane focus. Okay. It's the other fusion I picked. Which I'll do post it right there for you. And just yeah, to make it easier. Yeah, that's half cover. This is three quarters cover. And I'll just move here. Okay. To make it easier myself. All right. Now he has half cover, so now you're ignoring it. And now I roll. Because I have advantage. It's an 18. Well hit. I didn't have the plus one yet. First level. Oh my gosh. Oh my Fierce. gosh. 
This Bigger rat than great and mighty laser bursts pointer. into flames and starts squeaking really loud. He's not looking too good. Huh. In fact, he drops at, his sword. I look at I look at my laser pointer. Huh. You know, that actually went a lot better than I expected. I actually kind of expected it to build my face this time. Maybe it was the change of battery. Just because Bit is right there, you can hear skittering behind that door next to you. Oh, and good news. Uh, okay. So you guys watch as she um, takes a toy gun that she had, that she brought with her during the whole Halloween thing. And she turns this knob on the side of it. Like there's this, there's like ice, thunder, fire. She turns it all the way to fire. And she uses Scorching Ray two on this guy oh sorry two on this guy mm. and one on this guy okay let me go ahead and roll three times uh rule damage for the one for the mercenary okay this is the, the 10 that would be the 18 okay the 18 okay it's four burn some of the whiskers on his face this guy he gets hit. He was already on fire. He gets hit. He's like trying to pat himself down. And then you see him start to break and go to like very bad stop motion movements. He starts to shrink and shrink and shrink. And the fire goes out. And all that's left, let me find it, is a little toy mouse or sorry rat <clears throat> that just sits on the ground inert <clears throat> all right um that's my turn all right dio uh so I am going to um We're going to be taking a break after this combat by the way. Okay. Okay. I am going to um Attack with uh, my battle axe again. Mm -hmm. The 18 will hit. Alright, so similar to the other guy, you hit this guy really hard on the head and he drops a sword. He starts uh, clutching his head, like kind of running his claws over his face. He's starting to panic and freak out before he stop motion movement shrinks and breaks and shrinks and shrinks and drops to the ground as an inert little toy. I'm just gonna close turn tracker because the other rat got away. You can probably delete the cat too since yep. I have to end his spell. Fairy fire goes away. Okay. Delete. Let me do something on my end. I'll deal with that in a second. Alright, so we're we need to take a quick little break. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. How long? Um, I'm. I want to say five, ten minutes. I'm not really sure okay. myself. 
Just, I All know right. that I really need to get up. Okay. 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 Then let's just do 10 minutes to make sure we get everything we want real quick before anything else. Yeah. All right. 10 minutes. Eh. <clears throat> <laughs>
I know that someone's playing this the Super Mario Bros. Ultimate theme song in my in one of my chats. Okay, we're back. Super Mario. So, you guys just defeated two rats. One of them got away. One, of, well, the third rat got away. But the two rats that you defeated, quote unquote, killed, were reduced to tiny little toys. They are inert. And they're inert in the sense that whatever color they might have had is gone. Like, they're dark gray and black. I look at myself. You're still colorful. Um, That's scary. Are we murderers now? Can I pick it up and see if this is magical at all? Uh, sure. You you pick up the toy rat. Usually, when you hold a toy, you can always get the sense that there's like a like an energy to it. Like, how do I best describe this? You can always always feel something special about a toy when you pick it up, especially one that you really like. When you pick this one up, there's nothing there. It's like it is, in fact, dead. There's no magic to it. There's no, um, nothing special about it anymore. Yeah, we're murderous. I will give you this freebie. You get the sense that before you killed it, it likely had this feel to it before it transformed. Yeah, we're murderers. Uh, speak for yourself, I attacked in self-defense. Still murderers because we still killed. You're right, it's manslaughter. It's even worse. I hug, I hug <laughs> Annabelle. <laughs> but I can't believe we've done this. When you hug her, you, everybody just hears click. Because <laughs> you are still made of plastic. You're warm. <laughs> I still give her a hug just to reassure we're okay. Zest. I'm picking up the other toy rat to examine it. Mm -hmm. I want to cast a ritualized... Oh, wait, actually, I don't need to. I have... Um... Eldritch Invocation. Um... Mm. I'll just cite. So I will use that to cast Detect Magic. Okay. Dio would like to... look at what's on the table. Well, let me work with Zest first. You're doing Detect Magic. Uh-huh. Everything within 30 feet of you. I'm just doing this aura for myself, though you're likely going to be able to see it. I was about to say I'm pulling up an aura, so... <laughs> no, I got it. Okay. Um, other than your party and that cannon, uh, one of the books on the table, um, there's faint magic coming from the furniture. And you can feel, well, you can sense the loss of magic from the two toy rats. Like, by the time you notice it, it's like smoke finally clearing away from a burnt log. It's, they're, they're no longer magical in any way. Um, I'll put the one that I'm holding into my pouch. Mm -hmm. And then I want to examine that book. All right. You said it's on the table? Yeah, I'm going to get rid of your aura now. Okay. Unless you want to keep it up. Uh, let's go ahead and keep it up for now, since it's a 10-minute spell. Let me, then let me put a better color. Yeah, it'll do. All right, so 
You walk over to where Dio is. Dio, you're looking at all these books and papers. Some of them have been slashed because the rat was being very careless with his digging through all this stuff. It's mostly just information. Um, like one book is about, uh, it's like a, a phone book, like an address book, but of a city on the other side of the planet. Uh, you're looking at a book of um, medical records, specifically people's allergies. <coughs> you're looking at somebody's handiwork to know what people are like, don't like, what's changed, and uh, where people are. This is... This would be disturbing if someone, if someone normal got this in their hands. As he holds up a book about favorite foods from from a city uh, two miles, sorry, I mean two uh, states over from where we are, uh, where we live. You do find like um, like a a list, like a a list of notes that like have people's names on them and then like little notes scribbled next to it of like you know this guy is allergic to peanuts don't have any peanuts and stuff like that like whoever did this was very thoughtful to understand people's differences here with zest you find a book that is not been damaged in any way but you know that because it's in the pile that was leafed through probably the most by this rat those claws did scratch at it, just didn't do anything. It is a tome that is as thick as your, well, used to be as thick as your original arm. Because now you're paper thin. I was about to say, it's a one page, huh? Uh... <laughs> On the front is the print of a cloved hoof. Surrounded by holly leaves in a wreath. I have a feeling I know what this might be. Am I able to open the book? Um. Yeah. Yeah. When you touch the book, like the trimmings on it is actual gold. But it doesn't matter what you do to the gold, it's not going to bend or break. Okay. Let's open it up and take a look inside, see if my suspicion is correct. Uh, you flip it open, and the first page is a ink drawing, like an, an, a very old ink drawing of antlers curled, like, curled around a snowflake. And then those clo that cloved hook mark underneath it. Guys, I'll be right back. My grandmother's calling me. No, you're okay. fine. And you flip to the next page. You are seeing a Renaissance, like, not Renaissance, a medieval drawing. A very weird medieval drawing of a very large man with a blindfold and little stubbly horns um, being chased by a king's guard and all their dogs. You flip to the next page. You're seeing something, uh, I'd say it's more akin to like Aztec or Mayan artwork of the same person but with bigger horns and bright colors uh, giving a gift to somebody while there's a demon nearby. And you keep flipping and like it's the same kind of repeating process like each time you see this person their antlers have gotten bigger until you're not even you're not even a fourth of the way through the book before the antlers are exactly like the uh, depictions of the winter spirit but he's always got the blindfold he's always got uh, a smile on his face he's always got something for somebody but as you go you're noticing there are pictures of the opposite of that where if someone is bad he brings bad omens to them like 
we're going to put this into perspective of like American settlers, uh, blizzards in those times were hell. If someone was bad, he would bring those style of blizzards to this person while the farm on the other side of the hill wouldn't be hit by the blizzards. They would be clean and clear because the person in that house was good. He just basically gave them hardships, but it's always been thought of as coincidences. You finally find writing. And you kind of realize this, this book is enchanted because it updates every generation or so. Because now it is talking about somewhat modern day... Uh, I want to say traditions. No, somewhat modern day cultures and how they are viewing this. Where uh, he is doing these good deeds once a year for these people with nothing in return. Yeah, people will sometimes leave out cookies. Some people will leave out like little trinkets and thank yous. But he doesn't keep them. He gives them to others. Oh, sorry. I was looking at something here. Go ahead. <laughs> But he's giving these things to others. Like, he'll take the gift and then he'll move it to someone else who would use it better. He has a blindfold because he doesn't need to see the deeds. He will always know. But, there is a catch to this guy. For every side of... There's always two sides of a coin. He is the positive so there has to be a negative. And right when you get to the part about the negative, the pages are blank. Like they've been erased or never written? Well, you flip through some more pages. It takes 10, 20 pages before you finally right. get back to artwork. You think those pages specifically were blanked? by the owner of the book. They didn't want somebody to read it. Okay. Um, let me take a look at one thing and then I want to slide that into my backpack. Okay. I don't know what I thought I had. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and slide that into my backpack. Oh, quickly go back to animal. Your friends are pretty cool. Yep. Can I get rid of the cannon it? now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'll help. I'll help or put it away. Here you go. No, it just poops, poops away. Is it's there cool. anything else in this pile of papers? Um. You were finding notes about less and less people believing. Like, less and less people think that the spirit of Christmas is an actual thing. Like, you even find newspaper clippings about it. You get the sense that whoever owns this house, whoever has all this stuff, they're aware of how the people view them. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So, Z Zest is looking at this. Mm -hmm. I look at what he's looking at. So, we're in the home of a dying god? Would that be the term? No. We're in the home of a fae no longer is getting its tribute. The tribute wasn't trinkets or cookies. The tribute was recognition. So we're not in the presence of a dying god, but in the presence of a fae that isn't getting more power. Ryle, I'm having a hard time hearing you. 
Sorry. All right, there you go. I'm just going to straight up start drinking my honey. Actually, is my honey still here or not? All of your stuff is still with you, yes. Even the even the jar, the the flask of honey, it still has honey in it, right? Yeah. I'm going to drink my honey for a minute. Okay. It's weird. So, it's like your toy now, but it still works. So, get this straight. Like some hearing that, mm. it's more of a, it's more like a fate that is said that it's not getting its recognition as respected. Do all of its goodness as it does. It doesn't mind if not everyone knows, but it at least wants to get recognized still regardless, right? I look at the others. Magical creatures are more resist territory than mine. Dio just That's shrugs, true. not n not knowing much. You do find a a separate nope, a separate tome that has your guys' town in it. Uh, okay. probably want to open that, that one. I'll pick that one up too. Mm -hmm. We need I'll to find. I'm going to end up building my honey flask while you do that. We need, we need to find out what's going on. Uh, I have an idea. Look at our names. D okay. Dio, Dio at this point is starting to believe again that maybe this isn't... Um, so maybe this isn't just a charade that the adults put about? Uh, when you go to your name, Dio, you see a percentage number, like a percent number next to your name. Okay. It's just below 50. Then you flip over to bit. It's also just below 50. And then to Annabelle. It's dead on 50. <laughs> and I, I don't want to know mine. Well. We're still curious. Okay. <laughs> I... Well, for Dio, there are notes next to Zest. Uh oh. Uh oh. Go on, via whisper, please. I am. This boy stole my arm. I want it back. <laughs> so, does anyone want any of my honey? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Not really realizing what this book actually is telling him. That's interesting. Are you going through the door? Oh, I by the way, can... by the way, Zest, the fireplace was enchanted. Oh, well then perhaps I should see how it's enchanted first. Zest? What? Maybe, wait, maybe what don't... Magic? I don't know what magic school it would be. But you get the sense of, that you could stick your paper arm in there and not burn. Let's test it. I <laughs> stick my arm in there. You Zest, stick... What is it that you understand? You stick oh. your arm into the fire. You don't even feel heat. Like, you feel heat from where you're standing, but your arm itself does not feel anything. And you are not burning. Is the spirit of Christmas tradition similar in the fact that the spirit comes through fireplaces? Um. Hold on.
it varies house to house. Some people say he just magically appears in a flurry of snow. Others say he comes down the chimney. Some say he just walks through the door or walks through walls. There's even some who believe that uh, that he comes out of the tree topper. Nobody truly knows. It just varies. In all the what legends, it it's just him running from uh running from like dangerous authority to give a gift and continuing. Okay. I think I may know what that's for. What did you ask me, Dale? Um was there a number next to Zest's name? Or was it just the notes? There was no number. Uh, <laughs> um, Mostly a lot of question marks. Remember the outsider claw? There's notes about that. There's no number. Next to your name. Hmm. Please don't tell me my Discord freaked out again. Nope. Okay. Zest is just very, very quiet at the moment. Yeah, well, the, there's no numbers next to his name, but there are a lot of question marks. It says, has an outsider claw they understand must monitor. Wait, did, did you keep the claw that we got that night? Claw? What claw? Yes, it was given to me. Oh. Hold on, okay. what claw are you guys talking about? Um. You weren't there, but it doesn't concern you. Well, since I'm here now, it kind of does. That, that is not what I meant to do. Nope. Let's Boy, let's ah! a, there's a reason I go to therapy on, on Fridays. It's a hallway and a back door. I'll, I'll explain later, okay? All right. Oh, I need to rebuild that door a little bit better. I'll make you, I'll make you cookies after we're done with all this. Sign up for like a fair trade. Dio is extremely nervous okay. right now. And a tiny bit fidgety. Where did the rat go? That's uh, death for certain. Bit you heard it's you heard scurrying past this door over here. Oh, that door? Yeah. Uh I heard something over here, actually. Are any of these doors partially open in here? No. This door is closed. Bit. This door is closed, but it doesn't have a handle. It's just one of those I... doors that you push to swing open, like at a restaurant. I'll just tell the others, like, I heard something over here. Guys, uh, Bit heard something over by the other door. Uh... Us. What? He's going that way. Okay. I'm gonna crack open the door to see what I see. Is there any I sign of through there door? Sir. I'm sorry, what says? Is there any sign of the rat through that door? The one you're at? No. Yeah. What does the room look like beyond the door? Alright, let me reveal it for you guys. It is a storage room with a set of stairs leading up. Oh. Huh. When you look at all the crates and barrels, you are seeing, like, old delicacies from different parts of the world. Like, you're seeing fermented fish that has quite the odor. You're seeing shark. <laughs> uh, you're, you're seeing, um, Dio, you 
kind of notice there's a chunk of dragon in one of these crates. Um. Okay. But the closer you get to the stairs, the less and less... <laughs> it is red dragon meat. Yeah, Dio would still have to make that con save. Uh, but the closer and closer you get to the stairs, the less and less food-like it is. So once you get to like this barrel here, food stops. Because the next barrel is filled with a uh, bit, and Annabelle would recognize it as like some sort of resin that's being stored. The, uh, the hmm. bags over here are filled with bits of metal and wood. Tiny uh. pieces that you would use to craft toys. Toys? What about this crate here? The one in front of you? Mm hmm I can never tell if that's apples or bottles. Let me check. Those are tomatoes. Tomatoes? Okay. Well, you look in, they're some sort of, um, fruit. They, they look like apples, but they look like they're made of rubies. Since the detect magic is still up, is any of this magical? The apples, that chunk of dragon, because it came from a dragon, and one of the barrels. Uh, one of these, one of the food ones. You know, I'm curious to see what which one. If you're gonna say that, I, you're gonna say it out loud. Trying to tie the legends together to these three items. What would they have to do with apples, a magical barrel, and dragon meat? Um. Oh. All of you can make a roll if you wish, whether it's history or arcana or just plain intelligence. <laughs> Sorry, Annabelle, I got you. Um, okay. It's all minus two anyways, so... <laughs> nope. A two? So, Zess would know that uh, the Feywild loves the spirit of Christmas. Like, because it's mostly an excuse to feast and have parties. Mm -hmm. These apples come from the core garden of the Feywild. Like, no mortal has ever touched these apples without some sort of disaster befalling them. I, I do apologize. My internet went out there for just a moment. I lost the conversation. The last I heard was Bit saying, don't worry, Anna, I've got you. Oh. Um, the apples are from a, uh, a, the royal garden of the Feywild. Okay. The barrel... Oh, God, where would this be? The bear. What is that plane called? I keep wanting to say Elysium. Is that an actual plane? Yes, it is. It is from but, Greece. Yeah. Is that the, the one that's? Of a, Elysium. Is that the one that's the just a forest? Uh, it's the fields of Elysium. Hmm. Well, I'll just sum it up like this. That barrel is filled with some sort of a uh, mead or cider. You're not really sure what kind it is from one of the celestial planes. Ambrosia? You're, you're pretty sure it could be. And as for the dragon meat, that's not a regular red dragon. That came from something specific and you don't want to touch it. I want to touch it, but what? something in my mind told me not to touch it, so I won't touch it. <laughs> What specific did it come from? You get the inkling that it came from the Hells, and there's only one dragon that's red that's in the Hells. Yeah, Matt. Mm-hmm. 
the more you guys think about it, the more you remember, like, the spirit of Christmas, he's a good, he's a good soul. He is comprised of positive energy. The apples and the drink are positive, but Tiamat is negative. Someone, someone's been force feeding him negative energy. Or are you this is above it? game because Dio wouldn't know that. Unless... Or this is how he does his blessings and his curses. Uh... How steep are the stairs? I put them in the wrong oh. position. They're not very steep. Okay. okay. Uh, would that be the case? Is someone? Does it feel like someone is actually feeding him negative energy? No. Okay. Uh, um... I look at the stairs and then back to Annabelle. Are these going to be too steep for you? I I should be fine. You know, we should ask you that, honestly. And I go back up. I go up the stairs. All right, stop moving. Oh, that's physically impossible, but okay. <laughs> sure. Let me put you... So, um, Zest is up first. Who's second? Dio. Okay, who's third? Annabelle. <clears throat> okay, and then... Actually, I should be behind Annabelle in case... Um, they Stop fall moving. because of stairs. Okay, then I'll go last with, with my friend Whiskers. You know, I just realized, can Whiskers pick me up? No. He is the exact same size as you. Yeah, but he got jet boost. <laughs> you come up to the top of the stairs where there is a library. There are books that have been torn and chewed and slobbered all over. Absolutely ruined. And then you see the scout. What the? As soon as he sees you guys, his back hunches and arches. He starts to hiss. Um. Friends? Yes. And I am going to ready in action if that fails. I, I, I'm a warlock with very unusual cantrips. They don't make a save for this, do they? Uh, no. It just automatically gives me advantage on communicating with it. So... Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna try to reach out with Awakened Mind to it. Okay. Just sort of rat squeak. <laughs> Check my chuckle. Um... Please stop. Roll persuasion. Okay. Its back slowly start stops arching. It's still looking at you a little uneasy. But it slowly starts to calm. I don't want to hurt you. I want to help. It doesn't speak, but you hear in your mind very quick chatter. Very, very quick. It's hard to understand it. Uh, I'll pull out my book. And this is going to take a little bit of time, because I will need to ritual cast. Um. I'm going to tell you now it's not going to work, because this is not okay. necessarily an animal. It is a toy. Right, but I'm trying anything I can think oh. of to reach, reach it. Also, wouldn't friends wear off by the while you were casting the yeah. spell? Yes, it would, but the friends was trying to get it to stop, which it has. But it would immediately attack you. Not necessarily. It just knows that I've cast a spell on it. Well, you try and use 
speak with animals on it. Mm -hmm. It washes over it. And, like, that chatter is still very quick in your mind. You can't understand this thing. And you kind of realize, okay, this is... It's been animated. It's been transformed to be technically an animal, but it's still a toy. And you realize that chatter is not squeaking. It is multiple voices all talking all at the exact same time. Oh. It's a hive mind. Or when your brain is so full of ideas, they it just won't <clears throat> shut up. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can calm it. <clears throat> Bless you. Thank you. I'm going to see if I can... I, I'm listening to this chatter as it's going through. Uh, trying to tune in, see if I can understand it in any coherent way. Mm -hmm. And then try to latch onto a thought that seems to be re most repetitive and focus it towards that thought. All right. I want you to roll perception with disadvantage. Because there are so many voices in this thing's head. Okay, I'll give you this. You latch onto one of the thoughts that is running through its head, because I had to be careful with Twitch. Um, you're hearing fear master must obey master. And it's over and over and over again. Then it's like two gears are running alongside each other and you finally switch to the other gear. Uh -huh. And you're hearing fear general. Don't disobey general. And then it goes right back to master and then general. Master and general. Oh no. I want to see if I can get its focus to master. I want to see if, through the telepathy, see if I can get some kind of idea of what the master is. The rest of you, you're noticing that Zest is concentrating on this rat. And the rat is now aware that he cast a spell on it earlier. But it's starting to shake itself like it's trying to understand what's happening. I mean, I don't even know what's going on either. I'm just seeing this. Animal, do you have any idea what's going on? Do you die? Um... Uh... So, the the um, last time he did something like this, um, uh, was from the last, was from Halloween many years ago, so I'm assuming he's doing something similar to with the rat. Me. Telepathy. Telepathy? I mean, yeah. I guess he, he did do that once on me, I guess, but... I mean, it did stop. Should we just try to get his conversation, get a conversation going with it? Uh, um, I think me. Zest is trying to have a conversation with it. I mean, I guess. All right. I don't know. I don't know if it's getting through or not. I mean. I... Zest, I, mean, I want you to roll persuasion again. Disadvantage, advantage, normal. Normal. But the DC is uh, different. Oh no. You mention Master and then all the thoughts focus on Master. But it's not what you want. It's screaming now. Like, you have might have caused a severe internal anxiety attack for this thing. But it is something that's animated. It's not a living creature yet. It is not a living creature, but it is, um, from what you can sense, simple-minded. Any sign of hostility towards Zest, I'm casting Jim's Magic Missile at it. Like, if, if it tries to attack Zest. You might as well roll your Magic Missile. Okay. So I have to do this via attacks. Uh, where is it? Uh, 
Do I even have it in here? Screw it. Uh, plus one. Mm -hmm. So that would be a nine. Okay. <clears throat> uh, does a nine hit it? No. Okay. Uh, if you make that then um uh, oh wait i still have i still have three more two more i mean two more cast it at a higher level uh i can't cast it at a higher level okay so they all miss they all miss you're doing it all wrong my friend it's a different magic missile yes yeah. you, got, you have to if you're gonna hit it you gotta hit it like this as i bring out the laser pointer and I do a steady. Um, HH, I think I'm going to make a perception check to see if I'm aware of what's going on outside of my head right now. Okay. The rat is running at you. Uh, I'm going to do my fireball at it since I'm noticing it. Going ahead. Yes. Uh,. No, thank you. My friend, my new friend. I just made this new friend. Please don't. That'll hit. The conversation's slow till it's just a few whispers and a few quote unquote individuals. And when you look up, you see the rat is on fire as it's approaching you. Who is made of paper? Uh, okay. Very fast, very fast. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> As Shadow would say, give me a moment. <laughs> <laughs> it slows to a walk before it freezes right in front of you, mid-step. And you hear in your head a different voice that was not any of the ones you heard before a very slow chuckle before saying Merry Christmas and then it shrinks into a little toy that is crumbling to ash ah <sighs> See, die? Uh, See, die? That's how you hit it. As I put the laser pointer back. Would you like to try a gun? Why do you want? It was going after you. And also, apparently, he hit first. It, it was lunging. It was lunging at you. I almost had what I needed. Yes. Yeah. But we would not know because you don't speak up. <laughs> but let's take a step back from this conversation for a second. <clears throat> What's the step back? The step back is. Zest was trying to understand something. Okay. The rat was about to attack, but Zest didn't know that. And he was almost there. But if we didn't do it, then Zest would be hurt. That's the step back. Oh, okay. Either way, it's kind of already too late. Yes, it is. Let's, uh... Whatever right. the master of these things is, now probably has already known that we've been here, but now knows we understand and we should. What exactly? That part I'm still having questions. Like Christmas arouse or something, or like what? I what think we have to continue forward 
to find out. Yes. Going forward is the only way to find out for certain. But whatever oh. it is, it intends for this to happen. I only see one other door from here. Let's go through it. As you get closer to the door, you hear conversations. You were hearing like the clacking of wood and plastic as someone talks, and then you're hearing laughter and taunts. Nope, that is a hide area again. What the heck? Here we go. We wish to. As you open the door, you see five toys standing guard in front of a portal and three large transformed rats trying to get past them. So which side is which? That is the yeah. question. Well, so far the rats are hurting us, so we hurt the rats first. And if um... the other ones are hurting us, then we hurt the toys. Simple logic. Right? Please, someone tell me I'm right. <laughs> well, I saw the I saw the turn order pop up, so I was waiting to see if we rolled initiative first. Yeah, roll initiative. Okay. Why am I lo rolling so low? This bad luck? Don't worry, my friends. We will show you the victory. I'm just gonna have the toy captain be the entire toy's turn, because that's a lot. That works. Yeah, alright, so let me roll for the toy captain and his friends here. <laughs> nope. That laugh, though. My players have gotten to know that me laughing can be a good thing or a bad thing. Just depends who you are. Rats. 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 We are the rats. We make all the rules. I'm the giant rat that makes all the rules. I've actually never seen that video. Me neither. All I heard is the song. Everyone's rolled their initiative. Okay. So, this room has a desk off to your right. There's a crate or box full of toys that look like they've been abused. Like, the teddy bear that's lying on the floor looks like it might have been left in an alleyway at some point. It's nasty. And you that see three large rats. The one in the middle has bone plating like a dire rat but you get the sense that it might not be a real rat like the other ones were and this guy these three tower over you and even these toys even the toy dinosaur who is a t-rex uh rat general is gonna go first turns around hearing the door Hello there. He kind of squints at you. Children. And his claws just come out of his hands to grow even longer. And he's going to charge at you. In, in hindsight, I was not the one who opened the door this time. <laughs> yep, he's going after Zest because he's Different there. campaign. Uh, 12 plus 4, that is... Be enough to hit me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's 16, so... I mean, you are papered then. Two. I need you to roll a con save, please. Alright. Uh, just as a note, that's gonna go through my five temporary. Mm-hmm.
Oh, so you don't need to make the roll? Oh, okay. That's why I was checking. Because that's exactly how many temporary hit points I had. Yeah, but it's still hitting you, so you, you need to make okay. a con save. No worries, that's why I was checking. Ooh, paper or not, you do feel sick. As you take... Uh, come on, roll 20. Three points of poison damage. You're noticing that their claws are like a rather pretty metallic green. And then the okay. other claw comes around. The vomit. The vomit of confetti. That'll hit. Make another con save, please. Uh oh. Four poison. Alright. Because you've been hit twice and you've failed twice, you now have the poisoned condition. Oh no. Okay. And the rat just grins. All right, bit. Hi. I don't like what I just saw. You hurt my new friend. Why would you do such horrible things? Are you wanting to cast fairy fire again? No. I'm casting chaos bolt. Ooh. Uh, as I have to make this as an invention, I, I go into my little uh, hammer socket. You have to move dig, here. I dig, I dig straight into it. As I bring out this little rocket, this little rocket that seems like it's already ready to explode at any second. As I light the fuse, as I light the fuse, and I and it starts shooting straight towards the rat general. It is literally a Roman candle. <laughs> what is it with you of bringing fire in your zest, Haley? Oh, it's not, it's <laughs> not just roll. fire. It's, it, it's a different, because it changes, because it's chaos bolt. <laughs> Make your roll. Crit! <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Alright, roll your d8. Well, it's 2d8 plus 1d6, so they're doubling all of that. Uh, and just pick. I, oh, I need so... to also pick one d eight. I need to pick. I need to pick one d eight to pick what type it does. Um, uh, two. How about I pick for you then? Because it looks like it like... rolled a six and an eight, which I is really weird. No, if you highlight it, you can see the 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 dice. Yeah, but is that the damage dice, or is that the actual roll to find out what it is? No, they are the damage, but also the roll. I have to pick the one of the d8 to pick, to pick what type they do. Oh, okay. Um, that doesn't look like what it actually is. The chaos bolt? No, you're supposed to roll a d8 to find out what type it is. Yeah, and, you and then you roll the, the damage. Ah. Uh, so. so you've rolled a 6 and an no. 8, which poison and thunder. Oh, in that case, what it did was just it rolled the extra 2d8. Yeah, okay, so what happens, what you do is, so with the 2d8s, uh, you've both, of, both the, the numbers that they are, I believe you have to choose one of them, and that's yeah. the type it is. That's how we've been, I've been doing it at least. Where yeah. I've okay, been so, so, I'll just stick, so I'll stick with the first two, the first two then, it's 4 or 2. So I'll just choose force. No, no. No. That's no? not no. No, you so rolled that, a that, six that, and an eight. That is poison and thunder. You have oh, to pick no, no, between no, no, two. No, no, no. That's a, it added together. It's a yeah. six and an eight. So on in the actual D eight that was rolled, it was a four and a two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It just that uh, it, it rolled another two um, D eight. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I let it. Yeah, t rolling two d eight. Yeah. Yes. It, six, it's two. oh a six and a two, and then 
Okay, yeah. that's weird. Yes. Yeah. No, that's they, no, <laughs> no, this is not crit. That's why. This this macro setup is probably not the best thing to be using, dude. Just saying. Yeah. yeah um. It was, a, it was a test. Okay. <clears throat> I'll fix it late. I'll fix it when after this turn. Um. I don't know what what the damage is. It's, I'll just stick with the first two then. It's just a four and a two. Okay, I still don't know what the, what, how much damage I, guys work. taken. I would suggest we re-roll using the... You know, let me, I'm just going to post Chaos Bolt. Using the uh, dice roller in the upper left corner. You know, let me just put the thing for Chaos Bolt, and then we can read what it actually does. So he, t so he takes seven force damage. Is that what I'm understanding? No, it says right there. Make a range spell attack against it on the hit. The target takes two to eight plus one d six, okay. and choose one d eight. I see what's going on now. Okay, yeah. you have not rolled for the damage yet. Which damage is it? You have not rolled that. No, 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 no. Choose one of the D8s. So you choose oh. one of the ones that are over there already. Oh. Yeah, so it can be force. Because he rolled a four and a two. Okay. Are we all good? That How much damage is this guy taking? Seen. Oh, he's taking... No, he's... Okay. Yeah. What? Okay. Okay. Let me. Okay. Let me. Okay. Let me figure this out. So normally, you normally you take two d eight plus a one d six. So yeah, normally so it, with that, it would, it would have been it, eight. Yeah. So well, it's be, um because I critted, I guess because it got doubled. doubled. Yeah. It's twenty one oh. damage. Twenty one damage. Twenty one yes. force. Yes. Twenty one force. Uh, okay. Oh wait. Hold on. The the. Well, the the d eight are included the, in the it damage. Didn't roll the crit damage. For that the is the crit eight. damage. Oh, what's the crit? That is the crit damage. Really? Yes. Yes. You're way overthinking this, my dude. Because he just rolled it again for the crit. Which is, which, which is the plus. Because yeah. it would have been a 6 and a 2. But because I critted, it added the extra 2 to 8 and 1, 1 to 6. Which was the plus. The yes. plus other thing. Mm -hmm. So that's what it did. I understand the only reason why I know what's going on is because I use Chaos Bolt. <laughs> and since I didn't roll the same eights, which I don't think I did. You did not. So we ignored that part. Yeah, so. This is so confusing. Welcome to Chaos Bolt. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Chaos Bolt. Bolt. <laughs> so it takes... Yeah, 21 damage. 21 force damage to General Rat. <laughs> <laughs> 21 damage. Leave... That's all I needed to know. Yes. It took some process to get properly there, but yes, there we go. My little rocket did 21 force damage. That is a... this That pommels him so hard. He actually looks stunned. Not literal, but stunned by what you just did. Is that all you're doing before I move on? Yes. <laughs> That's all I can really do. Chanted rat. Going to charge the biggest toy here. Me. Alright, let me see. He's going to bite and claw. He claw. Okay.
Someone just got trampled with the charge attack. Uh oh. Well, that explains why nobody could hear me. <laughs> uh, yes, I was. I was actually trying to explain how the chaos bolt worked, and I d didn't realize that nobody could hear me. <laughs> so, where were you we right, though? Um, yeah, it's very basic. It's roll two die eight for damage, roll one die six for damage. Before rolling, the caster is supposed to pick one of the two die eight, and that one determines mm -hmm. which one. Uh, determines the damage uh, type. but with that out of the way uh, I did the withdraw action oh and then put, pulled out my slingshot as I withdrew so I didn't know whether or not he would take an attack of opportunity I wanted to make sure he didn't zest But Zest wouldn't realize this with how many times he's been ganged up on an attack. For him, it's just get away from the damage. <laughs> so, that's his turn. Okay. Um... okay. Which one and who? Secret in him. See here. Mm, another good option. Okay. Let's um. I'm gonna go ahead and use a spell slot. Sorry, first I should be doing things in order. I'm going to go ahead and head into here. Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and use a spell slot to place down a, let's see here, Eldritch, another Eldritch Cannon. This time, let's make it a Force Ballista, and we'll put it right next to me right here. Oh. When instantly right. put my when instantly put on my earmuffs, we'll always do this. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and attack this guy with my bonus action, and that's two D. Uh, Alright, on a hit. So I believe I rolled a roll. I need to roll a D twenty to see the hits. Sorry, I didn't prepare these. Uh, there's a 14 hit. Alright. It takes 10 damage, and it's pushed 5 feet away from the toy dinosaur. Hmm. 
It's not. <laughs> And that's my turn. Um, Dial flips a coin into the air. Oh. Uh, that's the first spell that's hitting him. Uh,. So that's like actually special because that's a crit. That's 5d4. The next one is going to uh, actually, can I see the other two rats from where I am or no? Okay. In that case, uh, we're going to hit it two more times. Oh. Actually, I kind of do. Where else are the... Okay, where are the other two going? Yeah, I know. So they actually do have... Yeah. It, it's three missiles that I launch at once. So, um... Yeah. Okay, so but Oh, okay. Uh ignore the rogue sneak attack. That should not be on there. Sorry. And the rage. Uh, actually, it would be drink. Oh, okay. Uh, then. Um, dang it, they're all actions. Uh, I need to re read Rage because I think I can't. If I Rage now, I don't think I would keep it. Because of how it's written, because of how it's worded. <clears throat> Your rage lasts for one minute. It ends early if you are knocked unconscious, or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked. A okay, so I did attack a hostile creature with a spell. So I will bonus action rage. Um, cards of play said. They can't hear HH, but they can hear everyone else. Really? Did you forget to unmute yourself? On OBS? Uh, how long was I muted? Were you seriously muted on OBS? Yes. Oh my so god. You, so that means you were muted. You were muted since the break, most likely. In all honesty, that's kind of comedy. But at the same time... Thank I, you for letting I, us know. I, I know, I know oh, that. Thank about, you. It's, they said it was about oh. the start of the fight as far as they okay. know. Because okay. they got distracted. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so... Yeah, uh, awesome. I am ending my turn with raging. Right. I'll tell you right now. And I'm out of who fell, I'll tell you right now. As a fellow streamer, I know that pain way too well. Don't worry. This enchanted rat gets up, turns, and sees a little 
video game thing. Hi, I'm a CGI cartoon character. Hi, have you seen my uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That one will hit, that one will miss. He doesn't use his claws, he bites at you. Let me double check, is this the actual damage? No. There it is. Alright, you take five chomping damage. Okay. Hey guys, I'm officially ble bleeding. Oh no. If a, if a cartoon character can bleed. Whenever <coughs> Dio has been hit, you've seen like little pixels fly off of him. And now you're seeing his body slowly flash red. <laughs> I'm imagining that Dio and only Dio is hearing a very annoying beeping sound. No they, Wait. no, they patched that out during, uh, what is it? Coromon 27. Yes, but they patched <laughs> it out by turning it into a cool, awesome remix that's still annoying. Oh, <laughs> I know which one specifically, too. <laughs> yes. All you missed, Koozie, was that uh, the Dire Rat got blasted in the chest so hard that it was technically stunned, and then it got obliterated by a magic missile. So, I heard someone's really hurt. Oh, look at Zest real quick. Will you be fine? Um, Zest. He said Zest. Oh. I don't know. Stop the rats. Where are you? Um. So. I have, I'm going to use my feline agility since it's been a while since we did that. I'm going to get over here. Hey, die. Um, I'm going to do the same right here. I apologize for a quick second. As I'm going to cast Cure Wounds. But the way I do it is weird. Okay. So normally you know how carry wounds go, but as an alch as someone as me, as an alchemist. Oh no. Get to the description already. Do you give me a defibrillator shock? No, that's get, me. That's yeah, that's her. She has the more reasonable sense. I'm the different sense. I get this little I get this little flask of this magical honey I made. And I shove it down your throat. Okay. And you hear 12. Okay. Let you say, I'm sorry. No, stay still. Just, come on. Come on, just drink it. <laughs> there. You feel better now? Oh, Dio has an extremely angry look on his face. You get the but healing feel... jingle from Koro24. But you feel better now, do you? <laughs> you do... Uh, he is just foaming from the mouth. Because he is that... raging. I'll take when you a rage, yes. you can say like a handful of words. You can't say a full long sentence. Well, I, at least at least I know. I don't know if that's a side effect or something. As I throw the two flask at the enchanted rat, knowing it will do nothing, but just anger the rat. Bink. And I will just and I'm gonna have uh, whiskers with zest most of the time to make sure he's okay. As I end my turn. Okay. This enchanted rat turns around. Hello. Hello. Wait. 
I heard you like rat. No, I don't like rats. <laughs> and somebody gets to do a quick little chomp. Come on, roll 20. Nope, that's not it. I gotta go all the way to here. Are you kidding me? Ah, there is right there. He gets to do a quick little bite. This is gonna hurt. It hits. Oh my freaking god. <coughs> is, this, is there a roll to hit? For this attack? It's the, re it's the Rex attacking the rat because he's getting out of his space. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Just the Rex <laughs> is attacking the rat. I am sorry, attacking the rat. Because yeah. of... This um, is really gonna hurt. No? The rat so, or the Rex? The dinosaur is biting the rat. That's 12 to the rat? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the the toy Rex has like the hard plastic for the teeth, but like I should point out, all these toys are standing guard protecting this portal. I'm actually checking that I'm not muted. Um, they're all beaten up. Like they're old toys. Like. Probably 90s to 80s toys. And the T-Rex reaches out, its teeth sink into the rat's leg and actually uh, prevent it from getting close to you. So instead, the rat turns on the Rex. Yep. Checking. Yep, that'll hit. Mm -hmm. Sorry, buddy. You grabbed him. With two damaging swipes, the Rex's head cracks and breaks. And Annabel, you see its eyes look at you like, I'm sorry, and you're welcome. As it crumbles. Now I'm just imagining that, uh, those words in Rex's voice from Toy Story. <laughs> it sucks that I don't know how to do a Rex voice, because that would be funny to try that. <laughs> I'm sorry, and you're welcome. Not like that. Yeah, I know. I can't, I can't do it. I wonder if it's more of a scream than anything else. <laughs> Toy guard. This guy screams and charges. Ah. He has... No, that's not it. Where'd it go? There it is. Yes. He runs at the rat with his little sword which you think is made of actual metal, and stabs at the rat in the right spot. The rat starts to claw at the hole in its chest before it starts to shrink and stiff and shrink for turning back into a little toy. The little toy guard looks at you, Annabelle. Gives you a salute with a sword. I salute him back. Toy Captain stays where he is because he needs to protect this place. Spearman! Can you get there? Check his sheet. Yeah, he can charge! Yeah. Oh, no. he stabs at the rat. Oh my gods! We are not gods. We are children. That is the second nat 20 in a row. Nice. <laughs> oh, I did not do the crit for the other one, so. We're lucky, though. They're, they're, with, the, they're with their allies, not their enemies. Tan stab. 
I don't know. I have my suspicions. Well, he so far they're charges on our up side. the like the toy spearman puts a shield in front of him, charges forward, and stabs into the rat's chest. And the rat squeaks in anger, which is not very menacing when you think about it. I mean, I can't, I can't meow in anger because it'll just sound like cuteness. Well, you can hiss. I mean, I can hiss, but I can't meow. All right. Toy horse. Kick it in the nuts! Mm, what can the toy... Let's check the horse. <coughs> That's not how you spell horse. Can you spell horse? I'm not going to say it. Uh, I have a feeling the S was left out. Hmm. Hour? I wonder if she just, just drop it. Just didn't. drop it. <laughs> okay. So the horse is gonna turn and kick its legs out, try and hoof this thing. He's gonna miss. And bit, you're next to this horse. Like this horse has uh damaged fur, like a patchy cloth for fur and you can see the very thin threads holding uh foam for its stuffing and its hooves are solid wood hmm. zest your turn <clears throat> i can't see the other rat from there uh -huh. nope. I'm going to go disable something in OBS. Now my hotkey to mute myself is gone. I'm going to move over to there, but I'm grabbing this toy rat and putting it in my pouch as I move over to there. All right. And, and then, then now I can see this rat. Yep. This I'm going to create a bonfire on it. Oh. Okay. Jeez. Dexterity save. Uh... That is a 13. DC was a 15? Yeah, let me... Grab it. Hold on. Well, the rat bursts into flames. You were shrinking and stiffening. Into a toy. Okay. As soon as it's dead... Like, all these things are dead. The soldiers, like... The little toys start raising their weapons and cheer, and like the ho the horse rears up in triumph. Then they look at you guys like, "What the heck?" I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss the Eldritch Cannon. I was gonna get ready to bring out my laser pointer, and it's like, "Okay, that's not needed." Okay. Instead, I'll just grab a flask and drink in victory. And I will use my control flames to put out the bonfire. All right. And then come check out the desk over here. I'm looking for preferably scotch tape, but if it's not there, paper glue. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bottle of glue with one of those uh, rubber stopper things that have like a brush inside it, so it's like brush okay. on glue. Hey, it, hopefully this will work. Take the glue and start gluing my paper cuts shut. This is essentially like patching yourself with like a medical kit. <laughs> so. Works. Works for me! <laughs> so, medicine check, right? Okay. 
Uh. Just realized I've been muted. Hi. Where's Father Winter? Uh, Zest, give yourself back five HP. As I was looking at the captain. The captain looks up at you. This captain looks like some terrible kid put a lighter to him, so some of him has melted. And, like, one of his arms is been pulled so hard that the ball joints are now very loose and just wiggling. Oh, you poor thing. All these guys are beaten up. All of them. He looks up at you. Are you talking about our master? Oh. Well. Are there two? The spirit of winter is ours. Who do you serve? To answer your question? To be perfectly honest, I just want to go home. Wait um, a minute. He squints at you. You're not a toy? Who are you? No, what are you? Oh, All of you. If you, if you really uh, want an answer, we're just a bunch of kids that really turned into toys, and we just got here. We woke up here. We, we were all closer to teenagers, but whatever. Oh, we're still technically kids until teenagers. We're preteens, but still kids. So get used to it. The well, captain think... sheaths his hard plastic sword. Which one of you has it? Has what? Which one of you has yeah, the to uh... the item? What item are you talking about? That's the thing we don't know. Okay. I look I at Zest. Yeah, I also look at Zest. Guys? What item are you talking about? Something that you weren't a part of. What? <laughs> the claw. They're basically asking for you. What about the claw? Squinting at the captain. Captain leans past Dio to look at you. You're the one who has the, the item? It depends oh, on what item you're talking about. Our master told us that there was someone who knew of the outside. That would be me. May I see it? From where I'm at, I will take it out from underneath my jacket. Paper jacket. Jacket sleeve. God, it must be really awkward, though. It's like... And hold out the claw that I've made into a necklace. He's gonna look at his two guys. Walk past everybody to come up and look at it. Ah. Yes, yes, you're on our side then. Good, 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 good. We need your help. With... What? No doubt you've noticed that these... He looks at the rats. Poor toys have been tampered with. So these used to be toys? Yes, these were about to be sent out. Who wants rats? What? I look at myself. I, I look at them like... Who I look at myself. You're, you're um, you're, you're cutting in and out. I was saying, who would want in my in my mind, like who would want rat? Who would want toy rat? And then I look at myself. Oh wait, probably a couple Believe of my people. Believe it or not, there are people who love toy rats. I bet there is a possibility. There are I also look people at who love Lego or brick cats and brick centaurs. And he looks at Dio. You. There used to be kids that liked us. They all raise their weapons. So they... look at Zest. <laughs> Just... But then I look back at Whiskers like... Hey, Chich, I'm going to go back and gather up okay, the wait. other two toy rats. From downstairs? No, the two that are up here. All right. So, so uh... Mine tell... Uh, did, did Zest say out loud what that chunk of meat was? Nope. Mind telling me why there is a chunk of cooked dragon meat? Oh, that downstairs? meat is not cooked. You didn't touch it, did you? No. Good. What good, is good. it? 
Well, our master is a bit mischievous. If someone who doesn't deserve a boon or a gift demands one, he um, gives them something. Okay, that doesn't answer the question. What is that meat? He raised an eyebrow at you. Well, if, well, are you exactly? It's a piece uh, of back Tiamat. home. Golden Dragonborn. Specifically, Golden Revenite. That doesn't exist, but okay. Uh, that's what my character. Yeah, but Revenites themselves don't exist. Okay. Um. Does Zest actually say that? Yeah, he said yes. Golden Dragonborn. No, I said Zest. Oh. Yes, I did, but apparently I was spoken over the top of, so leave it as you choose. He points to... slowly points to Zest while still looking at you, Dayo. As he said, it is a piece of Tiamat. Specifically, the red. Okay. First thing that happens... Okay. Because, again, he's still grossed out at the idea. Second thing that happens... What the hell? Yeah. Why the hell does he have that? Like yeah. I just explained to you, sometimes those who don't deserve or earn a boon and keep demanding it he gives them something that shut her up really quick uh, dia you gotta learn to oh. stop questioning some things okay you just let it happen i mean after all let's be honest i mean look at look at our state at this point <laughs> so that was a trophy he took then i assume that was a punishment. Wait, if that's the case, what, what's with us then? Well, he again points to Zest. He has the relic. He knows yeah. that there is more than just the outsiders that we're aware of. Yeah. He looks at Zest. Our master told us that if there ever came a problem, because you understand, he's like gesturing to the claw, that you guys would be here to help. Because you understand. Just know these people. <laughs> Just know these two. The only one I really know is Annabelle. And this is the first time I've ever heard about the claw. It's because this is not about you. And it's not about us. It's about it all. Oh. I look at I look look at Zest flathead. What do you mean? So <laughs> just a bunch of kids that just really got dragged into another, probably into some shenanigans at this point. What do I mean? No. Exactly what I was trying to tell you about when you were poking holes into the dimensions to power a coffee machine. There are things in this world that you haven't even started to think about comprehending, and you're playing with them. Everybody is playing with them. They're ignoring what they need to do for the give and the take and the balance. Hmm. Because they don't want to believe that there's a price to pay for their wishes and their wants. Hmm. And sometimes, sometimes that price is what we hold dearest. As he turns back to look at the captain, he gives just the briefest glance to Annabelle. What do we need to do? Well... We can tell that you're not in the best state right now. We're going to help you out. Our master, he looks back in the portal. He... Mm, 
You saw those books downstairs, yes? Yes. The And he raises his one arm because it's all he's got. The big one. Reach into my backpack, pull out the big one. This ah, one? Yes, 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 yes. Flip it over to the negative. It's blank. Yes. Flip it over to the negative. I turn the book upside down and open it from the back. Alright, so he pulls out his sword again and he holds it towards the pages. His sword glows gold and washes over it, undoing the enchantment just for now. Now when you look at the pages, you can see artwork of two entities, the Spirit of Christmas and the Prince of Negativity, as he's called. The Prince of Negativity is pretty much the polar opposite twin to the Winter Spirit. Both in appearance and functionality. Wherever this guy goes, the negative follows, and the negative gets just as strong as the positive. Let me put a picture in the art gallery. The last entry about the negative was a fight about a thousand years ago, give or take. Where the positive one committed one dark crime. Only one. He used a spell on his darker twin, destroying one of his arms, one of his horns, and part of his face, as well as his wings. And then casting him to never be seen again. Not by mortals, at least. He essentially sent him to the plane of negative energy to never come back. And when you get to the page that is been updated with the more modern stuff, you're kind of realizing that all of this giant monster stuff and how much damage it causes, how much negativity it causes, is feeding him. It's giving him power. He's going to come back. How long ago was the cataclysm? Uh, in retrospect, about a hundred thousand years ago. Okay. So this is not connected at all to the cataclysm then? No, because the cataclysm. Any history that was before that is gone. Okay. It'd be the equivalent of not knowing what came before World War II. When did the kaiju start appearing? The Cataclysm. Okay. Like, about a hundred years after the Cataclysm, boom, there they were. So, Prince of Negativity is trying to break free of his prison, but he should never have been imprisoned in the first place. Your master has been trying to take on two roles rather than the one that is for him. Well, if you view it like that, the primary goddess, the All Mother, is meant to be keeping him in check. But as you can see, any gestures to your everything, your very being, she has a lot of work on her hands.
So how do we help your master? He looks back at the portal by going in and helping him. One moment. Mm -hmm. So you just want us to go in and help him exactly how exactly? That book's not going to give you all the information. It just updates whenever a generation or a decade or even a century changes. So what is the recent... So what has been the recent update on it, Zeth? That the negativity is feeding the prince of negativity. That the oh. traditions are being for lack of a better word at this moment, perverted. So, at this point, we've got to have to fix it? Your traditions are what keeps him locked up, keeps him at bay, your belief in the positive. Well, not very many people are believing now, are they? So, no. we just got to make people believe, and everything will go back to normal? You can't make people believe that People have to choose to believe. Well, we need to give them a reason to believe. They have plenty of reason to believe. Tell me, why does your father fight with your neighbor over decorations? God. Why my father fight over the neighbor? Why? What purpose the season does it serve to fight over decorations? I don't think that's more of a seasonal thing. I think that's more of a grudge on each other's thing. <laughs> but it's taking... It, this is what... It's not being understood. The traditions are there for a reason. To turn them into a reason to fight one another is feeding the negativity. The, the, the need to buy more bigger, brighter, prettier, shiny things to put under the tree is not why the gifts are there. They're meant to be a part. They're meant to bring joy, not feed ah, well, greed. I, I never really questioned it, considering my dad's always been like that. I never really told much about me. Or anything about how, how it probably is. I guess my mom did a little, but still. <laughs> you know, he's a military. He's the head guy. He doesn't think much about it, so I never really question it. But that's the point, Bit. Nobody's questioning it. They've forgotten. They're feeding into the basis of desires over a holiday that's about joy and love, celebration, that's renewal. So, how are you going to, so, I guess I'm going to say this. Do you have a plan of how to fix this, Zest? No, but I didn't have a plan five years ago either. Well, in that case, we'll just think of one. And it seems like this is a good opportunity to finally use my brain of your brain of mine anyway to do something. Right. Hey, I don't think this is something that we can just come up with, with like a blueprint and be able to fix. No, no, but uh, like I said, like I always said to everyone who's close to me, which is only you three and my mom and dad, we're all geniuses in our own in our own hearts, and I believe we can always find a problem once we search through it. To the captain, you said that we're not in condition to help, but you could help. How? Back. Sorry. He gestures what? to the spearman who is handing you guys large healing potions. That is very needed. <laughs> Considering I don't really exactly have time to hook up my own stuff right now, so yeah, those are very greatly needed. He is, uh, he is handing you guys superior healing. Oh god. <laughs> and those of you who don't need healing, they're still handing you them. I almost feel like that's a waste on me. Um, <laughs> is that not going to help with the poison condition, is it? Uh, 
Actually, talking about the poison condition, is it, can I go over there and help him with that problem? Since I have, like, probably have a little experience with my mom, helping helping my mom from a little time to time at work. You would not be helping um, your mom at work, by the way. Um, no, it's more, it's, I know it's more like playing around, but watching her a little bit. <laughs> could, okay, could I attempt to get him out of the poison You wouldn't actually condition? be poisoned anymore. Okay. That, it, um, how do I respect this? After the spearman hands you guys your healing potions, he also hands each of you a trinket. Uh, okay. Uh, bit? <laughs> what shape is your flask? For my flask of honey? Yeah. It's like, it looks like those ones that hold whiskey. Well, he looks at you and he hands you... It, it's shaped like a canteen, but it's the exact same size as your flask. And it has a beautiful rose gold snowflake on the front. Yay! It's cold to the touch. Cold? But if it's cold enough to hold my honey, that will work just fine. And he, like, before you open it, he puts his little spear over it. No, no. No, no. Don't open it. Not yet. Okay. Uh, he looks at Dio and he hands Dio a little pendant, like a little medallion. Uh, what is it shaped like? The medallion is perfectly round but stamped into it is the antlers with the cloved hooves at the bottom. It's just like what was seen in the book. Okay. E. Oh, no, I stretched him. Oh, no, what have I done? Okay. My boy stretched. He walks over to Annabelle and he holds out another one. He's pulling these out of a, a velvet bag. Okay, I'm gonna take it. Uh, pulling out of the bag... Um, sorry, what he hands you is a stick. A smooth... Well, not smooth. Is a um, dark red metallic pole with gold and silver markings on it. On one end is the cloved hooves, on the other end is a snowflake. Okay. Thank you. Looks over to Zest. He reaches into his bag and he pulls out a book. Take it. He gives you a bow and then goes to join his brethren. Nod at him and take a look at the book. I need your double I need your double check my notes here on each of those. Um the flask once per long rest when you open it will cast a uh, a, s a flurry of snowballs. Okay. Don't be looking down at when you open it, though. I was just about to get the he stalked me. Or she. Mm -hmm. Or they. Or it. They're 80s toys, so they're definitely dudes. My dude. Because that's how the hey, 80s so worked. I was say, hey, there were girl toys in the 80s. Barbie. These are soldier toys. Yeah, there was, um... Now I can't remember. Well, She-Ra came from that, but there were others as well. Uh, for Annabelle, you are looking at the stick. It's a wand of wonder. Have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
I love that and I hate it. But it's fine with this animal because god damn it, she's gonna kill us all. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm using a different table for it, so. Uh, <laughs> even better. It's always fine when the DM makes her own table for the Wand of Wonder. Um, for Zest, you look through this book. <laughs> oh my god. Let me just make extra sure that I'm reading this right. I've got an eyebrow, eyebrow cocked up right now, okay. Hold on. Is it a scroll of summon to Rask? No. No. You have a book of devouring. There's oh. a very tightly clasped piece of metal keeping the book closed. So it's essentially that book from Harry Potter that came to life. The monster. Yeah, the monster book. Yeah. All they tell okay. you is don't open that unless it's pointing at your enemy. Otherwise, you can keep okay. it for as long as you want. As okay. for Dio. I keep having to double check that I'm reading this right. What, Dio? Mm hmm. Let's see. Would this even be considered armor? Okay. The coin you- like, the medallion you have is not on a string or anything, you're just holding it in your hand. <laughs> uh, when you flick it out, it summons something. What does it summon? You don't know, you just know that it summons something. Um. So what exactly did I just summon? You're throwing it out now. Oh no, I'm not throwing it out now. What what exactly does this summon? Um, we don't know. We were just told to give it to you. Oh no. Oh yay! More experimenting. It's gonna be like a kaiju or something. Hey, there's a little, there's no, hey, my mom's a kaiju. Your mom She's is a kaiju born. born, and it's different. Well, it's okay, Annabelle. Good idea, my pal. It'll be fine. The book functions similar to a mimic when it comes to attack, so I'll be keeping an eye on that one. Okay. So Zest has a pet mimic now? Yeah, pretty much. Make sure you feed it every day. I don't know how Dio feels about that. A pet mimic? I mean, mimics in this world aren't as bad as they would be in like your classic no, D&D that, that, world. That's but yeah. not why. Um, the relationship between changelings and mimics. Oh. We'll be fine. We'll be fine, right? Right, guys? Guys? Well then. <laughs> Please answer me. Not going to. <laughs> Please. It, it's like me owning a chet, a uh, pet monkey. Uh, Am I? Did, did I turn invisible? Does some? Is this the second ability of this flask? No, you're okay. Own... You're fine. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure. Well then, Captain. We need to go help the spirit of the holidays. Don't forget to heal your guys' self up back to full, because 
they did give you those healing potions and you have some spare. Oh, we have spare? I thought we only had one. Okay. No, they gave each of you a healing potion. And those of you who don't need healing, you now have one. Yep. Um, my bits were... I would argue because... I, I would argue that I don't need one. What was if it, you want, you can you... use... Yeah, if you want, you can use your hit dice instead. So we are this, doing a, a short rest? This technically counts, yeah. Okay. Oh, in that case, I'll use my hit dice first. I don't want to waste that powerful of a healing potion. Mm, okay. 84 plus. Uh... How the Maybe heck? How Negative the constitution. Heck? That's amazing. That Negative amazing. constitution modifier. I think I better use the potion. <laughs> I start learning. I think he. I think it's zest internally divides by zero. <laughs> uh, because it's zest, does that mean everyone is dead now? Devoured by his ident the identity crisis that is him. No, no it's the um, fact that he. You take the chance for rest. It's the fact that one of us is annoying him too much that he didn't get a chance to get rest. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Uh, is it you that's annoying him? No. I don't wanna. Also, I should point out Tarask does not exist to you guys. Okay. <laughs> that's why I said When, when I said, is it a scroll of summon Tarask? I was joking. I, I know. I'm just shocked that they actually made that an actual item. That's yep. another conversation for something that we're not streaming. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, that's only one long rest. I can't make. Once you guys uh, are, once you guys are topped off and you feel rested and ready to go. But hey, short rest. I get all my spell slots back. Uh. They push the destroyed dinosaur off to the side. Sadly. I thought we get our spells out on long rest, do we, Annabelle? Um, Jelly. Let me see. It feels like we do, but I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, we recover our use spell slots. Uh... Oh, we do? Yeah, we do. Oh, so we get all of our spell slots back? Got yep. a short rest? That's oh, cool. what it says here. Okay. Then we'll get all our spell slots back. Okay. Sorry. I'm guessing during the time in a short rest, me and Animal's helping each other fix our stuff so we can get stock that back up. Is this the warlock? Yep. Okay, so I guess I'm the only one who doesn't regain their spell slots. I've only got two. I think I have a spare clear bomb. I also only have two. I have to make a spare firework. I tweak my goggles a little bit. Too bad it's not a long rest, because if it's a long rest, I could start making the elixirs with the gamblings. <laughs> um, well, I don't think we want to leave this be. Yeah. No, we ain't going to leave it a long rest. It's okay. I'm just gonna... That should be enough. Alright. I still won't deny. This is still very awkward being in, the, being in this state. So I'm back at full. Okay. Is... Any is everyone getting more comfortable in their form, new form, or no? I'm still confused of how I got this shirt on me. You were sleeping in it. 
if the DM says that, then that's so okay. I just didn't want to draw a, ne a naked creature, dude. Oh, I, I Dio usually wears shorts when he's naked. When, sorry, when he uh, Sh don't wear shorts while he's naked. It's cold okay. This time it was cold this time, so you wore a shirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you guys have all been topped off. You're all rested. You go through the portal. Okay, hold on. As you pass through, all the sound just kind of stops. Except for the faint crinkling of ice. Like, wind chimes. And when you come out, you're floating in a starry planescape of some sort. You can see stars all around you. You're on floating stone or ice, you're not really sure. But there's burnt marks, there's splatters of glowing blue and glowing orange blood on the ground. Mm. And then you see a dragonborn just hovering in space. Let me turn off the grid. I mean go going to blow up and act like I don't know nobody. This place is weird. Oh, oh, whiskers. Yeah. Your buddy. That dragonborn <laughs> is not on the ground. Oh, well, I was going to check to see, but on this world, is that a constellation? No. Okay. You're just seeing a smattering of stars, just random twinkling stars. Well, no, what I was asking is, Man is Mango the name of one of the constellations? No, oh. he is like a, a physical dragonborn just hovering there. Okay. Are you okay? He doesn't respond. Look at Mango. Mango, try to touch him. See if he's okay. You gonna touch him? Yeah. Well, then move your token, dude. In Draconic, I say, excuse me. Oh. You reach your hand out, and your hand goes through him. <laughs> he is a... He's a rather chunky dragonborn. Like, he's rotund, but he's still strong. Oh, we could tell he's chunky. My boy's chunky yet funky. But your hand phases into him. And before you, like, pull your hand back out of surprise, like, you don't even register it, you suddenly see every, all of his dreams. You hear, uh, his, like, this voice in your head. Lots of voices. And you kind of realize he's not actually here. This is his mind. You can also see where he is. You can see him curled up in a bed with somebody sleeping right next to him. It looks like it must be very cold where he's at because you can see his breath as he's sleeping peacefully. Comfy lad. As I'll just slowly put my hand away. Well. That's... new. It's either I have now the ability to do telepathy like our new, my new friend here, or the fact that I have been seeing his dreams. <laughs> Am I? You're in the dreamscape, because it's best uh, not to mess with them while they're sleeping. Well, I hope I didn't do anything drastic. In that case, I'll just follow along. After all, we're here to look for one person specifically, right? Yes. Let's get going. Oh. Why are you? <laughs> um, branches. I don't think we should just follow the main pathway. We should see what's down in these branches. Okay. Well, then we should. Should we try the one closest to us at the beginning? 
Oh, it would be Zest going forward. Move closer to the darkness, please. Thank you. It would be Shadow going forward. Bye. Oh. <laughs> 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 really? Uh, I'm reusing yeah. tokens here. <laughs> You're seeing two more Dragonborn. One is curled up in a tight little ball. The other one is absolutely massive. And he's kind of like slunched forward, staring at the ground. Which one has the turtle shell back? The green one. <laughs> he does have a turtle shell. But it's not the same from the campaign. It's like a... a alligator snapping turtle. So it actually is a turtle this time? No, he's a dragonborn. He's just wearing a turtle. Ah. Sorry, turtle shell. Hey. Oh, okay. I was say he's actually, he's wearing a turtle. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> He technically is in the right other campaign. I, uh, above game, actually do want to know what uh, the crunch of this world's dreams are. You can go over and check if you want. Yeah, I'm going over to check. You reach out, you put your hand through him. You don't hear any voices. You hear a lot of birds. You hear uh, birds. crickets and howls of wolves. In his dream... He is curled up. He's very tiny, but he's curled up neck like in a pile of wolves and foxes, just sleeping happily. There's no buildings near him, there's no cars, there's no people. Just him on a summer's night. And then Lovely. you see an apple strudel. <laughs> there it I is. Because I have to bring it back. Yeah. Okay. Uh there was apples earlier. I could eat apple strudels. <laughs> No, not with those. You would die before you got a chance. Be the best damn ever I ate then. Then this one, you see a weird mm. person with a mask and then a very large half-orc lady. Still not the people, the person that we're looking for. And we just keep going. Well, I want to reveal this one just for reactions because I'm going to find it funny. <laughs> okay. He is actually from a different campaign. Literal Deathwing. He's a blacksmith. My name's, my name's Literal. <laughs> Some of these names are jokes. <laughs> okay. You I can tell. I will go serious now. Ah, no. <laughs> you say that. <laughs> Nope, I'm not clocking the right thing here. Down this way is a kinku. I don't know if you guys can hear my mouse. It's just rapid clicking. You're good. We know the pain. <laughs> yes, Kizzy. Thera's size is literally listed as bigger than you. Yeah. <laughs> totally not Mego again with a shitty ingredient. <laughs> so you know how oh, sometimes so you know how sometimes in anime characters will go from soft and squishy to suddenly very angular and serious? Uh -huh. He did that in the campaign. Uh -oh. Um I know the name says it, but can you guys roll me history for that tiefling there? Sure. Uh I feel like I should know or not know. Can I get advantage because I tried to date his daughter and then got you rejected? You never tried. You never got the attempt. You never got the bat. Okay. <laughs> I, people told me already. Like, you, you know this guy. Chance. Actually, bit, roll again because you have advantage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bit knows this guy as somebody who works 
personally with all branches of the military. This is the richest man alive, as you know. It is because of him the very fabric of reality is staying together. Because his job is to create the weapons that keep those giant creatures from wiping everything out. Yes. And I look back at, at, at Three Life Side, like, and look at my animal. Animal. It will be our what? turn soon to be the richest people alive to keep nope. track of everyone. Nope. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Annabelle. Come on. <laughs> no. Nope. Bitch, she said she doesn't want to. Alright. I was not expecting that. Sorry. So, this, I know you said so what's in front bit, of you? Heard... What's in front of you right here is a burst of ice and energy. Dio touches him. Hmm? Dio touches Baron. Uh... I want to know what the richest man in the world dreams about. Koozie, do you want me to invite you to the Discord group so you can tell him? Yeah, you know I'm just gonna invite him. Oh, I'm guessing he's a player then. <laughs> he is my co DM. Oh, cool. We're all gonna die real soon. Here he goes, nothing. Let me give his role. Game Master. Welcome. Hi. Okay, so so uh -oh. what kind of BS am I about to witness? <laughs> uh, hi, yes. By the way. How doomed am I? Uh, so you reach out to touch. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Understand? He also tried to date your daughter. You mm. never even got. I, to I never even got a chance to, but I was attracted to her when I was like five years younger. Mm hmm. Understandable. Um. So, uh, this Baron, as I imagine him at least, is, uh, the way he sleeps is he's kind of got the, uh, both his arms crossed, his head is gently nodding off down, um, and as you look at him, his mouth is slightly ajar and it's just leaking smoke. Okay. Uh, um, his wings are furled around his front, and as you reach out to touch him, uh, you find yourself in a very large uh, workshop with several machines running about, but in the center of this uh, massive noise cacophony of uh, different things being built is Baron uh, sat down in a chair Idly tinkering away on a gun with a uh, a cigar in his mouth and his jacket off, just humming something to himself, finding some sort of peace within the horrible sounds of machinery just going on all around. So that that's it. He's just making a gun. Uh, are they allowed to interact with this at all, HH? No, they just see what he's doing, what he's dreaming of, and where he's at. This is, okay. if we put into perspective of Santa Claus, thank you, Shadow, um, he knows when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. This winter spirit would now know that Baron is still awake when he shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Baron max level in this campaign? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Do I get noticed? No. Uh, you don't get noticed, but I'll give you a little bit of flair. How about that? Okay. Uh, that's okay. Uh, Before, just remember we are streaming, so. Yeah. Well, so I'm not gonna say any swears or any recently no, you banned can swear, words. Just you know what I'm <laughs> worried about. I already, I already swear already, and you give yeah. me the okay. All right. Uh, uh, in turn, he stops, um, and reaches over and presses a button, uh, and just says, uh, Secretary, what time is it? 
It is 2 a.m., sir. Ah, shit. Well, uh, you can go home. Shall I call your wife? I'm sure she's on her way if she's concerned. As soon as she hangs up, you hear the distant sound of very large wings flapping. Oh, yeah, there it is. And then he pulls back on this uh, wheelchair, looks up, opens his mouth, and you can see he's got very sharp teeth. Just... <sighs> this day. And then stops glancing uh, off in your direction casually, but he doesn't see anything. Mm. Weird. Gets up and then begin uh he takes the pistol off the table. And this is a very large pistol with only three rounds in it. He sets off onto his side, begins to walk uh towards you Dio, is that correct? Yeah. Uh yes. Begins to walk towards you, Dio. With very much with purpose. And then Mm. Oh, well. Must be nothing for now. Better go meet my wife before I'm dragged out of this place and everything's broken. You pull your hand out. Well, he's still awake and he's still working hard. There you go. He was saying, oh, it's time to make love to my life. It's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> time to make love to my wife. <laughs> On Christmas. And there we go. We get banned on Twitch. That's <laughs> what I was worried about. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what is Dio's passive, by the way? Again? Uh, well, uh, uh, ten. Okay, he would have noticed a full-grown red dragon landing outside and shrinking to a dragonborn to meet him. Okay, I was not surprised by this. This is the life. <laughs> it's a life. Hey, dragons don't <laughs> behave good. the same way they should in my campaigns. It's good life, you know? Good life, yeah. Okay. So much what, money, what I don't know what to do with about, anymore. What are you talking about, HH? Dragons can shapeshift. No, I mean, they don't behave they usually do in other campaigns. In my campaigns, oh. than they do in others. Don't take things at face value, is what I mean. Oh. Thank you, Cozy. You're welcome. Bit? Well, it's time for him to make love to his life. wife now. <laughs> make love to his <laughs> Bit? Yes. Oh, so I'm assuming I mean... I'm back here. I need you to roll history for me. All right. Advantage, disadvantage, normal. Two. I said bit. Oh, I did not hear the bit part. <laughs> bit has wandered off. No, I am still here. I just said with advantage, disadvantage, or normal. Um. Yo, yeah, yeah. Let's say with advantage. Okay. Why? <laughs> I should have put him somewhere else. <laughs> Guess who he found? Galibor. Yes. Oh. You see that guy, and you feel a slight bit of terror because you know who that is. He is head of security for Baron. But. All branches of the military, if they need something, they talk to him. Okay. Your dad is terrified of this guy as well. And he's a planar diver. He must be really good at work. Or he's just really bad at working with. Mechanically, In my I would respond to that as, he is a barbarian. Ah, at max level. Got it. That's why. Ah, I look at him. I look at him. 
I'll give him a proper salute. I thank you for all the hard work you've been doing. Oh, hey, you it's guys Uncle also Cal. see him. Oh, it's Gal it's Galavoy. I'm gonna leave him be because I'm gonna respect that he is asleep, or if he if he's awake, I don't want to bother because gotta be friendly. As so, I'm gonna um, him Alex. Yep. My rule is, if you find him and you succeed on a roll, you immediately level up. Oh. <laughs> so you're in level six now, rats. You guys all know who he is. You just needed to find him. Are we all level six now? Uh, if Bit points him out to you, it... there's no way you guys would even need a roll to remember who he is, because you could probably interact with him multiple times by now. We did well, kind of save his life, too. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh. I, I said we did kind of save his life, too. He's the one yeah. I'm having, quote-unquote, yeah. therapy I, with. I, I'm going to say, huh. Oh. So this is Galabor. I I won't say that out loud because, okay, because I think this is someone because this is technically his first time knowing the person, kind of seeing the person up front. He'll give him proper salute, and, and I'll look back sleeping, at the other. Like when you put your hands through these people, it's just to see things. They have no idea of, that you're doing that. Oh no, it's more like he's giving us a he doesn't know. It's more the fact that it's a respectful thing for a bit because he's a military boy. So I'm gonna go back. I like hey, I found someone. Really interesting. Okay. We're surrounded by people. Yeah, but this one's oh. a little interesting. It's Galmore. Oh. Hey, Uncle Gal. He does not respond. I know he doesn't respond. Yep. So, wait. What how did you guys know him? Uh when I was little he was the babysitter and now he is the guy I uh who uh does my therapy sessions. He would not have time to do therapy with you. Okay. Uh, he works as the head of security for the richest man in the world. Okay, he recommended someone to me to have therapy sessions with. Okay. That one works. You're saying someone has his high caliber has some time to work with some kid's therapy. It's either he has too much free time on his hands or he's or he's just really, really bored. He's a really good sitter. Um, well, I would not know, but our, I know my dad is a little afraid of him, and I can see understand a little bit. So all I could do is just give him respect. Zest? Zest is contemplating something. <laughs> he himself says and that he's about to. That is not working for some reason. What does Galibor dream about? I was so hopeful someone would do uh, it. <laughs> I was so hopeful. <laughs> yeah. What do you Zest laughing? want to know? Zest puts his hand into Yalibor's head. So, you put your hand through Galibor. You see him. He's awake. He's already home. Like, he's been sent home for the night. Uh, he sat next to a fire with a large drink. You can see like a, a an apple orchard just outside his window. Uh, his kid, who's like by now, he's got to be he's got to be like eleven years old by now. Is passed out on the couch with a headlamp because he was trying to wait for the spirit of Christmas. And. He's looking at the fire. He looks mm, older than he should be, like that kind of tired. And you look through his dreams. You see a dragonborn on a tropical island, like kind of more like a Samoa or Hawaii, um, 
doing a barbecue with a large pig buried in the ground with hot stones. You see him cooking. You can see like Baron and like some people you don't recognize. He's so happy to see them. And then the dream fades with each individual, except for Baron, fading and disappearing right before his eyes. And then it shifts and you see him standing in a battlefield. He's got um he's got a sword with him. He's got a gun on his side, but he's not using it. He is beaten and bloody. He is exhausted. And ahead of him is just rows and rows and rows of undead coming at him. And behind them all is the only way I can describe this is a man wearing war hammer armor. A full space marine standing there with large claws on his hands watching. And you can tell just by the eyes of this creature in this armor, this guy's also undead. And they're charging him. He's trying to fight. He is trying his best. And you can see there's a town just behind him that he is fighting to protect. When the dream stops... It's when, uh, it's when the space marine looking creature claws him. But when it claws, it hits somebody that you don't recognize, who also fades in his memories. And then it snaps back to him being in that room. His head snaps up like maybe he was just daydreaming. He looks spooked. And he looks down. He is actually kind of destroyed whatever drink he had in his hand. And he just simply gets up, carries the broken glass and his injured hand to the kitchen, and he cleans himself up. When you pull your hand out, the last thing you see is he's remembering again that battlefield, but now that quote-unquote space marine is replaced with some decaying giant monster. And for some weird reason, you see a white door flash in his memories. But you don't know what that is. Do these battles seem familiar through a historical viewpoint, like something that has ha already happened. With how learned you are and how you know Galibor, there was a f um, at one point a, a kaiju of the undead appeared. It breached. And with it came extremist followers, you know, uh, best way I can describe it is Vecna style, which is an absolute, Cultist. yeah, an absolute legion of undead came with it. And a creature that no one could really recognize the designer of for that armor that you saw. Galibor was there, along with a bunch of soldiers. He fought there. Soldiers fought as well, but they did not last very long. At the very least, the kaiju got killed. It was killed by another one before that one left and disappeared. No one knows where it went. Galibor and maybe like a hundred soldiers were all that was left of the defending army. Okay. Before I take my hand out, I want to try something. Okay. Since I have telepathy, I'm going to leave... I'm going to try to leave a mental men message, a, maybe a, a fleeting imprint, that everything that happened, the sacrifices that were made, have allowed everybody who is alive now to be here. And to ease his mental suffering.
Give me one second, please. Okay. Zest is messing with your timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I must have really messed with something. This stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out what new spell I want to add to my list. Oh, I'm back. Okay. How bad did I break it? You were sending him healing words, like, not literal healing words, but like healing, comforting words? Yes. You pull back and you look up at the uh, the spectral. His eyes are open and looking at you. You can see a uh, twitch of a smile. Geist, or Geist, Zest will smile back even though he doesn't believe that Galibor can see him. Yeah, there's something now that needs to be done. So for context, at the end of the campaign Galibor was in, he got left behind in the homebrew world while everyone else kind of got trapped on the Sword Coast to fight Tiamat. And this was all a... The entire campaign at the time was a uh, prequel to the original like 200 years and everybody knows that like 200 years ago there was a, a huge war with uh, Vecna followers and Galibor being who he is you know a warrior he's going to stay behind and fight rather than let innocent people get killed so he died on a battlefield fighting so many undead until his body failed him Spirit was still going strong. Body, no. <laughs> what a badass. I always... hey, can I hmm? can I also say something real quick before we go off real quick? Sure. I understand he come around, he woke up, he looked at him and smiled. But you must understand how awkward that must be. Because you see this flat motherfucker. <laughs> Galmore has him. no idea who did that. I know, but it's just the thought alone. It's just how funny that looked. It's straight stare. This huge, this dragonborn looking straight at this flat person. At an origami star of Santa Claus. Star. Origami Santa Claus, and he yeah. goes smiling. <laughs> Believe it or not, even the Warhammer guy was from that campaign. It was so stupid. Sorry, I'm sorry. I just job for a minute. <laughs> Please go on. <laughs> yeah. Zest is not having luck with the hit point rolls. <laughs> if you want, you can go with your average. I haven't yet. That's why my hit points are so low, is I've never taken the average. I've taken whatever I've rolled. Oof. I gotta make a adjustment on the map. 
<laughs> that's why. Here we go. That's why at sixth level I have twenty hit points. No, at least now you're not underneath twenty. True. Right. <laughs> I'm so. I'm like now at forty nine. Because I've just been rolling really good. Until the last possible second. Alright. He's playing as Galibor. How do you have fun, Zest? No, 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 no. No, wait, wait, okay. That burst right there is a bunch of ice that's been bro just burst from the ground. Like an explosion happened there. Like, I don't know, ice knife? So, it's recently just been exploded, or is it just doing it right now? It's, looks like it's been there for a while. <laughs> this is the spirit of... Christmas, aka winter. So, well, so, I no longer have a minus two to uh, intelligence. That's good. Oh, give me a minute. So this is completely blocking the path. Yeah. Mm. Well, you think that it's not that strong. That's... Let's see how strong it is. Uh, create um, bonfire. I'll cast Create Bonfire on it. <laughs> uh. Okay. That still, that still cracks me up remembering you see an alien. Fire. <laughs> Never seen anything yeah. before. Fire. Okay. Um, so I panicked. Okay. That's right. Okay. So this thing's in the way. It's in the floor or it's like a big burst and just frozen. Like in someone place. casted ice knife, it missed and still went off on the ground. Okay. So we just gotta get across. It's not okay. that strong. He's melting it. So, with my level up, I ha I picked up Boots of the Winding Path. Would I be able to just teleport across it? Yeah, you can see over there. You, you know what? Um, I'm going to do that then. Dio's going to try and help. Okay. And he's just doing it over and over and over again. It, I, I did say it's not that strong, so let me reveal... Annabelle, now that you're over there, the glowing blood increases. You can see somebody's ahead of you. Also, another spirit that's weird. I I think this is it, guys. Just a hunch. Are you certain? Um. Something's glowing over that way. So. In case you have noticed, I'm having fun flipping you guys horizontally. <laughs> right. In that case, I'm getting Bell Refueling Ring. Since that'll be my other one. Uh. Okay, uh... Wait, the Prince of Negative Emotion is bleeding? Energies. Oh, Negative Energies is bleeding? Uh... A unicorn for some reason. <laughs> I have a Superior Healing Potion in... Because I honestly don't think it's a good idea if he dies. Well, that's what we're about to 
do. That's why we're here uh, to help. I'm dashing in. Oh. Uh, like, I am bonus action dashing in. You could just run in while you have the chance, man. Yeah, I am dashing in. I'm going to look at Zest. Are you going to talk to him? I'm going to try to. Oh. Then I'm going to stop Bit from dashing in because I can't stop <laughs> Dale. Well, well, I'm not going to run in. See, I was I'm, I'm, here. Yeah. I'll be like, okay, you can for that. Because okay. you'll listen to Annabelle. Um, I'm within the 60 feet I need to be to reach this person. To telepathy. Yeah, as, as soon as I saw that he was still standing and I saw that Van Meer was actually down, I would rush over to him. Please stop. Yeah. Oh. No, no, this is this is the telepathy to okay. Dana. Dana. Uh, Dana. 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 I'm not gonna tell you what it what the name actually means, but it is Gaelic. Yeah, so as soon as you gave me the uh correction I realized I mispronounced. Vladimir. I'm gonna use the distraction to shove a po a superior healing potion down Vlad. Uh, Vladimir's throat. Well, let me describe here, please. All around you is like glowing blood. And one towering form of a chemically burned, magically burned, nearly undead creature whose back is hunched. His lower legs are insect like that crack and crinkle as they move. And as Dio runs past him, he doesn't follow where Dio is going. He turns to look behind him. His skeletal wings leave a, an aftershadow of smoke as he looks at you all. I can't do voices. <laughs> no need to. Go <laughs> He has a deep, rumbling voice that echoes as though three of him were talking. And as he talks, like you notice that his still intact horn looks like it's still freshly appeared. All of his wounds look like they're fresh, even though it was so long ago. Well, well, well. You're the little Brats with the claw. Uh, Dio, I need you to make a strength save, please. Uh, okay. Da -da 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 -da. That's you one. are lifted off the ground by an invisible hand. Okay. And lightly, Sorry. Well, I say lightly, but like you're tossed right here before you can put the potion in his mouth. Uh-uh-uh. None of that. None of what? I know what you were doing. No, you don't. <laughs> Sorry, but I'll have the potion in my hand. I still gotta act like a kid still regardless, because so how are you? I put it away. You don't know what we're doing here. What are you doing here? In one of his, in his uh, damaged hand is a black metal war pick that has it, like smoke and necrotic energy wisping off of it as he grips it tight. If you think you're going to save him, think again. Testing that immediately. Dana, you were tied to him. Uh, Killing him kills yourself. Uh, that Jesus. did not go off the way I wanted it to. No. What what happened? That, that sorry, my I'm it's malfunctioning. Oh, okay. Time for us to brawl. 
Okay, plus two for each. Yeah, none of those hit. So that was my that was me trying to basically uh start the battle because Dio's determined at this point and doesn't care what this guy has to say. You're feeding off his negative energy. <laughs> so that's actually be a fifteen. I love the fact that, like, a random unicorn for some reason is in the corner of this room. Um, Drew's just blink to everybody, the awakened mind. Deo, the world does not need you to defend it. Stop interfering and call it making it worse. This is awakened mind? This is an awakened mind. So do they both have to die, or do we have to let make them both live? If one dies, they both die. They feed off each other still. And it, so, you still don't understand. Of course not. Because I know I don't know what they're Well, all I know right now is that we're about to get into a fight. And this one seems like it's, it's the one that we can't do it now. I don't... I think what he's trying to say is we're not... We, they are opposites of each other and they're... They have to coexist. Yeah, they we don't. can't. Stop. D Dio's not trying to. Uh, Dio's not trying to uh, kill one and let the other live. He's trying to basically cause a distraction so that he, he basically wants them both to live, but he needs this you're, distraction. You're, you're explaining things above board rather than in game. Yeah. Um. Uh, Bit and know. Dio, what are your guys' dexterities? Um, mine is as in your mo as in is, your uh, sixteen. As in your modifier. Sixteen. Um, three plus three. Four. All right, Bit is going first. Bitty bitty bit is going um, on ahead. So now the sheepish Dia realizes she missed something in the descriptions. Information. Go right ahead. I even planned this lore and I forgot. <laughs> this happens so much and annoys me every time. So, okay. after the Great Calamity, you guys would know this the newest, like the core deity, the All Mother, as she's called, decided to purposely ascend her own sisters with her because you know, they're family not realizing that was her biggest mistake as one sister does not care about sentient life only plants and earth the other sister wants everything gone because she doesn't have anything left so might as well get rid of it because of this when the All Mother created Vladimir, her own son, her evil sister created Donna in response. They are polar opposites, but they don't need each other. It's like when you have. Um, oh. Come on. <laughs> did you get the right mindset? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, we did. I was gonna I say it's, right it's like when it's like when um there's two siblings. One of them gets a shiny car, and the other one uh gets an even shinier car, trying to outdo them. It's just a response. So so Dio was right to do what he did, but not for the reasons he thought it was because he actually also thought this. And Dio would respond, 
we can't heal them both. We can't have them both alive if one is bleeding out. We need to knock out Donna. I'll take care of Vlad. I'll help Vladimir. You guys just focus on Donna then. Are you saying that because you don't want to fight? I'm saying that because I have um, cure of wounds, less of restoration, and false life. But if we actually do know that they don't need each other, yeah. My 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 response to stopping everybody was because I thought we did need them both. So yeah, I also yeah. thought we needed them both. But my I was just trying to get both of them. Okay, uh, again, this this is all above board at the moment. We've got yeah. the information we need. I think we need to get back into to be story. Fair, yep. To be fair, the book simply told you that the evil goddess made a Donna. It did not say if they need each other or not. So this could all still okay. very much yeah, be yeah. in RP. Okay, okay. okay. Then, good, good. then let's go back to exactly where we were. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, you know, I'll just do the one thing I'll be doing regardless. I was going to do anyways. I ain't going to here to kill anyways. I mean, that's not been our thing anyways to begin with. We're kids! So we'll just do the one that we do better. Ignore the heck out of the grown-ups and accidentally knock them out. That shouldn't be something we're good at. Yeah, but that you say that, but... concerning to what you say that... <laughs> Bit does every day. <laughs> and I thought I was the violent one. I'm not violent. It's just things I accidentally do. Zest is trying to appeal to look, look, looks looks at Anna, looks at Annabelle like we we still gotta apologize to our teachers when we get back to school. Yeah, we do. Zest. Yes. I would like you to roll persuasion, please. And then really roll your should. initiative. You know, I really should make that a prof skill proficiency one of these days. Okay. Zana narrows his eyes at you. You are a nosy little one, aren't you? Oh, guess that did not. We only need each other for the competition. His hand creates this red and gold and black flame. Is he casting a spell? No, he's just ready to fight. Okay. Then... I suppose... Play your paper body's one weakness. Yep. <laughs> Run. <laughs> I suppose we'll do what we need to do to ensure the cycle continues with or without you. As I pull the arcane focus out from under my jacket. His eyes narrow at it. This world doesn't need you. It needs Vladimir. Well, it is your turn, so... Oh, hey, I got the highest initiative. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? I have to check this because I think I need to have... Oh, no, it's a reaction. Cool. Uh... With that, then... Uh, I do have a question. Hmm? Uh-oh. Since we leveled, did we regain our spell slots? Uh... We had we had the short rest. That, uh, I... But we oh. leveled after that. Oh, that is true. Um, That's up to the DM to decide, I suppose. Usually leveling up equals to a long rest, but, we, but for these we're not doing that. Uh, <sighs> I'm going to say yeah. Thank you. All right. That All means right. I have my rage back. And I am pulling out the arcane focus and casting this on myself. Okay. It'll make it harder for him to hurt me. Okay, so he'll have, uh... Oh. 
disadvantage on all attack rolls against me. Okay. I wish you also, would just, I, I wish you would just simply say that. Well, that I was looking through it to see what it was. <laughs> <laughs> like I got a bonus here somewhere. Where is it? Uh yeah, disadvantage on attack rolls. Also, I cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed. Nice. All right. Is that all you're doing? Yeah. That is all I am doing because the other thing that I'm readying is a, is a reaction. All right, Donna. Oh boy. Let's go one to ten. How much this hurts? <laughs> He is going to hold his flaming hand out. And I need to make a double check here. No, I need to actually draw a shape. Can somebody please measure out something for me? I okay. need a 20 foot radius here. Okay, can someone measure in the other direction? No, other direction. Other direction. What? I did. Which? Da -da 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 -da. I on Annabelle, fix, or... How do I fix that? <laughs> there it goes. E oh, okay. I see what you're trying to do. Yeah, because I need to find the center point. Uh, I think... Popped and off. I need you guys to measure it on top of Zest. On top, on of, top Zest? of Zest? Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So, like, 20 feet? Yeah. So, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So yeah. Uh, he's casting a spell. Yep. Bubble Boy's gonna cast a fireball on her, but... Zest, please tell me you have counterspell. Or not that high. That's darkness. Uh oh <laughs> Well, look at that. <laughs> Told you I had a reaction ready. Hold on, I need to double check something. Is it well, just because you just leveled up? Is that because you got that? Or I didn't get that. What well level is counterspell? Third. Okay, yep. He tries to cast a spell. But, uh. Oh! Where did I go? <laughs> I'm gone! Good! I just, I just... I just countered Dale. <laughs> sorry, sorry, here, I'll, fi I'll fix it, I'll fix it. Dale is gone. Go get your initiative. Good, no, I'm just kidding, we care for your Dale. Even though I just met you not too long ago. And saying would you this. Me meanwhile, on another, play, on another plane of existence, Dale uh, appears next to Ryle. You well, you you've did, Ryle. Disabled his spell. In the uh, middle of a boss battle. So Dio goes from one boss battle to another. Would Dio even survive that? No. That's an action. <laughs> okay. Let's, um, Ryle in the Patreon this. games is right now level is right now level seven. Hmm. Actually, no, we're level 8. Sorry. We're, we're level 8, and uh, we're in the middle of a final boss battle. I think this is a discussion for another time. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, you can't do anything. He kind of curses at you. <laughs> in a language you don't understand. Uh, is it abyssal? Um... It is... What languages do you understand? Or are you able to understand all languages? Uh, I can read all languages, understand Abyssal, Gnomish, and Sylvan. He is speaking in a language you don't understand. Okay. 
It was worth a shot. And what language is he speaking? Yeah. What, what language do you do you speak or understand? Common goblin and Vidalkin. Talking to my mom. <laughs> I forgot that you had that. Thanks, oh, you my also, mom. Oh, you also have kaiju, don't you? Oh yeah, I know kaiju. I should be. I should know that actually. Yeah. I, I forgot to put Wait, it in. The Vidalkins exist here. If a race comes out, it exists in my campaigns because somebody's going to ask about it. Okay, which version of the Vidalkin? Five finger or six finger? Yeah. Doesn't, Doesn't matter. matter um, and the other blank, which was Kaiju, right? Because I forgot to put that down. Yeah. Do you so speak Godzilla? Hmm? <laughs> he speaks Godzilla. Yeah. Kaiju born and Kaiju blood are their own races, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks I to my mom. Re so, yeah. And his mom's a Kaiju born. Um, you don't understand language either. That's okay. I'll just go. <laughs> uh, that hurt. Is it draconic? Yes, it did. No, it's not draconic. Okay. You guys are just gonna cycle it? through all the languages you know. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. At this point, I, at this point, I look at I look at Anvil like, do you understand what he said? No. <laughs> just, just to just to be humorous, <laughs> the thieves can't. All right. Uh, my turn. I'm going to. Move 30 feet this way. Okay. A unicorn for some reason. What? Why would I mess with you? You're my best friend. I ain't gonna mess with you. As I'm gonna bring out another glitter bomb. <laughs> Okay, let me get the fairy dragon. The Taste glitter more. Why is Spike from My Little Pony being summoned? That's an actual dragon. This is a fairy dragon. Spike's a fairy dragon, technically. No. No. I don't even know what he is, honestly. I never figured it out. Not here, that's what he is. Yeah. Okay, so you're throwing it right there. Yep, and I cast it's gonna one hit more. you and Dio if you put it there. Me and Dio? Here, I'm gonna turn on the aura. Don't. Fire. So, Dio. No. <laughs> Fine, I'll angle it. Because more. I actually have a plan. I'll angle it more on the blood. Like the corner right here. Oh, look at that. Alright, so he needs to make a deck save. Alright, buddy. Let's see what you got. Oof. Hi. Oof, okay. Koozie, Baron's dice is now screwing me over again. Putting it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm guessing that means he failed. Yeah. If that purple mark is there, he failed. There you go. As I will look at him. As I look at the one that I see, and I say a famous line I heard in the interwebs. That man, eat his ass. As I point at him. And then my turn. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Hey. Hey. I think Bit's parents need to ban him from the interwebs for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way they'd be able to. Yeah, there is. Oh. Turn off all the power to the house. <laughs> you underestimate artificers. Bit, I think you need to get off D Chan. No, there's nothing wrong, and I'm not. I don't even know what V Chan is. Um, are you done? This world's all according. Yes, I am done. <laughs> I'm good. Look at the right side. He's hit. Now hit him hard. Okay, uh... So could, uh... Dinah please make a intelligence saving throw for me? Alright. Uh, he passes. Okay then. 
Could Dinah please make a wisdom saving throw for me? All right. And then the DC is also 10? Yes. Unfortunately, no. He passes. Damn. Uh, that is my turn. I was hoping I could be a distraction, but no. Fate was not on my side. Annabelle. This guy okay. has just been standing here. Yep. By the way, what I would have done to compel the duel is say, or, uh, would say a insult in Thieves' Cant. Thieves' Cant's not a language. Nope. Okay, I would have given him the finger. Bonus action. Tells there you me go. Here. And that's my turn. Okay. Wait, no, I still have an action. Forgot yeah. about that. I'm gonna go ahead and take out. Wait, no, I can do a spell. I'm gonna cast Cure of Wounds on Vladimir. Okay. Well, I got a gift Let's that perfectly that. explains what Dio's doing. Do it. <laughs> what is this? At level for? two. There you go. <laughs> I'm trying to be a distraction. Seven, six. Okay, you reach your little your little claw hand out. You rest it on his leg. <laughs> Just from walking through here, you kind of realize what happened here. Donna appeared. These two fought up and down this place. Well, mostly down to the top. Before he struck a very critical, like a critical blow to him. Yep. Some of his icy, f like his his feathers look like they're made of pure ice. They glitter and sh sparkle and crinkle as they move. They're very pretty. His staff is nowhere to be seen, and his blindfold is still on, thankfully. But he looks pretty bad. Yep. And as you heal him, you can see him kind of twitch like he's trying to move. Come on. I'm By the way, I forgot to say, I'm rubbing my hands together and using my work gloves as like a delivery. <laughs> Defibrillator. <laughs> that the way. hardest thing to use in <laughs> Left 4 Dead. Def Defib? Defib. Yeah, Defib. You could just say that. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Welcome. Here's my browser is not responding. Uh oh. Oh, so there we go. Uh, refresh don't browser. Hear, I don't hear the incredibly inaccurate uh, beeping in the background that most TV dramas have. <sighs> it could have been a lot much worse. Let's be honest. Well, you've healed him. You know he's stable. Like he's non-zero HP. As it were, but he's not. I, I, able, he's not getting up. Okay. Um, I used everything I could to get here, so that's my turn. <laughs> okay. Good job. Zest. <laughs> well, it's a good favorite standby. Oh boy. Let's see if I can set him on fire. <laughs> Why are you setting the thing that clearly looks like it can't be set on fire on fire? Fight fire with fire. Haven't you ever heard it? Shut up. He will yeah, fail. Yeah, only works with forest fires. Ah. Nice. So he takes eight fire damage. Wait, what? <laughs> he, you mean the thing that obviously looks like a demon isn't resistant? He's a creature of negative energy. Nothing ever said it was a demon. There we go. There's my five foot bonfire. I said demon <laughs> looking. I can actually do one better. Hold on. Okay. Uh. I give y'all these options to hit with advantage. Y'all do these spells. <laughs> Let's see. Space. What would fit you better? How about this? That is really big. <laughs> but you can shrink it. Yeah. It is a small boy. 
Is that a five foot circle or five foot square? Let me double check it to make certain. Five foot cube. Okay. Square. Apparently, I can't delete my own my own drawings. Here, I got it. He's in a bonfire. Oof. And to be clear, his injuries are chemical based, so acid. And similar. All right. I just noticed how long we were going. Oh my gosh, it wasn't meant to be that long. Sorry. <laughs> it's we're partially right. everyone. Else. It's partially everyone's fault. It's alright. Yeah. Sorry. It's um, my bad. Is that all Zess is doing? Uh, let's see if I could draw him into somebody who can actually hit him. <laughs> I'll move to there. Okay. <laughs> Wait. That is all. All I am doing. Thank uh. you. See. Oh wow, you just need that far, huh? Not too far. Oh, I didn't do anything yet. Leave me be. How me, I am just move, a Lego buddy? boy. How far can you move? Not that far. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna roll here. There's four of you. Where's my... No, I'm going to use roll 20 for this, because my d4s are not trustworthy. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, no. Why well, you say, oh, no? I have a feeling that's me. Is it that... Uh... Bit? It... No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just finally getting stuff done. <laughs> I'm going to roll to see if he hits. But you are within like the 15 foot charge he's doing. Oh, come on. <laughs> I am definitely sure this hits because it's in the 20s. It's not crit, but it's in the 20s. Yeah, I have an AC of 16. Slash R. At least in the bright side of one thing, I have a lot of health. That's the only good Double news. Check it. This is two D six. Yep, two D six plus two, and then an extra two D six is when he charges forward. He swings his damaged horn, which is very jagged, at you. Oh, great. It, sm it hits you square in the shoulder. He's right there now. Ow. And he's out of my thing, so he he does, he does not get a second advantage anymore. Um, no, even if he moves out of it, it stays because he failed to save. Okay. Nice. As long as I keep concentration. As long as I keep concentration. First off, let me take that damage. Ah. Yeah. Because it double check the spell, but I think it's only when that initial burst goes off when it matters. Uh, making sure. Uh, any creature within the in the area with the time it takes phase for duration of object creature dead with. Creature machine dead light, with depth radius, and he's texting it. Yeah, it's only when it's there. But after that, after that, it's still there until I keep concentration. Which is the difficult part, because I got hit really hard. Yeah, so, we'll con. So, I'm just doing the damage. I am at 33. No, don't do that. I, I, was, do, I was doing the damage. No, I no, but don't say that. Don't say that? Don't, don't say, say what your damage. health is. Okay. Alright. Guys, people t told me, tell me what the, how much the health is, and they keep telling me that I'm really used to it. 
That's because you had a cleric. <laughs> yeah. So it just, it just roll a con save. Right now, all you have is morally questionable artificers. It is still running. It's still good. You hold concentration. Alright. That was his gore disease. Ah, no, that's the wrong thing. Okay, he can only do one attack, which is weird. That is weird. Let's be thankful it is one attack. This guy has a different stat block, but... Well, let me double check here. Oh! Oh, he has... Oh, never mind. No, he has two. What am I doing? Oh, sh I... He looks at you, Zest. Disadvantage. Yeah. The previous. Well, I think he's still gonna hit because it's twelve plus t plus four. Yeah, that'll still hit because I'm sixteen. Yeah. So. Okay. His still strong. His still strong claw. <laughs> Lashes out and swipes at you. But I keep the concentration on my spell up. Which one? Uh, my protection. Okay. He's out of the bonfire, so I'm not worried about it anymore. Can I get rid of it now? Yep. Okay. Alright, that's all you can do. Bit. <laughs> Bit. Got it. So, I'm gonna do this for Whiskers. Mm -hmm. When Whiskers comes around towards me, uh, actually, how much movement does Whiskers have? Um, double checking. He flies forty feet, walks twenty. Well, he's gonna be flying. I've just been assuming he's been flying this whole time. Yeah. So, once he gets to me. Which is not even his full flight speed. Yep. As I'm gonna handle my superior potion, healing potion. Mm hmm. And tell him to get over to Vladimir. You. The thing is, I can t do that telepathically. Does he have enough movement to do so? Well, he could dash. Well, and he but... flew 30, so he's actually going to be... But then he wouldn't have he, enough movement No, he would, movement just get, to... he would just get to here. But... I can't do that arrow movement trick that you guys are doing, because I'll never remember it. Uh, nice. Then I'll move my fight. I'm going to move a five foot ship. Here's an easy way to remember it. It's the Q key. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I'm right. gonna move five feet. So at least I have enough range. And then I'm gonna attack him with... Do you, um, do you have something to prevent him from doing opportunity attacks? No. So I think I can't if I wanted to. I mean, can I move five foot and not get attacked? Because I heard that's a thing, but unless it's not That was version. a thing in the older versions. That's in Pathfinder and 3.5, but not in 5. Yeah, five, five foot step does not, is not in 5. Got eight. it. So pretty much what you're saying is that do I risk the gamble or do I not? <laughs> if I go move. That's up to or you. you or you can take the entirety of your action and do a withdraw, but that means you use your action to move away without being attacked. I'll miss the hit. Let's see. Oh, you want... You're gonna allow the, uh... Yeah, attack? I'm gonna risk the hit. I'm moving five foot so I can get the range that I need. That's another 16 total. That is... Meat to beat. Alright, so Defender wins. You're fine. Now I will. Now I will attack. 
meat to beat is also Pathfinder. I've just done, like, Defender Wins stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna use... I'm gonna cast... Which one's better? Uh... Yeah, let's go with a Firebolt. Get my laser pinner back out. And point and fire. Okay. Oh, that's, that's produced flame. Firebolt. That'll hit. 15. Damn, this thing still works. You blast him, like, you see uh, his good side burst into flame real quickly before he turns and glares at you. Just like a snap of his head, he's his eyes are blazing with anger. Hmm. You know, I'm still surprised how effective this is. This still is. Making notes for the upgrade later, as I put it back <laughs> in my turn. Dio. Okay, I have a question. Mm hmm Said question is, um, what does it take to actually, um, use the amulet? Uh, it, well, using the amulet is a, as an action. Okay. Uh, that is good to know. So I'm just going to... I'm not using it right now. However, what I am doing is I am uh, going to cutting action dash. And then I'm using my action to give him my potion. Okay. All right. You pour it, you give him the potion, you see the wings start to move and curl like he's trying to roll over onto his stomach. Problem is, you can't tell if he's even conscious because he wears that uh, blindfold. Uh, Dio's going to whisper. <coughs> Sorry, one sec. <coughs> Death. Dio's going to whisper, Are you awake? He does not, not respond. He's just moving. Okay. Um. That ends my turn. All right. Annabelle, he's starting to move. Can I roll this on you to see if I need to heal him again or if he's being affected by some sort of condition? Sure. Alright, I'll roll medicine. <laughs> he's getting up. If okay. he's able to get up, then he should be okay. Alright. I'll go ahead and cure wounds and. 18? And then, all right. And then with movement, okay. you know, you just told me the check. I already forgot. Usually, when it comes to like checks like that, I always say that's like something free that you can do during your turn. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and head here. <laughs> And so in range, I believe. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and cast, with my bonus action, Sanctuary on Zest. So I believe he got hit last turn, and he should leave. And that's my turn. Wow, all the protection buffs, man. What, you think we're offensive kids? Well, maybe Bitten Dale, but... Right, that's your turn, Annabelle? Yep, that's my turn. Zest. You can see the uh, the positive one is starting to stand up. Alright, um, I'm going to use my action then to do a withdraw. Mm -hmm. I need to lead him. 
actually, I need to do this real quick. You need to, come on. You know I what mean, I just realized? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to do the cue and it's not moving. Yeah. Oh well. You, That's where I end up. Wait. You did the cue and it wasn't moving? Nope. I'm That's gonna weird. move to there. And uh, were you, were you grabbing on to your character? Yes. Okay. Alright. Eh, I'm not worried about it. I have no bonus actions, so I'm done. Donna, let's see. Well, I bit. <laughs> You're the closest one to him every time. Oh, sorry, I did have something else, but. It, that would be through the uh, the arcane link. I got a quick question, uh, mm -hmm. HH. Yep. Is there an edge like what we're seeing there into the stars? Is that like open space? Yeah, yeah. It's Perfect. you don't really know where you are. This might be a pocket dimension or part of the uh, I believe it's called the astral plane. Mm -hmm. You're not really sure where you are. But you're on a floating rock of of islands, stuff like that. Because I didn't actually mention this. Um, there are chunks of rock floating by everywhere, and each one of these chunks has a uh, like people attached to it. So at one okay. point, the chunk down here with like Baron on it simply disengages and floats away. Okay. So, through the uh, Awakened Mine, knock him off the rock. Off, off the rock? Get the rock? Is Vladimir included in this? I don't know that I can include Vladimir in it. Oh no. Double check. I forgot he had this. Uh. Okay. He stands up. He looks down at you, bit. Because you're right there. And he swings his war pick. And he definitely hits. And. Templishing three narc uh, narcotics, necrotic. Wrong game there, HH. <laughs> yeah, playing too much arc. Is Alex still here? I am still alive, and I said, "What do you mean that he definitely hits inside my head?" The other swing is his claws, and he definitely hits. Well, it's not crit, hit. but he definitely hits. Great, thank you, voice inside head. I'll remember this until the day comes. Wait, before you do that, I also have I have to quickly roll for that the con save for that first hit real quick. Just remember. Mm -hmm. All right, we're still good. going. But then you yes, have the second hit, hit, so roll again. Fine. So, so let me take the damage and I'll roll again. Okay, still going, but you're not looking so good. Your plastic self is starting to melt. Ah. I'm more surprised that I'm still alive. Ah. Alright. It is now your turn. Wow. Uh, well, didn't I? That hurt. As 
Whiskers will go ahead and finish what I told him to do. Go to Vladimir and give him a potion. Yep. Feed him the potion, Whiskers. Uh. Don't mind him. He's special. Excuse you? Yeah, he's special, because he's my friend. What? Insight check, who did he mean he's special? <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> uh, I'm going... Since it seems that the guy hates me so much more than anyone else right now... I'll look at Annabelle. Do you mind healing me once if I do this? Yep. I got you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. As I'm gonna cast... Where is it? That's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, where is it? Bio, your turn is coming up next. Yep. Is this the guy? There? How big is the guy, really? Um, he's pushing large. He's pushing large. Like these guys are deities; they're bigger than normal. Good night. Yeah, he's, maybe because he's swinging so hard, it's the fact that he's big. What are nah. you doing, dude? Nah, I'm not gonna do that. Fine. I'm just gonna cast... Uh... I'm gonna just cast, uh... Cure Wounds on myself right now. Because I just realized, like, I probably should really heal. At second level. Alright. I'll, I'll get, like, a different version... A different version of the bottle that actually has a little cat face just drawn on it. it shows that it is a stronger version than the other one and i just drink it up all right so nine, i guess that's all you're doing uh i think so do i have a bonus action on anything Oh, I don't think so. So, yeah, it's my turn. Alright. Dio. So, I have a question. Hmm. Can I reckless attack and do non-lethal damage? Yeah. Okay, good to know. Uh, bonus action, rage. Uh... I'm going to attack with my Warhammer. Ruthless attack. Okay. Uh, are you doing Reckless? Yes. That will not hit. Okay. Uh, what was that? You do realize he still has the fairy fire up. Oh, I did not realize that. But also, I thought he dodged the fairy fire. No, if that nope. purple mark is there, then he's affected by it. Oh. Okay. In that case, can we retcon it so that I didn't reckless attack? Or is it too late? I'll, I'll, we haven't moved to the next turn, so I'll allow it. But okay. you still missed. Yeah. Uh. If that is the case, uh. That ends my turn. I'll be right back real quick. Alright. Annabelle. Okay. You guys have your gifts yes. from the soldiers as well, so don't forget yeah. that. I, I 
am scared to use mine. Because you don't know. I'm what less scared to use mine. I'm gonna go ahead and use my wand of wonders, since he's in range. Uh -huh. So what do I do? Oh no! What randomizing device does she use to determine the randomness of her random device? Yes. Oh no. Oh, I. I need to double check this. Doop, doop, doop. Oops. I'm back. What happened? Hi, she's uh, using the wand. Wonders. Oh. She is using Someone the wand. Has that... to do it. Yeah, is it or you or me, regardless? She's using the wands that in another multiverse, Jim Dark Magic owns. She, the new Jim Dark Magic, is what you're saying? No, it's Wand of Wonder is not that uncommon of an item. Oh, I did not know that. There we go. There we go, come on. Now is not a good time for my browser to be doing this. Goop, that's not the right table to be using. Come on. Nope, that was the exact same thing I clicked on. Alright, so... <laughs> I have lost my table. Oh, no. Uh, let me look it up on D&D Beyond. Well, I'm using a different table. Oh, never mind then. Ah, here it is, here it is. Okay. Uh... Okay, so we use the spell. He has to make a save. The DC is 15. Yep. I. No, if the effect causes you to cast a spell from the wand. Yeah. That's what that says. So first we need a roll of D100. Yeah, or I was about D to say that. Roll D100, please. I'll tell Sorry. you what you get. You should put the Price is Right song in the background while this is happening. No, it's copyrighted. I know, but it'll be funny. Then we'll just see. We'll just do it our version then. Let's go. How how does it go? Here it is. <laughs> oh, that does not bode well. I know you're not using the normal table, but may I say what the normal ta table would have done? Go on ahead. Grass grows on the ground in a 60-foot radius centered on the target. If grass is already there, it grows 10 times its normal size and oh. remains overgrown for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sucks, but that's kind of hilarious. But what happens oh, now? Real, Jelly. Real one for this I, yes. I need you to pick a random item in your inventory. Oh, oh no. And choose carefully uh, here. Okay. Oh, no. It could be a good or a bad thing. I'm hoping he gets catapulted. Let's go with the scar. Okay. 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 What? Mm. Uh -huh. Your scarf disappears. <laughs> oh no. No. It just disappears. Oh it's no. It's gone. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Was that the He's scarf? He's gonna freeze! Your dad gave you? What? What? Was that a scarf your dad gave you? Uh. Above game? What? What? Uh, no. No. I also need to roll another thing. Hold on. Okay. That is determined. Your scarf is gone. Yep. So I <laughs> might have misread this.
Oh, yeah, no, it's you. Yep. Hmm. You point the stick at it, and you see all this energy channels around, and then your scarf is gone. Okay. That was anticlimactic, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You're oh, laughing man. so hard. But You're laughing so hard and then the scarf just appears. Oh, I bumped my mic. But I will okay. say, it's not bad. It is not yes. bad. So it's not gone forever. Alright, did, did that take my action? Using the wand oh. is an action, if I remember correctly. Okay, just make yes. sure. Yeah. Alright. Then... I think that's my turn, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Alright, Zest, it's your turn. Denary. Spirit of the negative energies. I pull out a book. Oh no. It's time for you to go away. I open the catch and let it go. Okay. In his direction. How many attacks does this thing? Okay. The book starts flapping and you can see foam build before it lunges at him. And it grows to a large creature. Uh, that is going to miss this. Uh, let me double check. That is going to miss, but the last one hits. So the two pseudopods flick past his head, like nearly missing him, before the book opens wide and all these teeth just appear and latch onto his face. Oh, this is nasty. Triple checking, is that what it says? Yes, it is. That. Oh! Oh. Oh. But. Oh. Hold on. I wonder what the D8 is. That's the acid because it's a mimic. Oh. However, this guy is, is a vulnerable to acid. I was about so to say. So that's actually a you... four. So that's minus two more. He starts roaring and screaming, clawing at this mimic. But every time he claws into it, you see it kind of shape around it like a. You're trying to grab gelatin or just plain mm -hmm. putty. So he can't grab it. It's too slippery. Is that all Zest is doing? Uh, since that was my action, I have no bonuses, and if I try to move, he's gonna hit. Oh, wait a minute, I have a sanctuary up. Yeah, you have yes. sanctuary. I'm gonna try to move away from him. Do, 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 do. Actually, I'll come over here. Let me make, give him a wisdom saving throw here. <sighs> You're gonna get hit, dude. Hopefully. Likely. Well, very likely. It's keep, a keep disadvantage, it. so. Yep. Nope, you don't get hit. Okay. He critted the save, what? but he still couldn't hit. I wish I I wish I could do have that same luck <laughs> on my side. Vlad is fully standing up. You see him like hold his hand out and his staff rises up out of the uh I guess you could say the abyss and into his hand and he sets it in front of him you can see the ground around him start to glow and all these energies start to swirl around him as a bubble starts to form in front of him he is preparing a spell Donna he has a mimic on his face <laughs> That is really 
really freaking hurting. He cannot hit to save his life. Literally. Like, he swings the war pick at it and it just molds out of the way. But it's still keeping the disguise of a book. And he's going to swing again. Still have advantage. Nope. Still can't hit. Bit. This is kind of funny now. Oh, I'm glad he didn't win after me. Uh, God, uh, yeah, I have to. I'm going to move my fight for shift. You, uh, mm. so, because oh, I can't. Wait, he already, he's already used his reaction. You're fine. Yeah, okay, so fight for shift. Do that. And now. Because I, funny enough, does have the spell. And knowing that he's vulnerable to it, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna use acid arrow. Oh. As the spell foretold is supposed to be an arrow of acid, mm -hmm. but Bit's like no. We'll do something else. As he'll take a little minute to grab the thing he, he gets. It's God. What is the best way to explain this? In as short as time as possible. Yes. It's gonna be it's gonna look like an arrow, but it'll have a kitty paw right in the front of it. Okay. And he's gonna throw it like a dart. Okay. And when it hits, the paw explodes and there's just acid split it all around. Okay, just go ahead. Yep. Actually, does seem. I think he needs to make a save, doesn't he? A lot. You know, you have to make a two-hit roll. So the two-hit roll. Yep. Yep. Make a spell attack first. So be cool. It. With advantage. No, oh, with advantage. That's not. No, that's the wrong one. That's acid slash. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, click. Advantage. Ooh, Twenty-five. That'll hit. Well, okay. 12, but I forgot that thanks to my certain thing, it adds an extra 3 to acid uh, acid damage, so it's 15. Above game, I would like to say um, to that acid slash, I would like to use uh, Vengeful Assault as a reaction and throw a dagger at Bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you hit him square in the chest, he kind of just stops. He freezes up, and the he slowly reaches up, finally grabbing the mimic in his claws, plucks it off, taking good chunks of himself with it, and tosses it to Zest. And it just simply scurries over to Zest, closes itself shut, and sits in your arms. It's like my job is done. But he looks down at the hole in his chest. You could see it like burning away at him. His bones are solid black inside. And so are his innards. He looks up at you with pure hatred. And just as he's about to reach out to grab you, that bubble that's in front of Vladimir bursts. It expands and swells. It covers the entire map. I'm not going to do it because that'd be blinding. <laughs> and when it goes over Donna, you see his body start to burn and crisp and crumble away. And he just roars at him as he's just gone. Disintegrated. Hmm. But the rest of you, you're feeling, it is cold, but it's comforting. It's not like the biting wind of a harsh winter. It's nice. It's pleasant. And as it recedes, we look over to see Vladimir stepping closer. He's big compared to you guys. I mean, we are literally toys, so yeah. Yeah, but then he's also a deity. He's much bigger than you. Yes. Let's come back. Thank you for all the hard work, buddy. 
I tried to move myself, but yeah, I, was uh, I got moved back. I was in the middle of flipping you horizontal. Sorry. Um, I'll bet it. That really hurt. Vladimir looks down at you all. Well, he second. tilts his head towards you all. And he holds his staff out. Whoever is injured, heal yourself up to full. He swirls the staff lightly and lifts it up. As he does, uh, your trinkets that you were given float out of your hands. And into his. He waves the staff over and they, they kind of change a little bit. Before he gives them back. He doesn't... Back, sorry. He doesn't talk. He doesn't say anything. But you get the sense that he changed your trinkets a little for a good reason. For, uh, for Zest, it's still a mimic, but it's now a baby, so it's really tiny. It's like having a, uh, a kid's picture book, but it still looks like a tome. Okay. For Dio, your medallion still looks the same, but it doesn't look like it's going to summon very powerful things, you think. Annabelle, your Wand of Wonders has been subdued a little bit. <laughs> now, <Make a> reason. <laughs> now, if it does anything extreme, uh, it's not going to be that devastating. Okay. As for Bit... You don't know what he did to your thing, but you still get the sense that you don't want to look straight into it when you open it. <laughs> now that you guys have your trinkets, he raises his staff, starts swirling it over his head, and a portal opens behind you. And he just simply smiles at you all. I'm guessing this is a sign for us to go. Yep. See, Anna See, Annabelle, I told you we'd be fine. No. Hey, we made it out of one piece. He stopped anyway. Zest from leaving. Just yet. I stopped? And when you turn to look at him, he is reaching into his coat and pulling out three of those claws. Cocking my head to one side in curiosity. He just smiles again, puts them away, and then holds his hand out to you. I want to insight this. I think he's asking for it, but I'm not certain. That's what I think. Okay. His hand is not a cup. Oh. I don't understand. He moves his arm as though to do a handshake. I shake his hand. As soon as you touch his hand, you see a memory. You um. see him... During one of the Halloween nights, he is flying through, mostly just double-checking on a more elderly person that he gives gifts to. And he is seeing those creatures. He is seeing what they are doing. And he lands. He can't... he doesn't talk to them. But they seem to understand his body language. They seem to understand him in general. And you can see he's, like, moving his staff and moving his hands like he's talking to the queen. And she gives him a claw. He sees them again in the same year, nearing the end of Christmas. 
and she gives him another claw. And the next year, which you're guessing is a few months before you met them, during Easter, maybe Valentine's Day? You're not really sure. You can just tell it's still cold. She gives him one more claw. And this time, they look rather sad they're going to be leaving someday soon. They're not really sure. And he holds up a, uh, it looks like a, a map to her. As if to show her a safer place to try and do this, rather than a densely populated area. You're guessing that she has already shown him that these guys are not being, um, what's the right word? I want to say overzealous. Is that the right word to use? Yeah, it sounds right. They're not going too far with what they're doing. And because of that, they have no problem with him. And he has no problem with them. After that, he never saw them again. But as he's holding these claws one night in his workshop, he gets a vision of Zest like three years ago with this little claw studying it. And he just no, I was like, yep, this one understands. And he lets go of your hand so you can leave with your friends now. Zess just nods his head, turns around, and walks out with them. All right. You guys step through the portal. And in a snap, Annabelle, you're woken up by your toddler sibling waking you up because it's Christmas now. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm up, I'm up. You can also hear your gnome dad running up and downstairs like a, t like a little kid would excited for this day. You're a normal centaur again. Thank God. <laughs> Bit. Well, you are woken up by your dad coming into the room and putting his very cold metal hand on your leg. <laughs> he put his uh, he, leg. He put his mechan his icy cold metal arm on your leg. I wake up. I look at him. He's just smiling. Merry Christmas. And runs downstairs. I expect him to drag me down for some reason. <laughs> no, he's not that evil. He could be if he wanted to. Oh yeah, he very much oh. could. Oh. Look at myself. Damn it. Well, You're normal. <laughs> Damn it. Well, it was fun having the chance. As I'll get up and start running down with him. Dio wakes up to the smell of breakfast and Christmas music playing downstairs. He is also Dio, back to normal. Dio takes a few seconds to uh, go to the bathroom, spit up gunk from his over-acidic uh, from his over acidic uh, saliva and then goes back into his room to get dressed and then goes downstairs. Zest, you're woken up by music, you're woken up by laughter, and the smell of breakfast. All four of you, when you open your presents, Annabelle, you get a Lego set with a little Lego centaur. It's really cute, actually. Bit, you get a Lego set, like a Lego mad scientist set, with a little Lego kitty cat. Just there, that shouldn't be in the set. Yes. 
Dio, you get the latest copy of Coromon. This time they added a, a picture taking feature to it. And Zest, you open up one of your presents. It's a very large tome of each and every holiday and the different variations of it around the world, as well as in the, the rest of the plains. So now you know legends of the winter spirit in a completely different plane, but still attached to the material. He just simply nods his head as he reads through it. But he doesn't read for long. Because there's something he realized he forgot to do yesterday. And needs to do it today. And he gets dressed and heads to Annabelle's house. Is it still is it still snowing? It is actually lightly snowing. It's rather pretty. Okay. Knocks on the door. Annabelle goes ahead and opens it. I forgot to leave this yesterday before we left. And he hands her a package, nicely wrapped for the season, with her name on it. I hope you enjoy it. And he turns around and starts walking home. Wait, 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 wait. What? Give me one moment. I run inside, and I come back out. And it's not wrapped, but it's a little pouch that's decorated. And inside it's back folding. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Enjoy your Yuletide. And he turns and walks away again. The Hallmark logo passes by the screen. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is no. so cheesy. So cheesy. When, when she opens it, it is a leather, one of those leather toolkits that rolls up with a set Ooh. of jewels in it. Uh, <laughs> so if this is a Hallmark movie, is it one of the two Hallmark movies that was uh, filmed where I live over the past year? I would. Thanks for ruining the mood. I live in, uh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Oh, I'm just glad it's not like that cliche ending where someone bought somebody a gift, but they sold that said item it's for to buy them a gift. That they have sold said item to get that gift. I mm. yeah. yeah. Ah, great. I guess it's my turn now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you needed to have a turn. That was something that I had set up at the beginning of the game. I we actually, I actually had still planned right in the end of our little extra thing we did earlier. If you got enough gifts for each other, like, feel free to RP that out. I'm just gonna go to everyone's houses. You would have seen Zest walk by. Hey Zest. What do you want, Bit? I. Got a gift, actually. As I hand you a plate, and it's full with different, different kinds of cookies and brownies. I hope you like them. Um, thank you. I bet a lot of people would just expect me to go ahead and do something really wacky, like a grenade or a bullet or something. No, I also cook as well. I was also going to get the other batch chores. Uh, Dio. Uh, by the way, do you know where he lives? I'm on my way there now. Oh, well, let me join you then. If you insist. By the way, I by the way, Annabelle. Mm -hmm. Your baby sibling got a miniature tramp, uh, treadmill. 
Oh just no. To burn the energy. <laughs> just to burn their energy. <laughs> it's scratch proof. Guy has this little harness and yeah. with the key, so if he slips, it pulls off. <laughs> I was I was thinking of like um, those baby things where like it's a flying saucer, but they get to move it with their legs. Ah. Uh, but no, like it's a for... treadmill. Yes. <laughs> no a treadmill. Like okay, this baby just that too much energy. Get this boy or in this damn treadmill right now. I'm done with its BS. <laughs> Uh, so, we go over to Dio's place, I guess, as we knock at his door. Uh, I would go and answer it. Well, you see Zest and Bit standing there. Hey. Want to come you. Oh. No, I... I... I do need to get back home soon, but I wanted wow. to deliver this. Yep. And he hands over what looks like a... If somebody didn't know what it was, it would look like a case for carrying uh, like a fishing pole. But mm -hmm. Deo being Deo realizes it's a carry case, a protective carry case for a sword. One minute. Dio runs inside. And uh, goes to his herbalism kit. Checks if uh, something that he prepared earlier is dry. No, it's not dry. Gets a very disappointed look on his face. And then goes back down to uh, the door. Uh, unfortunately, um, the resin on your gift isn't ready yet. Neither is the resin uh on uh Annabelle's or bits Zest raises an eyebrow resin I was planning on making some uh I was planning on putting some flowers into a uh, resin glass mm. I see and giving them to you guys If you like, I can give you the formula so we could finish before tonight. They're already poured. I see. Well, like they they won't be ready till most likely tomorrow. Stop on you, my friend. I'm not, I'm patient. Is it? Even though I don't act like it sometimes. <laughs> <sighs> In the background, you can see Dio's mom is, like, dancing around because she's had some eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> she's drinking. She's, a, she's so, having her own little party. Dale, for stat-wise, it's a great sword. Description-wise, it is a historic, fully functional historic replica of a Celtic great sword. Made mm -hmm. in the traditional manner that the weapons were made. Oh, now you're breaking Dio, Dio's heart because he didn't get anyone as nice a present as that. Well, I, I'm just giving you a big assortment of cookies and brownies. Sugar-free, because I heard you can't do sugar. I have to be getting home soon, but just promise me you won't use it on any bullies, all right? You know that I fist, that when it comes to the bullies, I usually use my fist. He just oh. nods, slowly turns, and starts walking away. Well, that sounds smarter than what I do, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I hope you good. I hope you get Chris. Yes. If anyone is actually bullying you, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Don't worry about it, honestly. No, seriously. That's so sinister. Don't worry about <laughs> it. You're forgetting who you're talking to. <laughs> But it's okay. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Besides, Merry Christmas. I got I have one more gift anyways to give out as I hold Animal's gift. It actually is wrapped compared to all the the other two. And it's not a plate. <laughs> well, I had to get going. I hope you have a good Christmas. I say start to Animal's place. 
I swear, if it's a bag of oats, I'm going to bean you with this plate of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> It'll be funny. No. Alright. So you go back to Annabelle's. Now, like, Annabelle's parents have, like, come outside with her and her baby sibling, who has, like, another gift, which is, like, a stroller that they can move on their own. <laughs> and they're just watching him test it out. This little guy's got so much energy, it's insane. <laughs> it's like... It's a really weird comparison, but it's like watching a dog very happy about their wheelchair and just going. Aww. It's so cute. Annabelle is tinkering with something using the tools that... The, the, the things that she got from... Um, Zest. Zest. She's making something, or at least she's tweaking something. Anyway, bit. Just gonna knock on the door. No, they're outside. <laughs> oh, they're uh, well. I didn't know. Okay, I forgot. They're watching they the. They watch. Fast, someone knocks on the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do that because help because remember his attention span is super low. Like, they're outside watching the toddler use their new <laughs> baby scooter at high speed. <laughs> oh my! Oh, that's oh there other oh there's the door. Annabelle, you home? <laughs> She's right behind hey, you. <laughs> I'm like on the porch. I just, I'm just looking at him. Oh, how do you get behind me? Um. <laughs> uh. You know, teleportation. Well, that's something to uh, experiment later with. Yep. Mm. <laughs> That's she, fiddles with, she fiddles think with about the things that. he was working on, and then she um she um points it towards him. It's a toy gun, quote unquote. It's it's a toy gun, and but <laughs> oh boy, it's a toy gun that can shoot spells. Because that's how she flavors things. So she yeah. hands him the toy gun. <laughs> Merry yes, Christmas. Of, yes, of course, because we know how we. I know how you are. <laughs> this must add protection to all the prosthetic arm. Um, thank you. As he doesn't realize he doesn't have a holster, <laughs> he'll put it in his pocket. Hopefully, the cops don't capture him later. <laughs> Wait, did like you actually gun. give him the gun? I gave him a gun. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'll put. I've I'll put it. This I, since I don't have a holster, I put it there, and I had her like gift that wrapped up. Well, it took me a long time, and it took a while as I had to probably actually do work for it. But I hope you actually enjoy it. All right, I'm gonna open it then. Um. Uh, you found that it's a brand new, uh, you found out it's these new goggles that are high brand in the market for, uh, for, uh, artificers. Oh. It'll make sure you nice and safe. And they add new shine to it, like they add a flashlight and all types of new gadgets um. with it. She has now become a splinter oh. cell. <laughs> Drop down. <laughs> <laughs> took me some time getting it, so we really do Thank hope you like it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no. I'm... I need a step of my present game. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. What can I do? You're my first friend. I have to do it right, you know. Thank you. Well, thank you. Show me... I'm realizing okay. now... Because now Annabelle needs to go to Dale and give him his present. <laughs> Do you oh my want... gosh. Do you want me, <laughs> yeah. Do but, you want okay. me to go with you? No, no, no. How am I going to do it? Um, She takes a couple of days. Because so, uh, 
She was. She, it takes her a couple days. Oh, good. So this is a couple. <laughs> this is a couple days later. Um, so she manages to get herself over to Dale's house, and she knocks on the door. Which is shocking, because you're part horse. <laughs> Anxiety. She doesn't. Okay, okay. Keep going. Actually, no. Deo doesn't answer. Deo is about to uh, is actually leaving, and he and you actually knock on the door as he's leaving. And he has three. And he has a he has a uh, velvet bag in each hand, and then there is a mage hand following him that also has a velvet bag. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 oh. stop. Annabelle. Hi. This is really late. <laughs> uh, so's mine. And the main uh, hand wanders over to you. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. Um, I still didn't have time to wrap this. I'm really bad at wrapping presents. I, I had to apologize to all of you later. So I, I hand to, I hand Dio, um, uh, they're a pair of boots. Um, For lack of a better word, they're a pair of boots, but they are like fitted to like a dragonborn's feet, so they would fit. Okay. And what they can—they're basically. Uh, let, give me one moment, because I these are just like replicate magic weapons, I have, magic items I have. Uh, give me one one second. You guys are making Alex and I feel sad because our gifts are mundane. <laughs> hey, I'm happy with that, right? Hey, happens. it's thought that counts, man. Yeah, hey, trust me, it's the thought that counts. Whatever happens. I should point out, my, fam my family doesn't care if you buy high-end stuff or just crap from the dollar store. Yeah. We really don't yeah. care. Basically, it's boots like to go nyum. <laughs> For lack of a better boots. Term, they right, like with with, uh, with shadow, it was the the, the thought, thought plus the fact that it's an expensive item. Yes. With you, I'm sure it's you made it, and it's an yep. expensive item. <laughs> hey, I worked for mine. <laughs> yes, and yours were delicious. Um, well, I don't actually don't know how delicious they were. <laughs> So no, what, thought what, thinking about that. What were the magic boots again? Haste. They're boots that go nyum. Haste. Yep. Oh, they're boots of haste? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're boots of nyum. But he, she says they're boots that go nyum. She's obviously been stay. She stayed up a couple days taking care yeah. of the small child that's running around. So all she could think about um, is the boots that go nyum. <laughs> nyum, 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 nyum. When they cat when it gets cast, it goes new. So what Dio gives you is he gives you a uh, yellow um, velvet bag, and inside it is at first glance looks like a glass dome with a, a yellow rose with ivy on uh, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But it's resin. This is really pretty. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the yellow rose and the ivy usually mean uh, friendship. Uh, specifically, the ivy, me ivy means dependence, endurance, and faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So I, I really need to step in my my present game. My God, <laughs> I have to ask: Are you planning to RP the flower gifting? No. Okay, because I have one more thing to say before we finally end it. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I will. I will say that uh, when it comes to Alex's, his doesn't have Ivy because I don't know him that well. Like I don't, I haven't known I haven't known his, his character longer than I haven't known his character as long as I have uh shadows and uh jellycats. Instead, 
It has uh, sweet pea. Okay. Flo uh, flo sweet pea flo petals floating around the uh, yellow rose. As Annabelle is walking home, she sees her scarf. The one that disappeared. Oh. It's just sitting there next to the door. Huh. You pick it up and you see a little strawberry scurry away. No. No, 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 no. Um. That is going to end it. <laughs> <laughs> you just give us a bug snacks reference. Oh god, it's it's, it's a long it's a long story. They're not gonna talk about it because they made it. No. <laughs> Happy holidays, you filthy fucking animals. <laughs> I've been I was waiting patiently for that. Like when the scarf disappeared, I thought, yes. Oh, no. The scarf was supposed to reappear two days later. Oh. And you decided, you know what, this is going to take a few days. And then, okay, I can wait. <laughs> you guys made me feel terrible because I had to quickly look something up when you mentioned you were buying each other presents. I had the presents. I should point prepared. out, Ryle, resin is expensive. Yes. Yeah. Again. Again. My family works for a, it is basically a fartist compounder. Right, but you're focusing on the value of the gifts that were given. Yeah. Resin, resin can be very, very expensive depending on the type and that you're using. It was mm -hmm. relatively cheap resin. Ooh, that's not gonna look very good. No, it's, it's, hey, it's, a, it's a thought that counts. Yeah, there are. It's filled with bubbles. This is Ryle's first attempt at it. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like twelve o'clock in the morning. I know. I know. It, it's uh, Dio's first attempt at resin, and he doesn't know I that he needs to use a actual vacuum. Aww. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> no, this is okay. so much fun. You say that, but Always. let's be honest. I, I'm used to this. There's even. Sessions where I wake up in the middle of the day and no, wake up early in the morning, and it takes us t until twelve in the mor twelve in twelve a.m. to finish the session. Yeah, I'm used he, to this. Dio so, used like thirty dollar resin. Ooh. AJ, hmm? yeah, uh, we're not playing these characters again. Is that correct? Yeah, I will give you guys some time to copy down your characters wherever you want to. Um, just let me know when you're done, and I will just purge this because I. Don't have the space to keep this. Okay. Oh, no uh, I'll, 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 I'll save mine out as soon as we're done here. So. Yeah, let, let me do the same. I need to save my bid, anyways. So. Oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome back, Baron. So, uh, who's, uh, intern. Who's intern? Everyone. Everyone can intern. Yeah, like. Right? <laughs> Save the oh yeah, person. like there. Fine. I do want to ask this one thing. You don't have to go in too far mm. into detail here. What happens to your guys' characters when they grow up? I was actually going to say I have an epilogue for Zest. Okay. I have a raid ready to go, but I I'm happy to wait. Okay. Uh, so I don't think you guys remember Zest is sixteen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh. He is he, he will be graduating from his school soon with dual credit courses, going to college, getting his uh, master's degree in advanced interdimensional sciences. The one question that I have is Annabelle ever going to figure out that Zest has had a crush on him from on her from day one? Oh no. Rip. Oh no. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, I had a suspicion. Oh. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> she, all right, so she has proficiency and in insight. Go for it. So I think she would have noticed at some point. 
but she, oh god, how do I say this? <laughs> well, this no, is really I, funny because um, Annabelle has had a crush on. <laughs> Annabelle has legitimately had a crush on um, Zest like this, this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> it is almost cliche. Oh, no, um, Dio is always a cliche. As he actually say, has huh? on, I noticed uh, that. Wait, wait, yeah, what did you say? Awesome. What did you say, Ryan? <laughs> Dio had a crush on Zest. Oh! And now our Dio is heartbroken. He this is not chance. something that I just made up, by the way. This is actually something that I had in my head that Dio had developed a crush on Zest. Well, she's fine. It's a question that Zest had was, why are you following around and doing all this? Oh, no. He didn't develop the crush until a little bit later. No, it's, it's the whole high school... Why are you following me around and protecting me from the bullies? Yeah. I'm not asking for this. Leave yeah. me alone. <laughs> Listen, Zest has two hands. <laughs> Zest is also a shapeshifter. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to. I. I don't want to think about it. Zest can have three hands. No. Zest can. <laughs> no. No, I don't think the changeling ability allows him to. No, no, that not that far. Um, give you extra hands. Only if it's right. the what rhyme if? Of, uh, but what if? Only if it's the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden version of Changeling, and I don't think Shadow is a uh, no, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Just, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a basically the Eberron version. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> that that is why uh, that is why Zest has been so cold to bit. Oh. <laughs> it, but when I saw the, the way the two of the characters were interacting, it's like, all right, get into Zest's head. Zest is fuming over this friendship because he's he's like, I, I don't stand a chance. It's, he sees Bit as everything that Annabelle will want. Oh. <laughs> the fool. He doesn't have a high enough insight. And no. meanwhile, Dio is blindsided by all this. I'm my my character was just like, oh sweet friends, more friends. Oh finally, I'm not alone anymore. It's like, oh sweet, two cakes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it, a nice person in general. Like, even though he's stupid at sometimes, I'll admit it. It, <laughs> it was Alex. It was so hard for me to try to be mean to Bit, realizing that oh. Bit is just being friendly, mm -hmm. but Zest is Zest has a nineteen intelligence. He gets through the bullying by telling himself he's better than everybody else because they will never be as smart as he is. Mm -hmm. That that's his boost. Oh. And. And, and the one thing that Bit did that just pushed everything over the edge was a comment. What you have to understand is... Oh. It's like, oh no, no, no. You're not telling me that you're smarter than me in any way, shape, or form. Even though he never said... The funny part, he never said, like, oh, not that smart. No. I just like him. <laughs> no, it, it, and that's the whole thing. is No, you weren't trying to be insulting or down. It's the way Zest did so, it from his perspective. So, getting back to focus here. Yep. <laughs> you, you, you're not like the first one to fall at those sciences. <laughs> but you're among them. It's a science that only started being more prominent as like the invasions and breaches continued. Um. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Ryle. Yeah? What does Dio go on to do? Well, after uh, he finds out that uh, Annabelle and Zest are an item, he sort of for about a week avoids them. And then uh, he actually gets his uh, shot to actually um try to join a MMA uh, company. Mm. 
I would imagine he succeeds, but he doesn't realize. Um, it's not actually really an MMA company that he's joined. Uh. So I, I would imagine that because resurrection is a thing in this world, that the WWE could be re could actually be real. Um. Well, here's the thing: the fighting in WWE and like MMA and all this stuff, it is real, but no one dies. It's not that extreme. Yeah, he it's would just actually, brutal. Right. He would actually join that and basically uh, go on to eventually become a three-time uh, heavyweight champion and then get injured in such a way that um, he can no longer wrestle. Mm. I'll, I have a funny comment for that, but I'm going to do that after the stream. Okay. So, Bit. What does Bit go on to do? Well... If you're talking about itty bitty bit, just realizing that he's the smallest out of everyone here. <laughs> just, I just reminded myself that, like, he's 4'9". Um, bit will just, first off, in high, during his rest of his school years, he will, first off, obviously, do as great as ever he can do. Even though he would probably make, he will probably do some trouble here and there regardless. Because it's Bit. And he's such a fan as law. To Leonard, he will go on in and support his mother's and father's side. Help his mother out with the nursing and all that. Help him out any way he can. And help his dad out when there's times in need that needs that they need people to go on the other side. To other planes. Mm -hmm. He just So essentially he becomes what you would call a freelancer? In a sense, yeah. He just Put himself out there just for the betterment of everyone else. Even if uh, the other three don't have time for him anymore, he'll be there willing and waiting when they need him. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a freelancer for the military. I, I like that. Yeah. By the way, I forgot one last thing. Uh, Dio does get over himself after like two and a half weeks. Hmm. When it comes to uh, Zest and Annabelle. Speaking of That's... Annabelle. Annabelle spends a couple years uh, making weaponry and inventions to sort of freelance and sort of um, pitching her own patterns for a bit. But eventually um, she decides to settle down from that and becomes a teacher at the trade school that she used to go to. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess we're wrong. Nobody's That's interning a... for the web uh, for the weapon guy, Baron. Unfortunate. <laughs> we have health benefits in dental. Uh, if I may, what's up? Dio would probably have attempted an internship, but be rejected. <laughs> if Annabelle interned, she only interned for a little bit, and then went to go be a teacher. <laughs> just to, just to get experience. Yeah, it's you know, experience. I, I don't see any reason why Dio couldn't become part of the security team. Mm -hmm. Actually, Dio just doing the um, the planar sciences and all that stuff, he would very likely work with Baron a lot. Actually, okay, yeah. Dio? Let's change that then. Wait, did I, I say I, Dio or did I mean Zest? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Dio I'm sorry. Dio. sorry. <sighs> I, I was talking about with Dio Knight interning. It's like I, I can see him working with the security team. Like I like probably after I got injured that way, which would yeah. have basically been a high dive, and it would be, um, I can't do any more um, chair shots to the head. <laughs> Fate of many wrestlers. Yeah. But yeah, as you were saying with Zest and the fields that he's helping to pioneer. Yeah, I definitely see him working in tandem with the Baron and the military on mm -hmm. what they're doing. Any way to slow down or hopefully stop the breaches. 
All right, you get to work with Aaron. Uh, do you, would you say Zest is a quiet worker? Oh, yeah, he's very definitely a quiet worker. Oh, excellent. All right, you'll be Baron's favorite. <laughs> Most of Baron's <laughs> partners in Darius' campaigns, uh, hmm, very well, loud, constantly asking you, him various uh, questions. You, you saw how Zest was played through this. He's very quiet, very observant. And when he speaks, it's very with very deliberate use of words. Until he gets so flustered, his anger comes out, and then it's not guaranteed what he'll say, but he'll mean every word of it at that moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hilarious because you, you describe Zest as having uh, like a personality of uh, "I'm the smartest person in the room." Yes, uh, and Baron, at the at the given moment, most of the time, is the smartest person in the room. So it's just going to be this hilarious back and forth, I think. Yeah, because by the by the time he gets a master's, he's going to get that bump to Max's his intelligence at 20. All right, I yeah. need to end the stream because we've been going for seven hours. No. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. stream. I'm sitting here waiting. Good night, everybody. Because I was way, waiting basically for you to stop. When <laughs> Dial does become, uh, does come to uh, be a member of the security team, uh, I would imagine most of the uh, flaws and bonds and ideals and personality traits on his character sheet would be completely different. Oh yeah, very much so. Because uh, his back, the background I chose for him was uh, Gruel. Oh, uh, yeah. A rolling, rolling background. All right. Well, we're gonna most raid. Most anarchy ever. We're gonna raid my good friend Croak TV. He's. A lot of positive vibes playing World of Warcraft. Yes. Guys, stay Watch safe out there. You. Have a good night. Happy holidays. Good Thanks. night. Stay safe. Be well. Merry Joyous Happy Yuletide. holidays, my friends. Uh, take this advice from your local pharmacy technician. Wear your fucking mask, please. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes, as, please. As someone who actually <laughs> is, has a father in law who used to be a compound pharmacy physician. Ten seconds, sorry.